that earlier today. Certainly hope we can dodge that threat as much as possible, but we're definitely here for you uh, and uh, we're on your side helping to keep you aware, weather aware and out ahead of the storm. So we are tracking this uh, supercell right here. It's got the hail core. If a tornado does happen, it's going to be down here near French Lick where we have that uh, appendage right here. This what could become a hook if we get more rotation. Uh, so that hail core that Alden just put a track on as it moves northeast around 50 to 55 heading towards the Claysville area uh, about 425 here in about 10 to 15 minutes. That's going to start to put it into the northwestern areas of Washington County, Indiana, and then up towards the Muscatatuck River. So heading towards Campbellsburg as we approach 430, Smedley at 430 as well, Hitchcock uh, just after 430, and then the Walnut Grove School 434, Haleysbury at 436, and the Wheeler Hollow uh, there as we head into uh, northern sections of uh, Washington County and southern Jackson County. So that is the cell that we're watching uh, most closely right now and hopefully uh, we can get it to get on a weakening trend. The severe thunderstorm warnings that go until about 4:30 all uh, let's check here. 4:30, yes. Yeah, so 4:30. So it's starting to move over Highway 150. Uh, a big concentration of some cloud to ground lightning strikes, the potential of maybe some penny nickel size hail as this is tracking to the northeast around 50 to 50 five miles per hour uh, just off to the north and northwest of Paoli. So that's our, our one severe thunderstorm warning. There's also a warning uh, here in the northern sections of Lawrence County. However, if you look just south of there, you've got some torrential rain coming down between Bedford and Mitchell here over the next five or 10 minutes and the potential of some isolated damaging winds as that'll be moving through. And just keep in mind these storms again racing at about 50 to 55. So you get a storm this strong, it doesn't take much to get some of those really strong winds, a uh, straight line damaging winds to come to the ground, which can do similar damage, as we often mentioned, as uh, a weaker EF zero tornado, possibly in excess of 70 miles per hour. As we expand back out, let's just kind of look at the overall velocity and see if we see any uh, color spikes. Uh, we've got a color palette that if we start to see blue, yellow or orange, uh, that means we're going to need to watch out for the potential for some damaging wind gusts. Now this is a little bit off the ground uh, where we see these blue colors right here. Uh, as the radar is going up at an angle, uh, this could be several thousand feet off the ground. Uh, but nonetheless, it is showing the potential of uh, greater than 50 or 60 mile per hour winds uh, just aloft that the storms are are trying to tap into. And that, so that is just off to the east of Evansville. Here is Perry County. It looks like that storm is near Santa Claus, Indiana, near Holly. Holiday world right now. So as we look at that, it looks like, yeah, there's a pretty good a chance of some damaging winds uh, around 231. And this is right where we had a, a tornado warning earlier this morning that moved through the Santa Claus, Indiana earlier. Uh, so that is tracking off to the east and northeast uh, very quickly. If that holds steady, it looks like we have the potential of some damaging winds downstream along and south of Interstate 64. That'll take us into Perry County and into the WHAS 11 viewing area. So again, this is just the beginning of what could be a very busy and long lasting uh, late afternoon. Now the overall severe weather threat beginning now for our western counties, the far western areas, in northwestern portions of the WHS 11 viewing area. It looks like the storm threat will be moving closer to Louisville as we approach 6 p.m. as this line is moving generally east at about 30 miles per hour. Now the individual supercells are moving northeast within that line at about 50 to 55. Then it will start to move off to the east of Louisville a little bit later this evening. We think the overall severe weather threat will start to diminish as we head towards sunset around eight, nine o'clock. And that's when the storms will start to move off to the southeast of Louisville. But for now, we've got a lot of severe weather ingredients that we are watching very closely. A couple severe thunderstorm warnings uh, that have been uh, prompted here over the last uh, 15 minutes to a half hour that are out to the west of Louisville. Around Louisville right now, you're probably seeing a darkening sky in some spots as we do have these individual downpours popping up and moving pretty quickly to the northeast as well. These are not severe so far that are developing. Again, they are behaving out ahead of the main line that we're watching out to the west. And a reminder that uh, as we look live out here with our First Savings Bank camera looking from uh, Clarksville and Jeffersonville out, off to the western sky, we are at 76 degrees, some wind gusts around 35 to 45 miles per hour. Again, just a ripe environment for the potential of severe weather between now for our western counties through about 8, 9 o'clock. View from on top of the Galt House as we look out towards, uh, again, our western sky over the locks and dam and the uh, falls of the Ohio with our Bachman Auto Group cam, Parver UVL Health uh, camera network. Uh, so 
Temps are running a good 10 plus above normal for this time of the year. And there is also some of that humidity that the humidity that you can feel. So the atmosphere is becoming uh, more unstable and that instability is what these storms use uh, to become rather strong. So a tornado watch has been issued from the National Weather Service for the entire viewing area that will continue uh, through 10 p.m. Uh, now it looks like that severe weather threat is going to end first. I would say the severe weather threat for southern Indiana west of I-65 will be done uh, by around 6 o'clock and that's when that severe weather threat moves uh, into the Louisville area. So a couple hours here uh, for southern Indiana to deal with this uh, severe weather threat. Uh, so right now, uh, until 4.30, we still have this severe thunderstorm warning uh, capable possible of a tornado possible uh, near Paoli. You see a lot of lightning strikes there. Uh, there's been some broad rotation. Thankfully, it hasn't been getting any stronger at the moment. We don't have any reports of a tornado on the ground. There's just that unfriendly look of a little bit of a notch right there just to the north of Paoli. There's still maybe a little bit of a hail core here too. So there are some signs that this has some super cellular structure, meaning a severe thunderstorm capable of producing some damage. Uh, so that is now to the east northeast of French Lick. Uh, so you're out of the way of this more dangerous thunderstorm, but you still have some heavy rain that's going to be moving over you in French Lick. And with that said, as we get some of these storms moving over the same areas over the next several hours, there's the potential for some flash flooding issues, but we don't have any flash flood warnings at this time. Let's go ahead and go to base velocity and take a look at how fast and what the motion of these raindrops are. Uh, so again, that red is moving away from the radar. This is moving toward the radar. And it's, you can also check out storm relative if, if you'd like to. Um, so it looks like there's some broad rotation here, generally uh, just off to the north of Paoli. So if there were a tornado on the ground in this location, it doesn't look like it would be very strong. It could still certainly do some damage and there could be some pockets of some uh, damaging wind gusts here. So there is a highway 56 as you're coming in from Livonia towards Paoli and then up 30 to Orleans here in central Orange County, Indiana. Uh, so gate to gate means that the, these pixels right next to each other, when that gets up uh, plus 45 up to 90, that's when uh, you're going to start to see the, the potential for more rotation and a higher potential of a tornado. Right now, um, likely maybe doing some isolated wind damage. So as expected, this storm right here has been expanded to the east to cover most of Perry County as it is. Guys, what's the speed on that east northeast around 55, 50, 55 miles per hour? Uh, so that's going to put it into a portion of Crawford County off to the south of English down 64. So again, this is a good 50, 60 miles out to the west of Louisville right now, but it's moving 55. So it's not going to take it long to start to move into more portions of Crawford and eventually Harrison County. So this is just a, a first alert, an early heads up here that the corded area, you guys were busy earlier today with uh, some severe weather uh, heading your direction generally here as this is uh, tracking pretty quickly. So heading into the Leopold area there in Perry County at about 3.30 Central Time, 4.30 Eastern Time. So that's in about 15 minutes here into Leavenworth near the Horseshoe Bend of the Ohio River right there. Uh, that is about 4.40 Eastern Time into New Amsterdam at about 4.50, into Corden at about 4.54. So that's coming up to 5 o'clock. An hour out from that, we're going to likely see these storms get a lot closer uh, to the Louisville metro area. Uh, so this, uh, is, does that have the tornado tag on it as well? Yes, it does. Uh, tornado possible tag. Hail threat is radar indicated. The maximum hail size is about uh, 0.75 inches. They're indicating about penny sized hail and really the main threats for this one is going to be those 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So this is kind of just at that severe thunderstorm morning threshold. Yeah, let's let's check out the velocity again because sometimes here, Alden, if we start to see a little bit of a bow, a lot of times on this the northern end of the bow, we've get we've got this kind of confluence area that we might start to see some rotation. It looks like there's a, maybe just a little bit of that right now, and sometimes when these jet stream winds push out, it can make this overall circulation. Sometimes that can tighten up very quickly and uh, put down a brief tornado spin up. So. The potential of damaging winds around Santa Claus, Indiana right now, again around Holiday World, tracking to the east and northeast. If we want to go in a little bit closer and maybe just look at some of the neighborhood roads around 
145, Indiana 145. So it, it looks like the damaging winds are going to come right around this direction here around uh, Bristow, here's Sassafras. Uh, so these are, if you know some folks here uh, in the Perry County area, it looks like there's that potential for some damaging straight line winds, if not a brief spin up uh, tornado as well. Uh, so we're going to be watching out for these areas, going in a little bit tighter even, and uh, we'll start to probably see uh, some of these roads. Looks like we're in a pretty rural area uh, around the Bristow area. Um, so just trying to f maybe find a few streets. Looks like there are none there. Uh, but uh, there, that is Indiana 145 in the, basically the central portions of Perry County. So okay. just go, yeah, guys. Uh, a good mark is the Bristow United uh, Pentecostal Church is right along Highway 145. Okay, yeah, thanks, Colleen. And so there you can see we're just giving you some landmarks to kind of keep in mind as uh, those damaging winds could be heading that direction. What we're going to have to watch too, Alden, is if these the blue areas here, these pixels, are these plus 50? If you want to, um, you'll have to take the warning off and check that. But um, if that holds together and this becomes kind of a, a long living supercell, then we're just going to need to watch that as it continues along and south of 64 because that's going to move into Louisville area this morning with ingredients that weren't as good as they are right now we had some long track supercells uh, that did contain uh, damage basically going over the same areas if we if you notice if you were with us earlier when we showed you the storm reports we had uh, straight line winds that tracked right along this area and then moved off to the south of Louisville uh, so this guy right here is what we need to watch between Dale and Tell City, Indiana, as it tracks through Perry County and, and then I possibly also, clipping northern uh, Meade and southern Crawford County. Then I also want to look at this little feature up here. Uh, this That's probably the best near Norton. That's probably the best little area of a couple that we've had so far today. You see that little Boeing segment there, those greens next to yep. the reds. So we'll put on our normal uh, radar view here. Doesn't look that threatening there. You can kind of maybe see a little bit of right a hook Norton. shape, uh, but that's something that we'll need to be keeping a close and eye on as that's well. That's following this supercell that we were watching that moved just north of Paoli. So definitely need to watch these little bit of notches, these little kinks in the thunderstorms. Uh, they can put down quick little spin ups like we saw in Georgetown. Indiana earlier uh, around midday today. So that is very near French Lick. To be on the safe side, if you're in French Lick, maybe we'll just stay inside for a little bit longer. So we're, we're watching that one. Um, and then this cell not looking quite as organized as it was, um, but there's still some kind of broad rotation here and possibly uh, some localized damaging wind gusts near the Orleans area in Lipsick and to the northeastern sections of uh, Orange County, Indiana. Uh, so backing up the view, if you want to just look at this um, one hour loop of the line of storms, just kind of get our bearings again as we look at the overall uh, viewing area. These storms have been exploding here over the last half hour, starting to see some development on the southern edge as well, moving down the western Kentucky Parkway. Atmosphere is uh, again very ripe for the development of severe storms. These are tracking generally east at about uh, 30 to 40 miles per hour. Now I want to mention that's the line moving due east. The individual cells are often moving northeast at about 50 to 55. If you want to go ahead and put a, a line on that whole track as it moves east around 30 to 40, uh, we'll get a better measurement on, on the, the ETA on when we're expecting that to move over the Ohio River and into parts of Kentucky and Metro Louisville. So into the Louisville area, looks like it's trying to speed up a little bit over the next uh, hour, hour and a half. So looking around 5, 30, 6 o'clock for Louisville into the, so sometimes there are portions of the line that can uh, move ahead faster and it's kind of speed up. There are some areas that might slow down a little bit, but in general, looking around 5, 30, 6 o'clock, heads up for Louisville Metro. Into the Newcastle, uh, Kentucky areas, we approach 6 o'clock, Shelbyville, Frankfurt after the 6 o'clock hour as well. And we're just talking about this, Alden, that line uh, off to the south, the southern edge is starting to ramp up as well uh, down the Western Kentucky Parkway. So this is just an early heads up. You've got some outdoor plans. You've been out and about late today uh, or getting home from work. Over the next hour, start to watch out for the potential some warnings. If you're around Litchfield down the Western Kentucky Parkway, if you're around Hardinsburg, we're starting to see the, the radar really starting to light up. Go ahead and put on the cape really quickly. This is uh, a look. Ben, we actually yeah. have a video out, a live video out of the West Baden Springs Hotel of hail falling down there and some pretty heavy rainfall as well. So oh, yeah. uh, they dealt with some uh, pretty dramatic hail 
Last year, if you recall, they had hail up to about the size of baseballs. That it was were like deja vu. I think it was like April, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was, something, it was something like that. It was about a year ago. So seeing some large, possibly large hail falling up there, some very heavy rain uh, up there at the West Baden Springs Hotel at the moment. No tornado warning, uh, though, has been issued, but that is part of that same uh, hail area that we had been tracking earlier. So that's up near French Lake where they're seeing some of that uh, tremendously heavy rainfall. And when you have the rain falling as heavily as it is, that could also result in some localized areas of some flooding. Thankfully, we haven't really had much in the way of flood concerns for today so far, but there is a flood watch issued for a large portion of our area as well until later on tonight, uh, just because we could continue to see some of that heavy rainfall. And some locations have already picked up about almost an inch of rainfall so far today, Ben. So this is uh, really making up for a large deficit that we had in the month of March. We were two inches below average on a rainfall in March. So we are making up for that deficit, but we also don't want it to come at such a quick pace that we end up with not just a tornado threat or a wind threat, but also a flooding threat too. Uh, yeah, yeah, coming at a price, unfortunately, and and that's that video really reminiscent of a year ago when uh, the West Baden Hotel did get to that damage to those uh, roof panels and some of the windows that took a while to fix there. So it doesn't hopefully look like it's large enough to cause that kind of damage at this time. But uh, some proof there that there is some hail concerns as we also continue into the late afternoon hours as uh, these storms are feeding off that warm air. Again, we are at 76 degrees. That is more than 10 degrees above normal and, and and some of our big tornado outbreaks in April have had the temperatures in the mid 70s. It just it just gives you an idea of the kind of atmosphere that you need to produce storms like this this time of the year. Uh, we also have the jet stream winds that are this up aloft that are greater than 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, uh, possibly near 100 miles per hour, uh, say about uh, 15,000 feet above the ground. Uh, and these storms are growing that tall and kind of tap into that energy and can bring it down on the ground. Not only that, it can also help produce some rotation that we're going to need to watch for. Uh, so severe thunderstorm warning there continues for a few more minutes around Paoli in Orange County. We'll see if that gets extended, though, a little bit longer. And then we might see some other portions uh, get a severe thunderstorm warning uh, put out, too. So as Alden was mentioning, looking at some rotation here near French Lick, it doesn't take time for a quick spin up tornado to occur. Uh, and also there is a correlation between spin up tornadoes and hail cores. They kind of go hand in hand and also concentrations of lightning strikes. Um, so where we see concentrations of lightning strikes, we're going to focus there. Hail cores, we're going to focus there. And where the green and reds are close together is where you also have that rotation. So there it does look like we have some rotation to keep an eye on here around French Lick and out to the west of Paoli. Heads up, that's not far from you, of course, if you're in the Paoli area. And there's a look at Highway 50 and then drops into uh, French Lick. Let's back out the view a little bit and keep it on the velocity though here, Alden. Let's see if we just see any more bright spots. So we do see some of that rotation there. We do see some of the potential damaging wind still just out to the west of Perry County in Indiana. So that is another cell that we're going to be watching moving to the east pretty quickly, east northeast at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. So here's Metro Louisville. Here's the radar site at Fort Knox. Um, so and here's this line of storms. Let's go back to go back to the radar view, view that we're used to. Um, and so we're, we're looking at a couple clusters here. This one in Orange County near Patoka Lake. Um, also a strong thunderstorm in northwestern Washington County about to cruise over the Muscatatuck River and then into portions of Jackson County, Indiana. So heads up Brownstown Seymour. It looks like this is generally heading your direction. Speaking of concentration of lightning strikes, we've got that here uh, on the, the county line between Orange and Washington County line and also maybe a bit of a hail core too uh, that we'll need to watch for. And then we have this line that we're also keeping an eye on that's moving into Perry County and into Crawford County right now, just off to the southwest of English. So that's getting a little bit closer. If you want to use that measuring tool, Alden, go down 64. I'm guessing that's about 35, 40, mi maybe about 40, 50 miles to the west of Louisville right now. And if you do some easy math, if this is moving 30, 40 miles to the east, we're looking at it's about an hour to an hour and a half away. Uh, so this is about 50 miles out to the west of Louisville right now. Uh, the tracks are moving this line east, picking up some speed, maybe around 40, 45. Uh, so again, around an hour, hour and a half away uh, from starting to threaten the Louisville metro area. So we're definitely going to stick here and watch this very closely as long as there are some warnings. 
It looks like this warning has been allowed to expire up here in northwestern Washington County and into Orange County. We're just going to have to wait and see if that uh, redevelops. But we still have this severe thunderstorm warning tornado possible tag included on it. Uh, that does include a little section of Crawford County along 64 just south of English uh, and then much of the Perry County area as well as it heads towards Leopold. Uh, another live view of some of those big raindrops, maybe a little hail involved as well uh, right there at French Lick a Resort in West Baden Springs Hotel up to the northwest in Orange County, uh, Indiana. So we're going to continue to watch this very closely here for you. We do have a tornado watch for the entire WHS 11 viewing area until 10 p.m. Uh, we've got all of our cameras, too, in Metro Louisville pointed out to the west for you as we see those storms approaching. We're going to continue to take some live looks outside. Again, those storms are about 45 miles due to the west of Louisville right now. Uh, so if you are getting home from work, maybe, uh, thankfully it's spring break for much of Kentucky, but Indiana has been back to school. I know a lot of schools were let out early because of the severe weather threat. But if you're out and about a little bit busy uh, today, stay weather aware, stay alert to the quickly changing conditions out there. Again, we are 76. This is the sunshine that we were not wanting this to see because it's making the atmosphere more and more unstable. And with that said, if we can pop on the, the Cape, as I was talking about earlier, Alden, and that's the availability uh, to ingest this muggy air that's out there for this time of the year and feed these severe thunderstorms and it is growing uh, across the area. So when we see these yellow orange colors, that means we have a lot of available storm energy to feed and fuel these storms, which means they're likely not going to be on a weakening trend. If anything, they might start to grow in strength over the next couple of hours. Backing up the view, this is the cold front out to the west. So once we can get this through, that severe weather threat is going to come to an end. It looks like that back edge of the severe weather energy will move to the east of our viewing area around 8, 9 o'clock. Uh, so once that happens, or as we approach sunset, the severe weather threat is over with. The round three severe weather threat for today is going to be over and done with. Uh, but for now, it is, uh, again, a ripe atmosphere for the potential of severe weather. And again, the National Weather Service has put out a blanket wide tornado watch for the entire viewing area until 10 p.m. because of the ingredients. So the watches are usually put out hopefully hours in advance of the developing severe weather situation. Then if a warning is issued, that means you need to seek shelter immediately. If you get a severe thunderstorm warning, you want to be inside and away from that danger. If you get a tornado warning, you not only want to be inside, you want to be away from the doors and the windows. You want to take action immediately and get down to the lowest level of your home or whatever structure that you are in, what, if it's a business or a place of work or your, your workplace, you want to be uh, seeking shelter. Uh, so right now watching these uh, kind of broken lines of strong to severe thunderstorms out to the west and we're, and we're just kind of keeping a side eye on these storms as well down the western Kentucky Parkway near Madisonville. It doesn't take long for these to start to sneak into our viewing area. Uh, so just a heads up early, about an hour and a half away, we might start to see these cells moving towards Litchfield, Hardinsburg, Breckenridge, and Grayson counties. During the beginning of a severe weather event, of course, we're going to be tracking these areas west of I-65. And then later this evening, after 6 o'clock, we're going to see this mess move to the east of Interstate 65. And when we can give you the all clear and, and not worry about it, we'd like to do that as well. But right now, we are starting to see that increasing threat uh, just out to the west of Louisville. At the moment, we just have one severe thunderstorm warning. Is that until 445, Alden? Yes. Okay, that's until 445. That's about 45 miles out to the west of Louisville. We can go ahead and do some inspecting of that uh, big thunderstorm there approaching Leopold right now with possibly some damaging wind gusts. Can't rule out uh, an isolated tornado. So we are st still seeing those winds in blue that indicate uh, winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. That can do damage to trees, to power lines, maybe a little roof damage, maybe to the shed. It can flip the trampolines and, and mess up the yard. 
that right there, that core that we're watching, that's, that's tapping into some of those jet stream winds heading into central Perry County. This is the velocity. This is your regular radar that you're used to. This is the velocity. This is measuring the speed of the raindrops. Uh, so this is moving to the east northeast towards the Leopold area. Definitely want to stay inside until that moves on through your area. Um, so this heavy rain spreading up towards the English area now in central Crawford County. And this is eventually going to spread east towards Leavenworth into Alton and then eventually the New Salisbury and into the Cordon area into Harrison County. So no warning yet for you guys here in Harrison County in eastern Crawford County, but would not be surprised if we see an extension, an expansion of that severe thunderstorm warning off to the east as it also gets a little bit closer to Louisville too. And we're just going to have to watch any of these little notches that did produce a couple tornadoes earlier today. That one that we had earlier this morning in Nelson County and then at Georgetown, Indiana also had a very brief uh, touchdown spin up tornado. Uh, so strong thunderstorm, severe possible. Uh, also can't rule out a spin up tornado as this is moving down Interstate 64. Uh, the very northeastern edge of it starting to produce some heavy rainfall around English. This is some difficult driving conditions as well. If you get stuck in this, maybe you did earlier today, it can be blinding and dangerous rainfall, uh, just torrential and tropical, and also uh, putting down uh, frequent cloud to ground lightning strikes as well. So that is the one warning that we have at this time. We zoom in the Metro Louisville. I just want to mention that we, we do have some darkening skies here and there. We've got one little downpour right now uh, just off to the uh, around the Butchel area in Newburgh, just to the north of Oklahoma, just off to the east of the airport. Um, but we have these that are moving pretty quickly off to the northeast. Uh, they are not strengthening at this time, so that's not severe. If you do see some of these downpours around Louisville, uh, don't be too scared of that at this time. We are watching that main threat still about 40 to 45 miles out to the west of Louisville. But uh, overall, winds in the atmosphere are pushing everything to the northeast right now ahead of that strong cold front. That's really going to be dropping those temperatures over the next 24 hours. It's going to feel more winter like tomorrow. In fact, there's actually a chance for some snow showers by tomorrow night. So it is a, a crazy start to, to our first week of April. As we expand out again, there are a few more of these downpours uh, that we're just going to kind of keep an eye on as they're growing in this unstable environment. Some heavy rainfall around Willisburg, just north of Springfield in Washington County, Kentucky. This is just off to the east of Bardstown, not far from where we had that tornado touchdown near Chaplin, Kentucky. Uh, near the Chaplin River. Uh, and then uh, again, Perry County still has that uh, severe thunderstorm warning, watching some development off to the southwest. Re regional radar, Alden, if we want to give kind of an overall view of the setup here um, and, and, and see, because there's a lot of lightning strikes off to the south. Uh, but this is the last main event, so to speak. If you want to go ahead and put on the composite and, and check out the, the entire Ohio Valley. Uh, region that's under a moderate risk of severe storms. So you, you've got some lines cutting through central Indiana, western sections of our viewing area, and then down towards Nashville. So these are clusters that we're going to need to be watching as they're making their way uh, up to the northeast. Um, so, so far, we haven't seen any tornado warnings yet, but we've had a couple of these severe thunderstorm warnings uh, with the extra mention that they could produce uh, a spin up tornado. Um, so watching this threat very closely here for you during our late afternoon hours here at 438, uh, still at 76 degrees, so very warm out there uh, and that, that atmosphere is still uh, has the ingredients to produce some strong to severe thunderstorms over the next several hours uh, up to around sunset tonight is when we're going to be watching this very closely here for you. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, our ho hometown view and uh, we'll go we'll go back to the metro and then we'll try to wrap things up. Keep a close eye on these warnings and we'll get back to our uh, WHS 11 uh, 4 p.m. newscast here for you. Um, so again, this did have a warning earlier. It does not now. It doesn't look like it's quite as organized as it's moving through Orange County in Indiana through Paoli with some heavy rainfall and um, another thunderstorm here moving over northwestern areas of Washington County around Campbellsburg. So heavy rain, lightning, thunder, some gusty winds. No warnings on this activity right here. About 40 miles, 45 miles out to the west of Louisville. Still a severe thunderstorm warning here. Getting a little bit of a notch there north of Leopold that we might need to watch with reflectivity um, as there could be some potential uh, damaging wind gusts here, if not a brief spin up tornado. That's just to the north of Leopold in Perry County. So this is the 
the, the, the storm that is mishaving the most, I should say, uh, that is just off to the southwest of Le Leavenworth. Uh, so this is a severe thunderstorm morning until 445, uh, capable of producing. I think we should just hold on here a little bit longer um, to see if this wraps up or goes away because that's a pretty decent notch right there uh, with some lightning strikes, heavy rainfall, and maybe a little bit of uh, nickel or penny size hail. Track on that as that, that little area of rotation in just north of Leopold moving towards the Beechwood area at about 450. And there's a tornado warning. There we go. So we were able to give you some heads up before the tornado warning. Um, I'm betting this goes until about 515. Yes. So 515. So that's uh, it's about 35 more minutes from now. This tornado warning, uh, we'll put a track back on this here in just a second, includes Alton, includes Leavenworth, areas down 64. So this tornado warning goes through Crawford County. Uh, it is southeast of English, by the way, your county seat there. And then uh, this does include Corden and New Salisbury. So we were able to give you a heads up ahead of time here. Um, so you've got some time to prepare if you are in eastern Crawford County and into the Harrison County areas as well, including Corden. And ben, right. that's moving to the east at 55. So this is moving very quickly. We're seeing a pretty good notch right there. Uh, so into the Beechwood area in just a few minutes at around 448 Leavenworth. 452, Leavenworth School, 452. Uh, in this uh, storm track is the Wyandotte area. Uh, White Cloud at, uh, as we approach 5 o'clock. And again, Corden popping up here at 5.05 and then to New Salisbury at 5.10. Uh, so we are seeing rotation. Um, this is a... Uh, a this is probably the best rotation we've seen so far. Uh, here is Interstate uh, 64, obviously, uh, west of Louisville, and then that exit there is 66, Indiana 66. Um, so the blue is indicating wind speeds greater than 60 miles per hour. If you want to pop off the warning real quickly, uh, this is near the Oriole area, um, and this is the Horseshoe Bend of Indiana near Leavenworth. So we're getting 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And, and maybe check briefly the storm relative velocity. And so we've got the reds going away from the radar, green toward the radar. So we're getting some decent rotation right there. Want to be seeking shelter now. Take action here in the Oriole area. Uh, this is uh, 66, just south of Interstate 64, just south of West Fork. If we want to go tight right about here, maybe around the Oriole area and, and get into street level mapping and we'll, get, we'll take a look at, at some locations. We should be, if we get the street spotter up there, uh, we should be able to get some uh, streets to pop up. But it looks like, again, we're in a pretty rural location of Indiana in eastern and Perry County. And eventually this is going to move into Crawford County and then eventually also into Harrison County. So this does include Corden, and this is a new tornado warning about 40 miles west of Louisville until 5.15 p.m. Um, as uh, the radar update now has it moving into the Oriole area. So let's, let's go ahead and back up since we're not seeing any neighborhood roads right there. Uh, still, start, still seeing that notch as that has jumped ahead in that one radar sweep, Alden, uh, into the far northeastern corner of Perry County. So the good news is for Perry County, the severe weather threat's gonna be over with very quickly. Unfortunately, it's gonna be moving into your southern section of Crawford County. It is moving just south of Interstate 64. Uh, so there's your route into Leavenworth, and it is very close to heading right toward uh, the Leavenworth area and uh, the Overlook restaurant there too. Uh, so there is a uh, Highway 62 right below 64. And on that track, as it moves off to the east northeast, um, it looks like that's going to be moving into the central areas of Harrison County. And if you're unfamiliar with these areas, Louisville is just right over here off to the east. Uh, so here is a, another track as that is moving off to the east northeast. Heading towards uh, Leavenworth here in just a few minutes. Probably that next radar sweep, Alden, it's going to be bumping into this horseshoe bend of the Ohio River near Leavenworth. A uh, very popular spot. White Cloud at about 5 o'clock into the Corden area at 5.05. So that track remains the same for Corden into New Salisbury at about 5.10, 5.05 to 5.10. Georgetown, you had a little tornado touchdown uh, around midday today. Uh, another one heading your direction at about 5.15 potentially. Edwardsville at about 520 and into the knobs as we approach 520. So we have this 
strong area of heavy rain, heavy rain, thunderstorm activity moving down 64. On the northern edge, we don't see the rotation. There could be a little bit of hail coming down around Marengo and English, parts of Crawford County. It's this central area uh, where we've got the, the little notch here, this bend. This is jutting out right here, this little kind of mini bow echo, Alden, and that's, the, that's where we have the potential, some damaging straight line winds as well. You want to be definitely seeking shelter if you're south of the tornado potential. We've popped up a severe thunderstorm warning to cover the rest of this severe thunderstorm um, that's capable of winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. So hey Ben, we yeah. also have the beast heading westward right now. It's currently in Corridan. If we can yeah. get a uh, look outside with our first alert storm team beast, it's in downtown Corridan. You can see those dark, threatening looking skies out there, and you probably have noticed quite a bit of lightning, whoever is in the beast uh, currently. So it's parked there on the street. It's about to get moving again. The storm is headed towards Corridan. Corridan is in that tornado warning that goes until uh, 5 15 for this uh, evening. But Ben, as you were saying, we are starting to notice some of that Boeing section near Oriole and that still in there as well. So something we're going to be uh, keeping an eye on here. But the notch does not look as defined as it did just a little bit ago when it was just to the north of Leopold, which is a good thing. But we are still watching that little inflow there, that little kink that we see, that sort of V shape. That's what we're going to be uh, watching here. And I'll get in a little bit closer so you can see this is near Beechwood. It's actually past Oriole now, so it's in a more rural location, but uh, still going to be something we keep an eye on as it heads towards uh, Beechwood and towards Fredonia making its way towards Leavenworth and if you're in Corden you should also be and you're or taking your tornado precautions at the moment in case the storm does happen to maintain its strength here over the next uh, several minutes which it's moving relatively quickly off to the east and northeast at 55 miles per hour so and relatively speaking it's not going to be very long before it makes its way into your neighborhood. And as uh, we will go ahead and do some uh, analysis here with our velocity product and the region that we're going to be watching is that I'll circle it for you is this area right here where if we had a tornado, it would probably be that location. So that's what we're keeping our eye on and that's what we're going to continue to track here as the storm moves off to the east and the northeast. So as mentioned, this is going at about 55 miles per hour. I'll put another track on this, get a little bit closer. It's to the east of Oriole. Now. So Oriole, you are out of the primary thre thread and we just got a new scan in. It's this area right there that we're going to be watching. So I'll put that track out. This would put it in Fredonia in about three minutes, Leavenworth in about uh, five minutes, Leavenworth School at 453, Wyandotte at 456 and near White Cloud at five o'clock this evening. So it's that little couplet that we're keeping a close eye on. And Ben, what we haven't looked at so far is our debris tracker. Yeah. I don't quite see anything that might be debris. Uh, we may go back a couple scans and just see if there was any. Uh, it's usually a, a debris will be usually a concentrated area of blue. I'm not necessarily seeing that. Now just the straight line winds can kind of knock uh, some dust up and, and, and some and some things in the air that we can every once in a while see a little bit of clutter, but we're not seeing that debris tracker uh, that real uh, solid indication that there is any debris here necessarily. Um, so it looks, it looks like it's um, over the Boone Creek Barrens and between the Hoosier Hoosier National Forest or Oriole Trail. So it does look like it's a lot of forest right now. So that's maybe why on the debris we're not really picking up too much, but it is moving towards Leavenworth, which we're going to be watching because there are some communities just around downtown uh, Leavenworth. We have the Ohio River. So if you live along South Frindendona Road and uh, just west of Leavenworth, you are the next spot where this potential tornado is heading. And Alden, also let's um, let's go back to the regular radar mode. I want to show we, we're giving a lot of tracks, of course, here in the tornado area. But let's show how big this uh, tornado warning is, and also the perspective from Louisville. And when we do have. Uh, out in the beast in Corden, which they need to be very safe. Um, our reporter Taylor Woods uh, with, I believe, our photographer Emma. Um, so they need to be very careful as that moves their direction and stay hunkered down until that moves through. And they're going to be close enough to maybe look for some potential damage that goes through there. So this is where we have our storm team uh, weather beast located uh, to keep an eye on that line right there. And then you've got this very large severe thunderstorm warning. Um, that covers a lot of real estate here, the very northern tip of Breckenridge County, so over the Ohio River, northern sections of Meade, crossing
crossing the river into Harrison County, including Cordon. You've got the severe thunderstorm warning. You also have the tornado warning. And then that uh, the tornado warning almost comes up to Palmyra in the New Salisbury area in the northern sections of Harrison County. Uh, so then you've got Highway 150 that goes through Palmyra. And then you're crossing over into Washington County. You also have that severe thunderstorm warning that is just south of Salem. Uh, so it is kind of a, a ragged line of clusters of storms that we are watching here in southern Indiana first. But, but uh, what we see a lot of times, what um, impacts southern Indiana will quickly impact Metro Louisville. We had up to maybe a couple thousand power outages earlier this morning in Louisville from those storms. There's that potential we could get some more power outages if these winds hold together. Again, this has been a long track uh, situation, Alden, with these strong straight line winds. And we're seeing some hail cores embedded too. This is an indication that this storm's getting perhaps a little bit stronger. We're also seeing when we see scan after scan of these notches, that that is an indication that there is some rotation that is lingering. There's a hail core nearby and that uh, there could be a quick spin up tornado. A lot of times that rotation can hover around the ground and then drop down, do a little bit of damage, and then pop back up. Uh, so quick spin up kind of situation here uh, along this squall line that is uh, moving to the east at about uh, 40 to 50 miles per hour. So we're, 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 we're kind of mixing up the analysis here between the regular reflectivity where we see the notch, but also mixing in uh, some of the, looking at some of the wind speeds, the red colors near the green colors. That's the easiest way that we can see if there are some rotation. Now this is the storm team beast again with our, our reporter Taylor Woods out there. And that is the lowering that we're talking about. You can see that, that cloud base right there. Uh, that's the inflow, the warm air, going into the storm and then going straight up uh, thousands of feet up in the air tapping into the strong winds aloft and sometimes bringing that down when that happens as well you can start to get some rotation at the surface and that's what we have near the leavenworth area that is why we have a tornado warning out until 5 15 so it's about 25 minutes longer um, in, in this area of the supercell uh, that is just north of the alton area now, this is what we often call a bookend vortice on the northern edge of a little bit of a bow echo. Here's the apex of the bow echo. And on the apex, you can get some damaging winds, too, that are close to 70 mile per hour. Uh, that's crossing the horseshoe bend there of the Ohio River near Leavenworth. And so moving into the very northern tip of Meade County. So we're looking into the thunderstorm there with our storm team weather beast that is uh, looking off to the west of Cordon, Indiana from Harrison County. Uh, so getting a good view of the structure of some of these storms. Um, so that's going to be moving to Cordon here over the next 15 minutes or so as this moves uh, pretty rapidly off to the east. Is that motion still at about 50, Alden? Yeah, around 50 to 55. So these are pretty quick. And that, that can be a good thing too. I, I know you, you, it's an inconvenience to have to go to your place of shelter, but at the same time, it may only last about 15 minutes that you need to be down there. This is not very wide. This is maybe five miles wide. It's moving 50 miles per hour. So it's going to be in and out. You're going to get the gusty winds, the heavy rain, the lightning, the thunder, maybe some hail. And then once that back edge moves through, it looks like your severe weather threats are going to be coming to an end very quickly. So on that track, heading towards White Cloud 456. So here in just a couple of minutes, heading right over White Cloud. Um, then it's going to be heading into Cordon at about 5 o'clock to 505. So it's not going to take long to get there over the next uh, 5 to 10 minutes. Into Georgetown, Indiana at around 510, new tornado warning. Into New Albany um, as we head over the next 20 minutes. So this is a new area of rotation that we're watching here in Jackson County to the south of Seymour. We've got a hail core with this. We've got rotation right here, right over the, uh, it looks like the East Fork of the White Rivers. It comes through the Muscatatuck River. And so that is near Crothersville. This is up I-65. Uh, so we've got e exit 50 right about here at Seymour. Uh, it's about 40 to 50 miles north of Louisville. Um, and this is where we have some rotation. Looks like we actually have a couple areas of hail cores near Crothersville. So if you're in Crothersville, be seeking shelter right now. So Another tornado warning? Uh, so this is in the border area between the Louisville Weather Service and the Indianapolis Weather Service. So the Louisville Weather Service is just kind of ex filling in that gap gotcha. uh, to the south. But that makes this sense. is moving to the east at 55 miles per hour for 60 mile per hour winds and a quarter sized tail. This is only a radar indicated rotation at the moment. And that is the radar indicated rotation right there, right over the river. Um, so this is Jackson County, Scott County. So here's Hardy Lake. 
Crothersville in this new tornado warning into the Lovett area. So now we're moving into Jennings County. So far, it looks like this will stay south of you guys in North Vernon. This Highway 50 in, in Indiana that connects uh, North Vernon to Seymour. Uh, the heart of this supercell is staying south of Seymour. We're getting a pretty decent hail core right there. That might be up to quarter size hail. Um, we can check the hail tracker. The hail tracker can be on a little bit of a delay. Um, so that's probably showing about half of an inch, which is about nickel size, maybe a little bit greater than that. Um, so th now that that hail core is here, it may have grown a little bit. So we might be up to about quarter size hail just out to the west of Crothersville. Crothersville, take action. Be in your place of shelter right now. Uh, we're, we're kind of in between the Indianapolis radar and the Louisville radar, so it might flip back and forth. But uh, if you want to query that, some of these pixels right here, I bet we're getting up to 70 mile per hour close to 70 mile per hour winds there. There we go. 70 mile per hour winds. So if not an EF zero EF one tornado, there's the potential uh, that we have uh, uh, damaging straight line winds that can also cause power outages and do some damage. So a, a damaging storm here uh, near the Tampico area, Crothersville, Little York. We're kind of at the confluence of a triple point of several counties. So we've got Scott, and then we got ja we've got Jackson County, Scott, and then northeastern Washington County, all right there where we have uh, this potential tornado radar indicated. Here's Highway 56, Interstate 65. Here's the Scottsburg exit, Crothersville exit, and then the Seymour exit, if you're familiar with southern Indiana. And then just out to the west of there, you've got the East Fork of the White River that comes into the Muscatatuck River, and that's where we have some of this rotation. If we want to go back to the reflectivity, um, that's where we're we see that notch. For the rest of this afternoon, evening, get used to this formation right there. So that is an inflow notch near kind of the bow echo attached to a supercellular structure, severe storm. If you want to keep it really simple and then the potential of some hail as well and some frequent cloud to ground lightning, torrential rainfall. So a lot of those severe weather hazards, there could be some ponding of water on the roads. Let's go ahead and put on the debris tracker, Alden, because that is really tightened up there over the last scan. We could also be looking at some hail there. Um, debris tracker yeah. can also debris tracker can uh, detect not just uh, tornado damage and debris, but it can also detect hail. That kind of broad little dropout that we see there, those yellows and oranges, I believe, are really going to more so be indicating uh, hail. I'm also working on pulling up our Scottsburg camera as we pan that to the west. We'll be able to get a view there and, and that northwest is ready now. So yeah, this is looking to the west and northwest ish yeah, uh, currently. Yeah, we'll need to keep a close eye on that. We we might need to slide it a little bit to the right to get more of a northerly direction, but that's not a bad view um, uh, of again. You're seeing the updraft base right about there um, and, and this camera might start rocking and rolling as these storms uh, get a little bit closer um, to just staying just north of Scottsburg right now. So here, here's also Austin, Indiana, and it looks like that hail core just north of you. Let's go back to the reflectivity and see. Uh, so yeah, Austin, you're gonna be one to be seeking shelter right now, lowest level of your home, away from the doors and the windows, seek shelter, take action now in Crothersville. Uh, this is tracking east, northeast at about 50 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and put that track back on. And if we can take the camera view off for just a moment so we can get uh, the big view so we can see some of those times right there as this heads to Deputy Elementary School at about 510 Hilltown at 511 into Comiskey at around 510 to 515 DuPont 520. So here's a heads up for you guys. This is the next 10 to 20 minutes. These towns, if you have, if you live in a smaller community around some of these towns, uh, please be seeking shelter at this time. And, and the DuPont Elementary School, same time there at 520 into the Wirt area at around 522. So this includes northern sections of Scott County, southern Jennings County, southeastern Jackson County, far northeastern Washington County. Again, there's three or four counties that are coming together right here. That hail core is looking more impressive. The notch is pretty impressive. This is starting to look more and more like a hook echo near the Crothersville area. Uh, again, seek shelter at this time. Crothersville to Austin, that looks like the most um, significant area in Indianapolis. The National Weather Service in Indianapolis just said that there's very strong rotation with that storm in Jackson County. They had a report from someone in Little York that they could see some lowering and potentially a tornado. I think this is easily the most threatening storm that we've had so far today.
And with that said, I, we have another tornado warning, so I do, do want to back things back up. Let's go ahead and over the, look at the overall view of our viewing area. So southern Indiana is being hit hardest right now with the potential of severe thunderstorms producing tornadoes. This line is not too far out to the west of Louisville right now, heading toward Cordon into Harrison County. Uh, so it is now moving, Perry, moving out of Perry County, moving out of uh, Crawford County very soon, over Leavenworth. Um, the, the, these notches are not as well defined, so we're, you can, we're all at home get a lesson on what looks more tornadic than other areas. There could be a weak little spin up in this ragged area of the squall line that's moving toward the cordon area over the next few minutes, hitting New Salisbury now on top of Palmyra with the potential of some damaging wind gusts. Let's look at velocity very quickly, Alden, before we head back north up towards Crothersville. Um, so uh, some of these wind speeds could be in excess of 50, 60 miles per hour. There's the potential of a brief spin up tornado near the white cloud area. This is tracking down 64. As we back up the view a little bit, this is only a couple minutes away from heading towards downtown Cordon, central Harrison County, and then into the Lanesville area. Georgetown as well. And then it's right after that, if we back up even a little bit farther, that's going to be moving right over Louisville uh, over the next um, Let's give it about 20 minutes and it'll likely be coming into PRP Valley Station, Shively, into the Portland area, into New Albany, into the Knobs, possibly clipping parts of Sellersburg as well. So all these areas, heads up. You don't have a warning yet, but you're going to be up next. Ooh, man, we have some. This is getting strong here in Crothersville. So let's look at some of these pixels first Then we need to put a track on it. Crothersville, Austin be seeking shelter at this time. There is a potential tornado on the ground. We're now up to 96 mile per hour raindrops that are spinning 100 mile per hour uh, pixels here on the velocity mode. This is the strongest that we've seen today. Uh, there is a likelihood that we've got uh, not only strong rotation, but that rotation coming to the ground, uh, and if not, some damaging straight line winds and some large hail. 113. Let's get to the debris tracker. The problem is that we are a good 50, 45, 50 miles away from the radar. The radar goes up at an angle. So it might not see exactly what's on the ground. So there could be some debris that's flying beneath the radar a few thousand feet. But because the, low, the clouds are only a few thousand feet above the ground, we could have some uh, debris that's close to the ground that uh, the, the debris tracker, the correlation coefficient, is not seeing. But nonetheless, be seeking shelter if you're around Crothersville still, Austin, Retreat, Uniontown. These bright colors indicate not good things, which could be large hail and the potential of some debris. Speaking of hail, let's see if that hail core has increased. Again, there's a correlation between a strong hail core and also rotation and a lot of lightning strikes. So this is about, I'd say, three-quarter inch hail. We're probably up to, I'd say, quarter size to go nearly golf ball size hail with this kind of wind speeds that we're seeing in the atmosphere. Austin, be seeking shelter. Any traffic along 65 between Crothersville and Austin? Getting, I'm getting a report here in the chat from the emergency manager in Jefferson County, Indiana. Uh, somebody just called the emergency manager in Indiana and said that they have seen a tornado on the ground up there near the Crothersville area, which yep. would uh, probably confirm some of those extremely high pixel values that we were seeing earlier over, over 100 miles per hour. So if you're in Carruthersville, Austin, Kaminsky, or towards Hardy Lake, you need to be treating this as if this is a tornado yep. on the ground heading in your direction. And I would not be surprised if we see this go from red to purple, which means it's a confirmed tornado on the ground very soon. So Austin, be in your place of shelter. Take action now. Let's look at, let's put a definite track on this, Alden. Anywhere in this lighter pink area is at least damaging winds or the potential of some damaging wind gusts. Let's do that squall line tracker as well. We'll look at this really quickly. Um, but this is going to be heading towards Hardy Lake. That's uh, the, the northern sections of Scott County. And then north of Scott County, this is going to be possibly clipping parts of Jennings County. So staying off to the south of North Vernon, it looks like right now. Um, obviously, we're running into some rural areas, so not getting a whole lot of towns that are popping up, but heading towards the Deputy Elementary School at about 510 into Comiskey at 510 to 515. High likelihood that we have some damage on the ground from this here. This is about 45 miles to the north of Louisville, north of Scottsburg in, in the Austin area and near Crothersville. DuPont Elementary School around, if you're in a community around the DuPont Elementary School or DuPont, that is where we have rotation. Um, this is a look at that cell north of Scottsburg. Let's go full screen with that. So that looks like we're looking at the leading edge. So this, we're looking from the water tower in downtown Scottsburg with that camera looking at that supercell. 
that is near Hardy Lake in the northern tip of Scott County. So that is the potential of a tornado on the ground or the leading edge of damaging straight line winds. Um, so we're getting a pretty close view of that. We're going to very take a close uh, we're going to keep a very close eye on that structure right there so we're going to move that camera down just a little bit so it looks like um, that is a, a, obviously a lowering in the wall cloud getting close to the ground and also the leading edge of the overall squall line uh, could be producing uh, some damage there and you can also see kind of a the the foot of the rain out ahead of it, pushing out, indicating some damaging straight line winds. So this is a this is our the strongest thunderstorm that we've seen today in northern Scott County, southeastern Jackson County in Indiana. Again, this is about 45 miles north of Louisville. Uh, this is north of the Scottsburg exit as you get to the Austin and Crothersville exit in Indiana on along I-65. Let's go ahead and back up that view. You can see how fast that's moving. It's going to be moving into and through the screen very quickly. If you want to go ahead, we definitely keep a, 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 an eye and move that camera around. Those winds, yeah, control for a Colleen's second. got control. Colleen Peterson, Storm Team Meteorologist Colleen Peterson controlling the radar now. Uh, this is a, a dangerous area that we're seeing here. These, these pixels are indicating winds in excess of 70, 80. We even had some pixels up around 100 miles per hour. Uh, the worst part of this is moving just due east of Crothersville in Austin. Uh, we'll, we'll back up that camera view on our Scottsburg camera. So here is Scottsburg, by the way, and this camera is looking off to the north, and we're going to need to move that camera view from north to northeast to keep an eye on that. If there's a tornado, it's often on the southwest side of the supercell so there's a chance that we could see that uh, so again there is the leading edge of the potential damaging winds the, in the torrential rainfall and Colleen if we go back to the regular view of radar the reflectivity and just see some of the structure here with this supercell and then we need to go back closer to Louisville in just a second and do another track on that storm system that's now hitting Cordon uh, so we've got a couple areas of our biggest concern here in southern Indiana we still have the hail core the potential of quarter to golf ball size hail uh, this is southwest of Lovett so this is the very far southern sections of Jennings County as you cross over into Scott County. There is still some rotation right here and it looks like the worst of it has passed to the east of Crothersville and east of Interstate 65. So it's this notch right here that we're watching for the potential of damaging winds. Let's go full screen with the radar so we can see our track. And since we are getting some more towns in that tornado warning, and that tornado warning, I believe, goes until about 530. That's going to move it into northern Jefferson County, Indiana, staying so far north of Madison, Indiana, heading to DuPont at 545 Madison Consolidated High School at 6 o'clock. It's going to be very near there if this does hold together. This could be kind of a, a long track supercell that we're going to be keeping an eye on into the Bellevue area at 605. China 610, Barbersville at 620, Craig at 640 into the Friendship area at 650. Uh, so the potential of a tornado on the ground here. Let's go back to the debris tracker, the correlation coefficient. We're going to see if we see, I, again, the, the radar view is going up, uh, possibly skipping above what could be um, a tornado on the ground. But this is showing the potential of hail, these brighter colors. Um, this is just plain rainfall when it's all one color. Uh, so back to this is the storm relative. If we want to go back to base velocity, there's, there's still some rotation here just east of Crothersville and Austin. Uh, there's that notch. Um, so here are the, some of the wind speeds that we're seeing. If we want to go adjust the camera view, shift it up to the north a little bit. Um, it looks like this is heading right now into the Hardy Lake area, northeastern Scott County, and about to move over into Jefferson County, Indiana. Uh, so there is uh, Highway 3. It comes into 250 south of Lovett. Uh, Highway 50 is up here in North Vernon. So as you take three down south towards Hardy Lake, this is where we have uh, that rotation right now. All right, so let's go back to regular uh, reflectivity, regular radar mode here, um, Colleen, and back up our view even more. Um, so the rotation perhaps not as strong as it was, but still a pretty good notch right there east of Crothersville. Uh, tornado warning continues. And is that until 530? 
Uh, yes, I believe. Okay, so until 530, that includes areas in southern Jennings County, northern Jefferson County, just north of Madison. Let's go back south to Louisville, where we have another severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado warning that goes until 515. A little bit longer here for the Cordon area. This looks more like a straight line wind damage issue um, that shows a pretty clean edge right here. Uh, so as we track this off to the east at about four, four. Six. Okay, hey, um, um, six. okay, according to uh, the Jefferson County Indiana Emergency Manager, uh, Jennings County WDC tornado on the ground heading toward Lancaster and Wirt. Okay, so, so it looks like confirmed tornado is still on the ground there. Uh, so we'll get right back up there here in just a moment. But heads up, Louisville, severe thunderstorm warning, tornado warning that is in cordon. This looks like more of a straight line wind damage threat. There could be some little notches that we'll need to watch for. There could be a quick spin up tornado anywhere along this line as it's going to be moving into Louisville, downtown Louisville over the next 10 to 15 minutes. So again, we'll put a track on that, leading that edge there a little bit. So into the sellers at about 520, in Louisville about 530. So again, about 10 to 20 minutes time frame. Prospect uh, 530 to 540, Anchorage 550. Everybody be seeking shelter as we'll likely have a warning out ahead of this here in the next few minutes. Uh, into the Anchorage area at about 550, Fern Creek at about 550, Fisherville at 6 o'clock, Shepherdsville at 615. So damaging straight line wind threat is our main issue here. Power outages as it's moving through Harrison County into Floyd County, going to be moving into the Knobs, Sellersburg, New Albany, Louisville, Portland, Downtown, Valley Station, Shively, PRP, uh, Fairdale, other parts of Metro Louisville. Heads up, severe weather threat with damaging winds over the next 20 or 30 minutes. Back to reflectivity. Let's back out and show the entire viewing area. We're going to need to watch anywhere along this line. There are no warnings at this time, but just keep a heads up here. Elizabethtown, Hardensburg, Litchfield. These storms could get stronger here over the next couple of hours. This is now purple. That means a confirmed tornado on the ground just to the northwest of Madison. That's this area right here just to the east of Crothersville. Um, so that is tracking right on the Jennings in Scott County line. That is right there as, as we kind of clean up the view. We have the concentration of lightning strikes. We have the concentration of the hail core right here. We have the curvature, this notch, uh, this inflow jet, if you want to call it that, um, that. That is where we have the potential of a tornado on the ground. Heading towards Paris, Hardy Lake, Comiskey, seek shelter, take action, be in your place of shelter, away from the doors and the windows, lowest level of your home. Um, you can grab some pillows and blankets very quickly if you have that time, but heading into the Paris area right now. Here's where Indiana 250 comes to Highway 3. Uh, that is where the tornado is potentially on the ground right now. It's usually right about there. If you want to go back to our, our velocity mode, uh, we can see what some of the wind speeds are. Yeah, there's, that's where the tornado is on the ground right now. That's just to the north of Hardy Lake uh, that we had a spike of over 80, 90 mile per hour winds, possibly 100 mile per hour winds. So this is the far northeast. We've got three counties coming together. This is Scott County, this is Jennings County, and this is Jefferson County, Indiana. Here's where Highway 3 comes into 250. Let's go out a little bit uh, farther to the east, uh, down 250, Paris. Let's zoom into some of the, the roads here. Um, ben, so that rotation is right over North Sunnyside Road, as well as uh, Peacock Road, where those two actually intersect North County Road. I'm just listing off a couple of roads where I see where, where the radar is picking up on some of that rotation, uh, as well as Chastine Road. Thank you, Christina. That is, uh, the, the, if, you, if you're familiar with those roads here in northeastern Scott, southern Jennings, northwestern Jefferson County, that's where you need to be seeking shelter right now. Confirmed tornado on the ground. They have been viewing this tornado on the ground from uh, parts of Jefferson County in Indiana. Our Scottsburg camera is looking live that direction too. Uh, there's a chance that we, we saw that as well uh, near the ground. So we're, we are watching that live too. So we're, we're looking from the south uh, towards a potential tornado on the ground from the top of the Scottsburg uh, water tower. A dangerous situation here. Please take this seriously. If you're around Hardy Lake, here's Hilltown. Here's where 250 comes into Highway 3. There's Comiskey, worst of it just south of Comiskey. This is maybe, I'd say, 15 miles northwest of Madison, Indiana, as it starts to move into northern um, Jefferson County. Let's go ahead and do a tracker from downtown, just that uh, measuring tool from Madison and Hanover. We can do a track as well, uh, but that measuring tool from Madison uh, off to where we see uh, that rotation. And let's take off the camera view again and see some of the towns in the way. Weather first.
All right, all right, back to the track here. Right, it's heading towards China at 606, Brooksburg at 620, Craig 635, VV Indiana at 650, and then it's starting to move out of the viewing area into Cotton, Warsaw, and into the Randolph area. Um, so we'll get that measuring tool out. Again, I think we're only, oh uh, yeah, just about 15 miles off to the west of uh, Madison, Indiana. Um, so this is putting down some damaging winds, if not still a tornado on the ground. Um, these, these colors are indicating some very, very strong winds. Um, this is just to the northeast of our viewing area. That's a potential tornado on the ground too, just to the, to the northeast of Madison. Uh, but it looks like Crothersville, the worst of it is now east of you. Uh, we're gonna make some calls to emergency management dispatch uh, in these areas. Uh, there is high likelihood of damage uh, from this tornado. This purple color indicates not just a tornado warning, but a confirmed tornado warning tornado on the ground, not just radar indicated, as we say a lot of times, this has been spotted on the ground near Hardy Lake. Um, so let's go back to the regular radar view. That's, a, that's another spike right there. So if we take the warning off and click on some of that, that's going to be uh, 80, 90, 100 mile per hour winds, 82 mile per hour wind, Highway 3, just south of where 250 comes in. We are now moving this tornado over Highway 3, northeast of Hardy Lake, east of Crothersville. It is now moving into far western Jefferson County, Indiana, about 15 miles northwest of downtown Madison. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Uh, we just got a storm report. A roof was torn off the fire station in Crawford, Indiana. Okay, so we got a roof blown off in Crawford, Indiana, Crawford County, Indiana? Yes. Okay, so that is with the line west of Louisville. So now we've got... We have two a, separate areas. Yeah, we, we've got damage reports from the squall line west of Louisville that we're watching here. So this line right here, when it moved through Crawford uh, County, uh, did some uh, roof damage there. We have a severe thunderstorm warning out for downtown Louisville with this line that has the potential of producing winds in excess of 70 miles per hour. So on top of Georgetown, Lanesville, Floyd's Knobs, everybody here in this warning needs to be seeking shelter. That includes all of Floyd County into Western Clark County. There's the Borden Valley, there's Highway 60, here's I-65. Downtown Jeffersonville and downtown Louisville be seeking shelter um, with this that could also have some embedded little spin up tornadoes as well. We cannot rule that out. We've got our cameras pointed that direction if we want to take some of the cameras and then we're going to need to get back to the tornado on the ground as we're getting busier and busier here as we're past the five o'clock hour. Um, so we're getting uh, numerous warnings. We'll put a track on this as it moves to the east at about 50 miles per hour. So we're going to see a lot of communities here um, that will be impacted from damaging winds. Power outage is likely, maybe some damage to some of your property as well. Got to go back to full screen though so I can see those times. Heading into Louisville at 540, into Shively at about 543, LaGrange at 6 o'clock. Fern Creek at a 615. Of course, if you live near these locations, you want to be seeking shelter as well. Into Newcastle, Kentucky, into Henry County at 620. Pleasureville at about 640. And Shelbyville, Kentucky, as we approach 650. So this is a squall line that has a history of doing damage, has moved through Cordon um, and is now moving towards Elizabeth, Indiana, near Caesars Casino. It's going to cross the river into Shively, PRP, and uh, downtown Louisville, into Portland very soon. About to hit downtown New Albany and uh, Clarksville. Jeffersonville, Sellersburg, other parts of Clark County. That's for Louisville right now over the next 15 minutes to a half hour. And this is the tornado that we have on the ground. That would be right here moving into uh, just south of DuPont. We've got probably large hail involved in this as well, probably quarter to golf ball size hail. And there's that concentration of lightning with the hail core. South end is the tornado that's on the ground. There still is very a strong indication of strong rotation here down to Indiana 250. Uh, and then you've got seven that comes out of Madison. You're coming north out of Madison. And there's the potential you're close enough Madison to have some wind damage too. But this is the tornado on the ground. There's a new tornado warning it looks like that came out uh, for this. And anything in purple indicates a tornado, not a, not a regular tornado warning. This is tornado on the ground. Uh, so these are wind speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour possible that are moving into northwestern Jefferson County in Indiana. Take action. Be seeking shelter. The worst of this is now moving to the east northeast of Hardy Lake. It was nearly on top of Hardy Lake just a moment ago and right at the intersection of Western Jefferson, Northeastern Scott and Southern Jennings County that uh, where they all come together. It is now east of Crothersville. The severe weather threat over with around the Crothersville area. This is the spot of concern 
as this moves towards the DuPont, DuPont area, northwestern sections of Jefferson County in Indiana. This is about 15 miles northwest of Madison. You need to be seeking shelter in the lowest level of your home right now, away from doors and the windows, and getting uh, blankets or pillows and, and covering up as quickly as you can. Uh, so again, here is 250 as it comes into three. Hilltown Comiskey. Looks like that tornado is on the ground just to the east of Comiskey and Hilltown, Indiana, uh, riding along Indiana 250. Uh, so this is where we have the potential tornado. Let's go to debris tracker, see if we're seeing any indications as this is getting a little bit closer um, to the radar. It, and let's go ahead and back up our view just a little bit as well. So. Let's let's go back a few scans and see if we see any consistency here other than it looks like a, a lot of hail as well. Yeah, there, there could be some debris here uh, around the DuPont area and uh, again, just about 15 miles up northwest of Madison, Indiana. So and again, that radar is going up at a pretty high elevation. Um, that, that hail core, let's go ahead and put on the hail product uh, with that tornado on the ground, northwestern uh, Jefferson County. And then we're going to need to put a track on this. This will move out of our viewing area in the next uh, five or 10 minutes. So that's pretty impressive. That's getting up to one to two inch uh, diameter hail. That's we're talking golf ball size, maybe even uh, near baseball size hail right around the Comiskey and Hilltown area. The hail product takes a little time to come in. So it's likely that this hail product, uh, this hail area is now in the northwestern corner of Jefferson County. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll click on these pixels here and uh, it's just a good bet that that's going to be up to, to around an inch to two inch uh, size hail. And unlike summertime, um, the hail is closer to the ground so it doesn't melt as quickly so the hail can stay very large. So let's go back to reflectivity. Uh, that is our regular radar view and uh, we're going to see the hail core has moved to the northeast. So uh, what I mean by that hail was here now it's right here. So we, we get the reflectivity product a lot quicker than the hail product. So that's where the hail core is. That's damaging hail east of Lovett and right between DuPont and Lovett. So this is Jennings County and then this is Jefferson County. Um, so here is uh, seven out of Madison and 250. Um, looks like the worst of this storm is just to the north of 250. Really riding right along Indiana 250 and northern Jefferson County. And this right here is the end of the WHS 11 viewing area and it'll be moving into the Cincinnati market. And uh, if you have friends or family that live outside of our viewing area, uh, you'll want to definitely give them a heads up if they live near Versailles. Here's the latest track as it moves towards Bellevue at about 540. Uh, right now it is 522 uh, into the Canaan Elementary School area at about 547, Barbersville 550. And then we're starting to see some uh, towns outside the viewing area that include Avonburg, Bear Branch, Cotton, and Aberdeen after 6 o'clock. Uh, so uh, it looks like this will stay north of Madison. Wasn't long ago that we had that uh, tornado right around Madison. This one is staying just to the northwest of Madison at the moment, uh, but a confirmed tornado on the ground that passed through Crothersville. So this was right at Crothersville, and now it is right here uh, near DuPont. So it looks like the tornado has moved in an east-northeast direction, which is the exact shape of that tornado warning polygon. So there is that loop of the tornado that's been on the ground. That hail core is really impressive, so we still have some organization here. If we want to go back to velocity and put a track on that, we can. So there's the hail that is still present. There is the strong rotation. Anything in yellow or orange indicates winds in excess of about 80, 90 miles per hour. So there it is, moving off to the northeast, again towards the Bellevue area at 540, Barbersville 550, and Avonburg at about 602, and then that's out of our viewing area. So that's what we have northwest of you guys in Madison. Let's go back to Louisville, where we have a damaging wind threat that is about to move over the Ohio River. Uh, so we'll, we'll again go back to reflectivity. Let's, let's also just go to the overall viewing area so, because we've got a lot going on. Uh, a severe thunderstorm warning has also been issued for near Brandenburg and northern Breckenridge County. Don't want to leave you guys out. Damaging wind threat there. Uh, watching some storms that are getting stronger out to the west of Litchfield. Back down to Louisville, a concentration of lightning strikes here in Clark County. I mean, we are talking hundreds of lightning strikes, flashes one after another. 
as we look live here from Clarksville and Jeffersonville at that severe thunderstorm uh, that is going to be rolling right through the metro area. We're going to see those cameras uh, really shaking over the next half hour as uh, this storm is going to be moving right over Interstate 65. So that looks like the leading edge of the damaging winds and the torrential rainfall and frequent lightning strikes. Um, and if you just kind of watch this closely, you can actually see how fast that rain is moving and we're starting to see those flashes of lightning. So this is looking uh, right there uh, by downtown Clarksville by the river up to the northwest. Um, so looking up to the northwest towards the knobs towards Borden, Indiana and towards northern New Albany. And, and again, you can see how rapidly that leading edge is moving. So that's uh, that is damaging wind right there. Uh, so let's go back to the radar and look at uh, where this is hitting. Uh, so we know where that's at, moving right almost over I-65 with our live radar. So we're looking from here up to the northwest, and that is the, that leading edge that's about to cross over I-65 into Jeffersonville, already has in Sellersburg and up towards Charlestown and south of uh, Henryville. That is tr tough travel along Interstate 65. Moving through New Albany right now, some damaging wind gusts possible. And, and again, this is non-stop cloud to ground lightning strikes likely producing some power outages not with just with the wind but the lightning strikes and then we have a severe thunderstorm warning that includes downtown Louisville Portland and near Shively for this protruding area which is a bow echo uh, which could be putting down some winds in excess of 60 miles per hour I'm not going to be surprised if we see some power outages soon in Louisville Metro yep uh, let's go ahead and check out one of our metro cams too because the sky does look very threatening and actually I might have new to scratch that warning. because we do have a new tornado warning that's just come out. Uh, let's see where that one is. So that's an extension outside of our viewing area of the tornado on the ground in northern Jefferson County. So we are still keeping a close eye on that as that is north of Madison. That I know, it's uncomfortably close to Madison, um, but if you are kind of in the suburbs of Madison, just up up Highway 7 or Indiana 7, um, that is impacting northern Jefferson County in Indiana. Potential of still some damage on the ground. So this is a, a new tornado warning for northern Jefferson County. It is still indicated, if you notice here, guys, that that is a confirmed tornado on the ground, as it has that purple edge. Um, so. We need to be watching this super closely. So there is the tornado warning. Um, I, th I believe they're just highlighting the confirmed tornado on the ground right there. They've got kind of the box inside of the tornado box. Uh, let's go ahead and go look at the velocity again. So we're right near DuPont is where we have the tornado on the ground. So this is where 7 and 250 come together. Middle Fork, if you're around the Middle Fork, Midway, Bellevue, Bryantsburg, DuPont areas, northern Jefferson County, Indiana, north of Madison need to take action right now. Be seeking shelter. This is a dangerous situation. We've got confirmed tornado on the ground in this area along and east of Indiana 7, right north of Madison, Indiana. So heading towards the Bellevue area, Canaan Elementary School and the Barbersville area moving east at about 50 miles per hour. Um, and again, the yellow colors that you see there near Middle Fork indicate winds in excess of about 80 or 90 miles per hour. Confirmed tornado on the ground. We have folks on the ground that have seen this tornado on the ground in Jefferson County, Indiana. Of course, we're, we've got crews making calls up that direction to see what potential damage we have. Uh, we've also had some damage reports uh, just out to the west of Louisville and Crawford County of potential roof damage. Uh, so the heart of the severe weather threat late this afternoon, now heading into the early evening hours, has been in Indiana, uh, but it's going to be moving through Louisville very soon. So that's the latest track there north of Madison. Let's take a break for just a second from Jefferson County. I know there's a confirmed tornado on the ground, but we need to get to Louisville really quickly. As you mentioned, Alden, we can take a look at some of those cameras. This is an amazing amount of lightning strikes that are coming out of this supercell moving through Sellersburg, possibly some penny nickel size hail out of this. It can't be ruled out that there could be a spin up tornado right about there. Damaging straight line winds near New Albany, certainly possible and about to cross over the Ohio River over the Sherman Minton Bridge over the Sherman Minton Bridge right now. If we do want to point the Galt House camera right that direction, if it already is pointed that direction, we should be getting a great view of that and, and certainly pop that up and notice that we'll go back to the radar in just a second. So there's the leading edge of that storm right over the falls of the Ohio and the locks and dam about ready to hit downtown. So it's uh, about ready to move over the Ellen bridge 
and moving right down the Ohio River over New Albany. And if we stay on this for just a moment longer, we can't for too long because we've got to get back to some tracking, uh, we'll likely see that bridge covered up in complete rainfall and the visibility dropping off to zero. Um, there is the potential, uh, again, damaging winds coming into Portland right now. This is right down 64 and about to come up to the uh, 9th Street exit. Um, and into downtown Louisville uh, with straight line winds in excess of 60, 70 miles per hour. Well, we also have several viewer photos of uh, hail if we want to get those ready too back in the booth. Uh, these are these have been uh, viewer photos that have come in to us with some of the large hail that we've seen around the area. So we're going to get those ready and uh, show those uh, once they're available. Yeah, I do. I, this is this is why we get those ready. This is a notch that is new here um, near Northern Jeffersonville, Sellersburg, up I-65. That, that's concerning. Uh, this is right at 265 and 65, where we have some rotation. Uh, there might be a lowering in the cloud layer here. There could be a quick spin-up tornado uh, right up Highway 31. 65 265. Here's Clarksville, Northern Jeffersonville. Then you're going to be running into the River Ridge exit right there. There are a ton of shops, movie theaters, restaurants right here. Um, these folks all need to be seeking shelter at this time. Um, there is a severe thunderstorm warning out, but there is the potential of a spin-up tornado right here near Cementville as that cruises down 265 towards uh, si Highway 62. And then you're going to run into the East End Bridge here very, very soon with some of this rotation. Let's get back to the regular reflectivity mode. So, so, so yeah, we still see this little bit of a notch right here. Um, this is in Clark County, Indiana. Um, and likely going to be moving right over the Ohio River here very shortly near Utica River Ridge. Again, this is 265. Here's the East End Bridge, Lewis and Clark Bridge. Uh, this is just to the north of Clarksville. Uh, possibility some hail. There's continuous cloud of ground lightning strikes. We've got our storm team uh, weather beast looking uh, that direction. And it looks like, um, where are we at there? Downtown 64. Um, and so we've got our crews out live. We've got. Uh, Busy, busy radar here with several heading towards downtown uh, there with our storm team uh, weather beast um, and cruising around. We've got a reporter Taylor Woods out there that will be reporting on any potential damage. OK, back to the confirmed tornado on the ground. This is north of Madison. This is still a confirmed tornado on the ground with that area right there. This is now east of DuPont to the northeast of Middle Fork. It is now east of Indiana 7, which is just north of Madison, Indiana, heading towards the Bellevue area. So now it's heading over uh, Highway 421 in Indiana, northern Madison County. Uh, so the worst of it is now east of you, uh, east of you in DuPont in Walnut Ridge, heading to the Bellevue area. Let's go to our velocity mode. And it looks like a, a good bet. We still have the yellow colors. This is bad news. This is uh, if we click on these pixels, we're probably talking 80, 90 mile per hour winds. Uh, yep, 87 mile per hour wind, 86. Uh, that's cruising right over Bellevue and Highway 421. I'm thinking this is only about seven miles north of Madison, maybe 10 miles north of Madison, Indiana, uh, where we have a confirmed tornado on the ground moving over the Bellevue area in 421. This is going to be heading over the northeastern sections of Jefferson County, Indiana, uh, which is going to be pushing it out of our viewing area, I'd say, in the next 10 minutes. Uh, but for now, here's the latest track as it heads towards Bryantsburg in just a couple minutes. You want to be seeking shelter, taking action. This is a tornado on the ground in northern Jefferson County. It's doing some damage. Uh, it's heading towards Barbersville, Avonburg, Bennington, Caesar Creek, switch into Switzerland County, into, near the VV area, and, and into uh, Cotton. So again, those are going to be areas into the Cincinnati market and out of our WHS 11 viewing area very soon. But do want to give you a heads up there, northeastern Jefferson County, Indiana, tornado on the ground, likely doing damage right on Highway 421. Let's see if we got any neighborhood roads uh, east of 421. Um, sometimes those scans can be just a little bit behind, so we want to look right here out ahead of uh, this storm. I'll get out of the way. Uh, so we're right near Bryantsburg and Bellevue along 421. Uh, might need that street spotter out there. If you guys got a closer look, go ahead and read off any of those roads. Uh, that, uh, that's uh, east at 1033 north, I'm assuming. 
Uh, we're right East there. East Perimeter Road. Yeah, East Perimeter Road there in Bryansburg. So if you're in Bryansburg, just go ahead and be in your safe spot right now. That's the place that you want to be. Ben, another threat that we're also looking at here is hail. And I understand now that we have those hail photos ready. So when our director or control room is ready for that, we can take a quick look at those to get an idea of some of the hail that we've seen around the area. And this is going to be damaging hail, too, that we're also potentially looking at here as we have had hail up to about the size of a quarters. Here it's being pulled up right now for us to take a look at as we continue to track this tornado warning and Bellevue. You're probably experiencing some of those tremendously high wind speeds right now uh, up to that 80 to 90 mile per hour range. That's what we've been tracking all afternoon long as there have been reports of this confirmed tornado on the ground there near that location. We're ready now to show you some of those uh, hail photos across that we have had viewers submit to us. Uh, this is showing you that they're about an inch in diameter, one to one and a half inches in diameter, so not the largest, which is good, but still enough that you could possibly get a little bit of hail damage out of those. Uh, you can text us these photos. Just be safe if you do so. Please don't go outside right now as it's not the smartest thing to do, but 502 582-7290. That's the number where you can text us those photos. So thank you to those that have come in. You can see kind of littering the ground there, looking like someone just took a bunch of ice cubes out of your freezer and just sort of threw them on the ground. That's kind of uh, what we're uh, looking at right there. And Ben, a moment ago, we also had a new severe thunderstorm warning put out. This yeah parts of Metro Louisville, and we still got to watch this area yeah, here near River here. Ridge. Yeah, yeah we, and the Crothersville, by the way, is about 40, 45 miles to the north of Louisville. That's where we started to see that tornado on the tornado ground. Warning. A new, new tornado, tornado warning. warning. So we were watching this at, over River Ridge at the junction of 265 and 65. It's now to the east of River Ridge, just north of Utica. This is going to be near Prospect, moving over the Ohio River over the next five minutes. This is that notch I've been watching here over the last five minutes or so. I, I told you all afternoon we're going to have to watch these notches. Get used to this shape right here. This is a bow echo. This can be damaging straight line winds right over the top of Prospect right of the northeast sections of Louisville by the Snyder and 71 Crestwood heads up other areas in Oldham County are going to be needing to watch out for the potential tornado and damaging straight line winds and large hail. Got all the threats here, not including the heavy rain that's coming down, torrential rainfall, blinding rain, and frequent cloud to ground lightning strikes, and the potential for some flash flooding. So heading into River Bluff now, Park Lake 545, Buckner 548, Centerville at 550, LaGrange around 550 to 555, and in the Smithville area at 6, Newcastle into Henry County uh, just after 6 o'clock. So this is moving east about 50 miles per hour. We have rotation, we have the rain wrapping around. Uh, it doesn't do it for for no reason. There's a reason why it looks like this. This is pushing out. This is wrapping in. So this is where we have the potential of a tornado right near the River Bluff area. Here's Highway 42 as it heads into Oldham County. So there's the Jefferson and Oldham County line right near Prospect is where we have a potential tornado on the ground right over the top of the Ohio River. Let's go to Velocity right over the Ohio River. Um, so this is moving quickly out of Clark County uh, east of Charlestown. Yeah, it's likely a tornado on the ground, as, as you mentioned, Alden. We've got uh, potentially debris being picked up, pushed out in front of the tornado on the ground. Near Prospect, here's Prospect, here's River Bluff. This is right over the top of the Ohio River. Be in your place of shelter now. Take action, Prospect, River Bluff, on that Jefferson County, Kentucky, in Oldham County line up Highway 42 near Goshen. Uh, wind speeds in excess of 80, 90, 100 miles per hour. Uh, let's, debris tracker is showing the potential of some debris picked, being picked up. It happened just like that. These are the spin up tornadoes that we need to watch very closely here. So this is the potential of some debris right near Utica. Here is a look at 265. The East End Bridge is right here. Here's the connection to 71 and 265. The Snyder and 71 are right there. Of course, suburbs galore right here, right where we have a potential tornado on the ground. We're likely to get reports. Max 3, this is the live look at the Clark Memorial Bridge on Max 3, where like this tornado is likely going to be passing over soon right now. So this is uh, Max 3, our Clark like Memorial Bridge. 
They're working on getting us that image. You can see just how oh, wow. torrential that rainfall is. Traffic is at an absolute standstill. So, Ben, if we have a tornado on the ground like we believe we do, this is currently located yeah. at the Clark Memorial Bridge in the East End near Utica River Bluff Prospect. And uh, we need to do a double box, please. Have radar on one screen, have that radar image in the other because those velocity, those velocities, Ben, have really ramped yeah, up. We've got over 100 mile per hour winds over the East End Bridge right now. That is a tornado on the ground. There is no doubt about that. That, that these are winds in excess of 100 miles per hour. And the, these deeper orange colors, uh, these up here, we're looking at over 100 mile per hour winds over the Clark Memorial Bridge, heading towards Prospect 100 and 130 mile per hour winds. This is a strong tornado on the ground moving north of Utica into Prospect, Kentucky. It is moving east over the Ohio River right now over Highway 42 near Goshen, River Buff, Prospect. All be in your place of shelter, lowest level of your home. There's the debris ball. There's the debris tracker right over Prospect, River Bluff. Be taking shelter right now, lowest level of your home. This is a tornado on the ground. Wind speeds in excess of 100 to 130 miles per hour. Those are damaging winds. Just crossed over the East End Bridge moving from eastern Clark County. This is far northeastern Jefferson County, right near the Oldham County line. Again, these are all areas up Highway 42, right over the top of Prospect. This is the debris tracker. This is debris being picked up into the tornado. This is, again, a concentration of heavy rain, lightning, thunder, all the severe weather threats that we've been talking about, including a tornado on the ground. Uh, let's go back to our velocity mode. And stay in your place of shelter right now. Prospect, be getting down there. Take action now if you're in Prospect. Uh, this is going to be moving to the east near Crestwood. Other parts of southern Oldham County, be seeking shelter. 1694 right here. So this is up I-71. Here's the Snyder and 71. This could be crossing 71 in Oldham County in just a couple minutes. So here is Highway 42 right between River Bluff, Bluff and Prospect is where there's a tornado on the ground. Yeah. Two minutes ago, large and extremely, uh, this is a particularly dangerous situation that the Weather Service is using. This is their language, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado located over Prospect, moving east at 45 miles per hour. If you are in Prospect, you need to be in your safe spot now. You needed to have been in your safe spot several minutes ago. This passed over the Lewis and Clark Bridge. I misspoke earlier. The Lewis and Clark Bridge, River Bluff, you need to be in your safe spot as well. And uh, as this continues to move off to the east, and Ben, this is moving at a slower speed as uh, to only it 45 has miles per hour. It is, it is, we need another scan to see this move because this needs to start picking up speed. Sometimes when they get strong like this, uh, they can uh, have a mind of their own and slow down in respect to the overall atmospheric winds that are really fast. So uh, this is going to be uh, impacting areas here. This is, again, 1694. I know, Doug, if you want to chime in, you know a lot of locations up here uh, between uh, Jefferson County and Oldham County, right? along that line. It's going to be heading towards Crestwood into the Park Lake area. Uh, Norton Commons not too far from this area as well. You're right. So uh, please ben, be seeking shelter, Doug. Huge population base, as everybody knows. It's one of the fastest growing areas of eastern Jefferson County. As you say, that will take it over I-71 and then uh, toward Crestwood, <clears throat> right down toward the Gene Snyder Freeway. And then as you get closer to Crestwood, just south of there, you're going to have the big Ford truck plant at Chamberlain Lane and the Anchorage Pee Wee Valley exit. Uh, of course, a lot of people on the Gene Snyder for the evening rush hour. I'm just stunned. Uh, if we were actually seeing the tornado move across the East End Bridge, which we're still seeing on the screen, and those <coughs> people were able to still drive across it, I'm, I'm still amazed that you see cars going across it now, uh, especially with 130 mile an hour winds. But uh, uh, this is a dire situation, of, as you said, you've got uh, uh, the, uh, you would have the Norton Commons uh, neighborhood there, then yep. you would have uh, Springhurst, a lot of development heading in that area where this direction uh, the tornado is heading at the moment. And let's get our ben, camera that's at Hurstburn Parkway and Interstate 64 uh, moved this direction, looking up to the northeast. But still a confirmed tornado on the ground. There's the debris ball that is uh, debris lifted into the tornado that has now, now just moved off to the east of Prospect. So it looks like that tornado was on the ground right be between River Bluff and Prospect is now moving east just north of Interstate 71. <laughs> so again, very near Norton Commons in 1694. Uh, let's go back to, away from the debris tracker to velocity mode. And yeah. We're also getting 
reports from that same system, 11 reports of multiple vehicles overturned near the Clark Floyd County area before it crossed over to Prospect. So it is producing yeah. damage. It is confirmed. It looked like that could have become a tornado right at around uh, 265 and I-65 in Clark County, moved right down River Ridge around the 62 exit over the East End Bridge through Prospect, is now east of Prospect, heading toward Crestwood between Dimpley Town and Crestwood at the Crestwood exit. I believe the tornado is on the ground right about at the Crestwood exit, if not on the ground there yet, just out to the west. Take shelter Southern Oldham County. It's right on the Jefferson Oldham County line. Again, there's Prospect and uh, it's not going to be too far from the Ford truck plant as well. Just north of there, there's Worthington Hills, which is obviously very near the truck plant. Here's Crestwood Park Lake. This is a tornado on the ground. It's doing damage. Take shelter here in Southern Oldham County. It is in Park Lake Buckner uh, here in just a couple of minutes. Oldham County High School. Oldham County County High School is in the way of this tornado. Be seeking shelter if you're in a neighborhood around Oldham County High School. Centerfield into LaGrange. We hope it stays south of LaGrange, but this is moving over a heavily, heavily populated area. Tornado on the ground. Be seeking shelter. And this is a potentially strong tornado. We've seen some of these pixels here with the velocity. We are picking up raindrops moving in excess of 130 miles per hour. That's putting it at EF2 strength. That is that can that can do strong damage to your home. Uh, so please be seeking shelter lowest level of your home away from the doors and the windows here. This is now just to the east of Prospect, just to the southeast of River Bluff. Uh, this here is 329. There's your Crestwood exit. So Kentucky 329 right there at 71. Uh, this is likely a tornado on the ground. South, far southeastern Oldham County near Crestwood, near uh, Oldham County High School. Um, please be seeking shelter at this time. Also, yeah. Go ahead, Alden. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Sarana, can you repeat that? She's pulling up damage from Jean Snyder. Uh, Old Salem River Ridge. Okay, we have, uh, we're pulling up one of our Trimark cameras that can show us damage. The moment we get that camera ready, Ben, we're going to show that to you right away. In the meantime, we still need to be taking this confirmed tornado. Uh, there it is right there in front of us now. This is uh, I-265 west of Old Salem River Bridge. This is in southern Indiana. You can see what could be a couple of emergency vehicles there, but uh, this has caused damage. We did have reports earlier from emergency managers of 11 reports of multiple vehicles overturned along the Clark Floyd County line area. So this has been a confirmed tornado. This has been considered a large and considerably dangerous tornado, and you need to still be in your safe spots right now as we take that live look out there from one of our Indiana traffic cameras. Let's go back to radar, please, and we'll still this uh, tornado warning. It's moving to the east at about 45 miles per hour. So uh, yeah. still somewhat quick, but slower, significantly slower than what we had earlier been. And another strong tornado that has crossed the Ohio River. Uh, last one up uh, towards, uh, towards Madison. Uh, this one has crossed from Clark County near Utica River Ridge between River Bluff and Prospect. It is now passed through Prospect. It is now over the Crestwood area. Winds in excess of 100 miles per hour possible near Park Lake right now into the Buckner area at about 605, 610. Very near the Oldham County High School right now and into Centerfield at about 610 to 615. Let's back up our view. Let's show you the, pros the perspective from downtown Louisville. So this is a strong tornado on the ground moving through southern Oldham County right along the Jefferson County line. The yellows and the pink colors are indicating winds in excess of 70, 80, 90, 100 mile per hour winds. Here is the tornado as it moved through the River Ridge area over the Ohio River uh, and over Utica and into Prospect and now heading towards Crestwood. This is the tornado on the ground right between Kentucky 329 and 71 near Norton Commons. Be seeking shelter, lowest level of your home. Stay in your basement if you're just to the east of Prospect be seeking shelter here in Crestwood and other portions of southern Oldham County. So this is going to be tracking between LaGrange and Crestwood over the next five to 10 minutes. The tornado itself has slowed down a bit. These storms were tracking east at 50. It looks like this is a little bit slower as it has some strong rotation right here. Here's the tornado. Here is straight line, possibly damaging winds. Here is the notch. Here is the likely tornado on the ground uh, right here crossing over Interstate 71. I sure hope travelers along 71 were able to stop 
perhaps at the LaGrange exit or here in northeastern uh, Jefferson County and in, in, in Metro Louisville uh, because the potential of this tornado on the ground right over the top of Crestwood. Take action, Crestwood. Lowest level of your home, away from the doors and the windows, pillows, blankets. Uh, if you have the time to do so, grab that and get away from the doors and the windows and be seeking shelter in your safe place. So this is right over the top of Crestwood, moving over Interstate 71. Strong, damaging tornado on the ground just to the south of uh, Dimpley Town near Glenarm. There's Buckner. Here's Centerfield. This is just north of the Snyder as well. Uh, so this looks like it'll stay just north of the Ford uh, Kentucky truck plant, and this is right over the top of Interstate 71. Uh, this is a look at some of the, uh, the wind speeds. These bright colors are not what we want, uh, as this is showing still the potential of an organized tornado on the ground. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Gate to gate shear still over 120 miles per hour. So this is still uh, likely a tornado on the ground doing damage here uh, near the Crestwood area. Let's let's look at the broader view here uh, just so again we can get perspective. If you live in Metro Louisville, uh, there is this confirmed tornado on the ground just to the southwest of the Grange over Crestwood. Here's Anchorage. Here's downtown Louisville. Uh, this is uh, the the we had a confirmed tornado on the ground just north of Madison in uh, Indiana. Now this is our, our our certainly our focus. Very quickly, Alden, let's take a look at the entire viewing area uh, just to see if we have any more areas. Okay, so we had no other warnings at this time. So this is definitely the one focus over. Crestwood over Oldham County. We are getting reports of damage around the River Bluff area around 265 uh, near the Lee Hamilton Expressway and 62. Again, these are very populated areas, Alden. And we want to take a look at Max 3 really quick. This is I-71. 65 there in a southern in, uh, or rather here in Metro Louisville where you can see just how dark it is out there and this is around that same location where that tornado currently is and again that's been a reported and confirmed tornado that's now in Oldham County so you need to be in your safe spot right there particularly if you're near LaGrange you're probably getting some of that torrential rain that's falling right now but this is again a live look at I-71 at I-265 traffic just crawling along there and you can't even really see the traffic moving away from us at the moment, but this has some very strong wind speeds. With Is there it. a Trimark camera just north of there too, near the Crestwood exit? I believe by 71. I believe there might be. We'll uh, double check here in just a moment. But in the meantime, let's go back to our velocity product because that uh, rotation is not looking as defined as how it did before, but we're still seeing some of those bright pixels that are indicating those wind speeds potentially up to about 100 to 100, uh, as we saw earlier, 130 miles per hour. So it could be transitioning, perhaps, been and more of a straight line wind threat. Could but be. this is still a significant situation, and you need to be treating this as if it's still a tornado on the ground. Uh, so yeah, there's your Crestwood exit. Here's uh, 393 uh, and 146. Here's Buckner. It looks like it's just to the east northeast of Crestwood. Uh, so it looks like that tornado on the ground now near the center field area, uh, moving into eastern Oldham County. It looks like the the worst of it staying just south of LaGrange, south of Interstate 71. Uh, this is moving due east and heading down 22, Kentucky 22, heading towards the Smithville area. So that is going to start to put it uh, very soon out of Oldham County. And then if we back up our view just a little bit more, uh, this is going to put it into northwestern Shelby County, southwestern Henry County. So we've got a triple point again of counties uh, where we have Oldham, intersecting here with northern Shelby and southern Henry counties. And this is, uh, again, still suburb areas, highly populated areas just south of LaGrange in eastern Oldham County. Be seeking shelter. Tornado possibly still on the ground. If not, some straight line damaging winds in excess of 80, 90, possibly 100 miles per hour. So this is still a dangerous situation in eastern Oldham County. Uh, we are going to see damage reports flooding in, not only from likely the Prospect area, Crestwood, um, the East End Bridge, uh, River Bluff, over parts of Clark County in Indiana. It looks like this started near the intersection of 265 and I-65 in Clark County and then just exploded near the Ohio River in strength as we were picking up um, some wind speeds with our velocity product here in excess of 130 miles per hour. There's a potential uh, that we're up to EF2 
damage with this uh, tornado. We're starting to see this uh, move near the center field area just south of LaGrange. Um, so it looks like we've got overturned semis. Uh, this is at uh, River Ridge, um, so just west of Old Salem. Uh, at River Ridge 265 there. Um, so that is a, a, a very populated exit. Uh, a lot of restaurants, a lot of businesses uh, near 62 and 265 and uh, near, near the River Ridge area. Unfortunately, uh, hopefully they are okay. But we've got overturned semis there uh, with the live cameras um, on right near 265 and the eastern sections of Clark County as you move towards the East End Bridge. We saw that tornado going over the East End Bridge towards Prospect Crestwood. Uh, if we look at the velocity product, where are we at now? Where are we going? Uh, so this is the tornado on the ground south of LaGrange, down 53, just east of Centerfield. Let's go ahead and get a broader view so we can get a track on this. And we'll just keep it going to the east. And this is going to be heading towards Eminence, southern Henry County. It looks like this could stay just south of Newcastle. I, we might put that right there, right there off to the east uh, is likely where we're having that damage on the ground. So just south of LaGrange towards Eminence. Um, this is going to be crossing over 153, southeastern Oldham County. There we go. Uh, so be taking action right now. Please take this seriously. This is a dangerous tornado on the ground just south of LaGrange, eastern Oldham County, east of I-71, heading towards Eminence at 607. You, you've got about five or ten minutes in Eminence, Kentucky, southern Henry County. Seek shelter, lowest level of your home, away from the doors and the windows, heading toward Newcastle, hopefully just staying south of Newcastle there in Henry County, but very close, too close for comfort in Newcastle. Be seeking shelter now. At 610, into the Pleasureville area at 612, Bethlehem 615, Franklinton 617, Slabtown 620, Lockport at 622. So this is moving basically right along the Shelby and Henry County lines as it moves out of Henry County here fairly soon. Let's take a look at this uh, uh, picture by picture here over the last half hour, uh, not just a loop that keeps going, but let's let's kind of back this up and show you where this tornado has been on the ground. This is where we're going to find destruction, unfortunately. Uh, so this was right here. This is where it started. This is where it crossed over the East End Bridge right there. Almost made a little bit of a right turn right over Prospect. Uh, this is the confirmed tornado on the ground moving right towards Crestwood. There's, you know, there's a chance they lift off the ground briefly, but there's damaging winds all along this path right here. And here, here, here we are now, southeast of LaGrange. The velocity not as impressive right there. We hope this tornado will stop as quickly as possible uh, because it has been a destructive tornado, has toppled semis along 265 in eastern Clark County. There is a high likelihood of damage to property and homes. We hope everybody is staying safe. We hope everybody is heeding these warnings and we have a new tornado warning that includes Henry County and all the areas we just showed you in that track. Uh, so this is a look at uh, 71 near LaGrange with our tri the TriMark camera there. It looks like that tornado passed just shortly near that location along uh, 71. Um, so there's that potential of a tornado on the ground still near LaGrange, just off to the east of LaGrange. Uh, so here's uh, 146, 153. There's eminence in Newcastle. It looks like this threat is going to be moving into Henry County now, cruising right along the Shelby and Henry County line between Newcastle and Eminence. If you're in this location in southern Henry County, be seeking shelter now in the lowest level of your home, away from the doors and the windows. Be seeking shelter now. Take this seriously. Uh, let's go back to Debris Tracker really quickly. Those are still winds in excess of 80, 90, 100 miles per hour. And maybe we take this uh, slide by slide as well and see how long that debris ball, uh, which is the actual tornado, uh, was in place. Because we, we saw that intact for quite some time as it moved through uh, Prospect. It kind of hard to pick it out here now that we're not seeing the velocity right on top of it as well. Uh, yeah, okay, so there, there's the tornado in Prospect right there. So there's that the, the, the debris ball and then moving off to the east. Um, so 
Very dangerous situation. A tornado still possibly on the ground near LaGrange right here uh, between LaGrange, Newcastle, Eminence. Anywhere in this area, we want you to be seeking shelter between Kentucky 55 and 153 uh, heading towards Newcastle. Between Newcastle and Eminence, southern Henry County is where we have the biggest tornado threat. If not, some damaging straight line winds coming down as well. Uh, here is 322. This is uh, the northern edge of Shelby County. And that threat is starting to move soon out of Oldham County. Very soon we'll be able to give Oldham County the clear. The tornado is out of prospect now, by the way, out of the Norton Commons area. It is over 71, so that threat is now coming to an end very soon in Oldham County. It is moving to the east out of LaGrange uh, into the Newcastle in the Eminence area around Kentucky 55. Let's go in close to Eminence. Let's get some uh, roads on there and some locations. Let's get tighter into some of those neighborhood roads uh, and give an idea where we're at. Still, uh, again, just some, additional, uh, just some additional information on that. That tornado warning is for Henry County until 630. Just radar indicated rotation now, so they're no longer calling this a confirmed tornado. Radar indicated rotation moving to the east at 55 miles per hour, so it has picked up some uh, some speed there, but they are considering it a dangerous storm that will be near the Newcastle area around six o'clock. So it looks like that they're uh, targeting Newcastle as a more as the area to be more concerned with. I would say both and we're um, maybe seeing yeah. some retightening there of that circulation near Terraskin. Uh, yeah, uh, so anywhere in this general location right now near Pendleton, uh, Tarascon, and to the Newcastle area, uh, please be seeking shelter. Uh, so here is 55 421, all those routes into downtown Newcastle into the heart of Henry County right here. Be seeking shelter. Tornado warning until 630 p.m. Damaging wind gusts. Uh, almost any time we've seen these yellow and orange colors, we've had some sort of damage. So if you're around Smithfield, Smithfield to Pendleton, to Newcastle and Henry County, you're going to be in the, your place of shelter right now, including in that is uh, eminence. So again, there is that potential of a tornado right here. Maybe go storm relative might show us a little bit uh, more organization here in just a second. And we'll go back to that track as well, which is very important. Um, so, so the reds next to the greens is that rotation, that potential tornado on the ground between Pendleton and Smithfield heading toward right over Newcastle, Kentucky. Please be seeking shelter right just south of Campbellsville. Here is Interstate 71. Uh, that rotation, as you mentioned earlier, has slowed down. If, if this was just a regular thunderstorm, it was trucking a lot faster to the east and northeast, heading towards the Delville area. So uh, our main focus and what is still a dangerous, potentially dangerous situation here is in Henry County with the potential of a tornado on the ground. This was likely a much larger tornado as it was over the Crestwood Prospect and a River Bluff area in parts of Oldham in northern Jefferson County and into uh, Clark County in Indiana right near 265 and 62. Um, so this is still the uh, potentially dangerous situation. Tornado warning until 630. Uh, let's go back and uh, look at our reflectivity here and, and just broaden our scope a little bit. I like the signs of this. So this is looking more like a damaging straight line wind threat as we progress scan by scan. There are still some notches in here, but this is not as well defined as it was. We're not seeing that hail core like we did earlier. We're not seeing that rotation look as bad as it moves over Newcastle and into Eminence. There is still likely some damaging winds uh, along this leading edge. Let's back it out even uh, farther and do a little loop and show you uh, this cluster of strong thunderstorms that has produced a tornado uh, in Oldham County and likely Eastern Clark County uh, just near the Charlestown uh, area and parts of Jeffersonville as well. So it's kind of moving near northern Jeffersonville over the East End Bridge and has now made its way into Newcastle. So it went from basically right here uh, near LaGrange and now Newcastle moving off to the east and northeast. So still a tornado warning there in, in Henry County until 630. Um, so that cluster moved off to the northeast. We have general thunderstorm activity, heavy rainfall uh, about to move through downtown. It's very interesting. Is that tornado? We should be watching that little appendage there in your PRP as well. Yeah. 
it, it's very interesting. That was that rain was about to come right over downtown, and it's almost like that tornado sucked everything up to the northeast uh, with that strength of the rotation. And now we've got this heavy rain moving over PRP Valley Station, Shively. This is going to be blinding rainfall. Uh, there are some little notches that we're going to need to watch out for for maybe a brief spin up tornado. It doesn't look like as organized as what we saw up in uh, Oldham County, but uh, we ha could have some strong winds here around Shively. Let's go ahead and uh, look at the uh, velocity and, and those wind speeds. Ben. Yeah, Doug. Uh, I can uh, report, uh, I've been talking to the, uh, the South Oldham uh, fire chief here, uh, here as I've been on the set, uh, Chief Bill Blakely. Right now they are sending uh, dispatch, uh, fire crews to a building collapse, as he's telling me, uh, through text messages. I've asked him if I can pass this along. He said yes. Apparently two people are trapped in a building. Uh, in the North Oldham area, uh, he's still trying to track down the address, uh, and they are trying to get to that address right now to uh, help free those people. Don't have any other reports about the injuries or what kind of building we're talking about, but just some of the damage reports are some starting to come in, along with, uh, I've noticed um, the power outages, of course, are increasing throughout Metro Louisville at the moment. So that's some of the reports we're getting in. He said they were getting other scattered reports coming in right now, but as you know, um, and you looking at the live uh, max HD radar, there's still a lot of rain, and a lot of storm over that area. And these reports are going to increase uh, as time goes on here through the evening. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and keep in mind that it doesn't have to be a tornado to do that kind of damage. You can have straight line wind damage in excess of 100 miles per hour in, around, and near those strong tornadoes. Um, so you can have kind of both types of damage doing very bad things. And we can take a look at some of the camera views around the metro and, and just use various cameras if you're just going to pop some up for maybe five seconds or so and just get a, a visual of some of the heavy rain that we have around the area and some of the gusty winds. If you guys see anything on Trimark that stands out, go ahead and uh, interrupt as well. Um, so let's go ahead and pop up some of the Metro cams and take a look outside and, and Alden, if you're there on control, you can certainly pop that up on Max HD Radar 2. Uh, under the banner, uh, but we have heavy rain moving over Shively Valley Station um, and into downtown. Uh, here's a, a look. This is looking up to the northeast where that tornado just passed through those areas, uh, looking up towards uh, Prospect. Uh, this is though at the intersection of Interstate 64 and Hurstbourne Parkway. Uh, so some really ominous clouds in the wake of that tornado that was on the ground up in Oldham County and Eastern Clark County near uh, Charlestown and Jeffersonville in Indiana. Uh, so scanning those skies, uh, looking up to the uh, east and northeast where there is still a very strong thunderstorm. And that's uh, looking just past Southeast Christian Church there at the Blankenbaker exit. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, once you're done looking at uh, downtown, uh, take another look at Newcastle. It looks like the debris is starting to pick up again. Oh, All right. yeah, and it looks like we do have confirmation again of another tornado. Yeah, notice this. So. There's the radar notch, confirmed tornado uh, moving east at 35 miles per hour. Right so this over is top moving of Newcastle. slower now. Let's put on our debris tracker here really quick. Yeah, yeah there it's it right is. there. It's 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 right over Newcastle. Uh, so this debris tracker can be just a little bit behind tornado on the ground in Newcastle. Be seeking shelter right now. Um, this is likely strengthening once again. Um, so these any routes into Newcastle uh, need to stop. You need to be seeking shelter in Newcastle. If you, if you have any travel into Newcastle, again, all these routes, 55, 421, 157, um, this is a dangerous situation. This is a tornado on the ground uh, right over Newcastle, Kentucky in central Henry County. So that is the tornado that just went over near Crestwood, near Prospect. Oldham County near LaGrange and uh, River Bluff and those areas in eastern uh, Clark County in Indiana. Take action right now, Newcastle. You need to be seeking shelter lowest level of your home into the Franklinton area at 618, Slabtown at 620 to 630, Lockport at 626, and the DeGratz area at about 630. So that's moving through more of Henry County. Uh, let's back up our view just a little bit. So this is now north of the Shelby County line. Um, so it looks like this is staying north of Eminence. And then that's going to be moving into the Owenton area, at Owen County, which is moving out of uh, the WHS 11 viewing area. But right now, this is our biggest concern. This is a high likelihood of a confirmed tornado on the ground near Newcastle. Um, let's go to Velocity. Uh, this might be a little bit newer here. That is the tornado right there. That last scan just moved to on top of Newcastle. And 
Uh, so we've got strong rotation right there. Yeah, it looks like that intersection where that tornado is right now is Pendleton Newcastle Road and West Indiana 234 uh, landmark Green Hills Memory Gardens and that's moving off to the east and it looks like it's going to hit Walnut Ridge family RV sales as well as uh, the wall Walnut Ridge campground. So a little concerned that it's heading toward an RV park right now. Yeah, this is a heavy, heavily populated area and, and right there in the county seat of Henry County, right over the top of Newcastle is where we are exper experiencing some damaging wind gusts in excess of 60, 70 miles per hour. Uh, this is likely a tornado on the ground uh, right on top of or very near downtown Newcastle, Kentucky. Um, this is uh, one of those long track tornadoes that we we're fearful that could develop in uh, the, the ingredients of severe weather that we have out there for um, this uh, now early evening as we are now at 6.08 p.m. as we've been tracking the severe weather threat um, all afternoon now into the evening time. So tornado on the ground, Newcastle, Kentucky. This is moving to the east. Do they have a speed on the actual tornado? Only about 35 miles per hour. It's moving at about 35 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and, and back up this view as uh, if you're near the tornado, you also have the threat of damaging straight line winds around Bethlehem and Slab Town. Here's Lockport. Here's Gratz. Uh, so this is moving right over the top of Newcastle. We're going to make some calls here and check on you folks here in Newcastle very soon. This is east of Pendleton, Kentucky. Um, this is north of Eminence. There's the potential damaging straight line winds around Bethlehem. Again, it doesn't have to be a tornado to do some significant damage and be a very serious and dangerous situation. So a new track here as it moves to Franklinton around 615 to 620 Slab Town just after 620 into the Gratz area at about 630 Pleasant Home around 630 in Monterey at 635. Uh, that's going to move it out of the viewing area at about that time. And uh, so I believe is that the Kentucky River right there? I believe that's what that is. That is the border of Henry County. Yes. Um, so that's uh, going to be moving over the, the Kentucky River. Uh, there is a downtown Newcastle. Uh, if you want to hit some of those pixels near Bethlehem as well, um, that is along uh, Kentucky 573 and 22 coming together. And of course, this is still a dangerous situation right over top of Newcastle. Uh, there's uh, 55 uh, Delville, 101 mile per hour winds. And this radar is looking maybe about 1,000, 2,000 feet up above the ground. So not that high below the cloud layer um, of possibly debris flying in the air and it's picking up on over 100 mile per hour winds uh, that could be at the surface causing some significant damage in Henry County. If you want to look at the last couple scans and see the progress of that debris signature. So that is the tornado on the ground moving down 146 to Newcastle. Um, there's no doubt about that. That is a tornado and then maybe weakening a little bit right over the top of Newcastle. Let's go a couple more scans back and then we'll, we'll stop here where we're at right now. Um, so uh, damaging storm, uh, and more, more than likely a tornado on the ground. So there, here's Pendleton. That tornado's on the ground right there. And then moving right along 146, again, right into Newcastle. Um, so there is a significant swath of damage likely from that tornado, the other tornado that moved through Oldham County and eastern Clark County in Indiana. Doug. Updates on damage. It's it's becoming clear now, and I'm talking to Jefferson County Fire Authorities and those in Oldham County that apparently we have extensive damage in neighborhoods around Prospect, the Prospect area. Uh, the the rescue, from what I'm being told, is happening on a court called Sherlock that is in the Prospect area in northeast Jefferson County. Uh, they look. I looked it up. Uh, Google Maps shows that is a total neighborhood of large homes. So the building collapse they're talking about would be a home on Charlotte Court. That is being confirmed, of course, as we had, as I had that report earlier from the South Oldham Fire Chief on the way to the scene there. Uh, Jefferson County Fire Authorities are saying right now their focus is mainly in the Prospect area where they do believe more than one neighborhood has, have, has been hit 
and hit hard. And of course, that would be the neighborhoods that are uh, tucked in right above the uh, Gene Snyder Freeway, right across the Ohio River there in uh, Prospect as you're trying to uh, head into different parts of Oldham County, but staying in parts of Jefferson County as well. So those are the early reports we're coming in. I'm uh, talking to them not only on the phone, but uh, text messages back and forth, and these reports are now starting to come in more as uh, the storms have moved through. So you, you all uh, clearly first showed us that tornado when it was uh, touching down there in uh, Clark County and then crossing the East End Bridge. And so that, uh, Ben, as I have my notes, was about 535, 537. So now here we are at 13 minutes past 6 o'clock, and we're now starting to get some of the first damage reports, serious reports, and the authorities are just now really getting into these neighborhoods as we speak. It looks like we've got some video of some more damage here, Doug, at uh, International Drive and 265. Um, so yeah, before the warning was issued, we started to see that rotation right at 265 and I-65, uh, right there in Jeffersonville and near Charlestown, and then moving towards 62, uh, down 265, uh, near River Ridge, River Bluff, over, uh, inter, uh, over the Ohio River, over the East End Bridge, and into Prospect. Um, then, then it started, then kind of reorganized, has moved into Henry County and around Newcastle. We still have a potential tornado on the ground uh, just east of Newcastle. We have still over 100 mile per hour winds between Newcastle and Gratz. This is still a very dangerous situation. If you're in East Central Henry County, you need to be seeking shelter right now. So let's get down right around in here and get some, see what kind of roads we have uh, to give a little bit um, better um, indication of where this danger is right now in the slab town area. Uh, so here is this very, very strong rotation in Franklinton. Please be seeking shelter. Here's Kentucky 22, slab town, and it's going to be moving towards 389 towards the Lockport area. Again, we're in east central Henry County with a potential dangerous tornado on the ground, which has had a history uh, producing significant damage. We hope everybody is safe from this, did seek shelter as it moved through Prospect and those other areas that we talked about on the northeast side of uh, Louisville and Oldham County and also in Clark County. So our thoughts and prayers are with you guys as uh, this has been uh, a very scary situation with uh, these tornadoes on the ground, uh, possibly one or two tornadoes. Uh, the National Weather Service will certainly be out tonight doing a survey of uh, the damage from this and then they'll be out tomorrow as well. Thoughts also with the folks in northern Jefferson County in Indiana. We know there's a confirmed tornado on the ground near Crothersville. We'll be checking on you guys as well as that moved from right there in northern Scott County into Jefferson County. So that was also a confirmed tornado on the ground, uh, possibly EF1, EF2 with that. Uh, the high, high likelihood that this is an EF2 maybe EF3 uh, tornado that's moved through Oldham County and now into Henry County. Dan, so I have, yeah. a, I, have some, uh, I have some damage reports here. This is coming from the emergency manager in Clark County saying multiple structures damaged along the path from State Road 62 at the roundabout east to approximately Lakeside Quarry Drive. They're working on a rapids needs assessment and a uh, determining the scope of the incident. There were also reports of numerous trees down in the Utica area. Jefferson Police Department, Jeffersonville Police Department is extremely active at the moment. So multiple structures damaged along a path from State Road 62 at the roundabout to approximately 8039 Lakeside Quarry Drive. Yeah, and if, you're, if you live in Clark County, you know all about that roundabout. That is a busy intersection, lots of restaurants, lots of businesses, uh, lots of new neighborhoods, and a growing area of Clark County. Um, a lot of industrial parks near there as well, so that is a, a place impacted. That's really where the tornado really started to grow stronger and stronger before it moved over the East End Bridge where we saw it on the TriMark cameras live and then into Prospect and then now potentially still existing here in Henry County. So please still be seeking shelter East Central Henry County. Looks like that threat is east of you now, Newcastle. Um, so if there's some good news here, yeah, there's probably still some blustery, gusty winds in Newcastle, but that threat's now moving east. The threat moving east of Eminence, it's southeast of Campbellsburg, it is east of I-71, it's out of Oldham County. 
Uh, but we still have the threat of damaging winds here in East Central um, uh, Henry County. And that's gonna, it, this is Owen County, just out of the east. Is that correct as it moves into Owenton? Yes. Okay, so we got Owen County in the Owenton area and, and through Gratz. So this is going to be moving out of the viewing area here pretty soon. But significant winds are still coming down here around Gratz. Uh, and near Monterey, and this is off to the north of Shelby County. We have other thunderstorms still growing off to the south. There's like a pretty good hail core here, Alden. And yeah, this is probably quarter size hail in St. Matthews and Northfield. That can do damage to cars. It can do damage to roofs. Uh, so North Hubbard's Lane, Cherrywood Village. We've got uh, potentially some uh, large hail uh, near Blanken Laker Lane, Rolling Fields. And then here is a look at the Waterson. So right within the Waterson here, here's Shelbyville Road up to Brownsboro Road 42. Uh, obviously heavily populated area. Stay inside if you're near that uh, hail core. That hail core has just now moved to the east uh, with our live scan. Uh, now moving into the Green Lawn Road area, Ormsby Lane. Um, and so uh, if you do get reports of hail, if you see pictures of it, or if you can get pictures of it when it's safe to do so, obviously that's most important to stay safe. If you can send those photos to your photos at whas11.com, if you can put up that contact number as well, uh, Alden, um, your photos at whas11.com. You can also use our whas11 app. Uh, there's a near me section, 502-582-7290 is where you can text videos or photos and it comes right to our newsroom and we can get those photos and videos up. We can also pass along this information to the National Weather Service uh, to help out with their storm surveys. That is 502-582-7290 where you can text that information or your photos at whas11.com. Okay. Max 3, we have a pretty good view right now from Hurstbourne uh, that's showing a little bit of hail right there, and that lines up almost perfectly with what we're seeing on the radar. Yeah, so we definitely have a hail core here, which means it's a strong thunderstorm, uh, possibly severe anywhere near a hail core like this near Linden, Barber Mead, Hurstbourne. Uh, there, there's a, a live view very close to that location, very strong winds. There's the American flag blowing with that heavy rainfall. Uh, there could be also some pockets of some isolated damaging winds, uh, maybe a few power outages as well. Um, this, the, again, this can do damage uh, to your car. Um, and this, this hail core is moving moving to the east, um, just pat east of the Watterson, between the Watterson and 71. So if we can go back to reflectivity, every scan is very important when we see these uh, hail cores and these potential severe thunderstorms. Um, so let's go ahead and move that back to max one, and then uh, we'll take a look at where we have this on our, our regular radar view, but that's a live view right now. Hurstbourne Parkway, Interstate 64, our Midway University cam. So uh, here we are back to regular radar. We have a potential tornado on the ground, tornado warning for Owen County uh, out of Henry County. So it looks like that threat's going to be moving out of our WHAS 11 viewing area into the Lexington and Cincinnati markets uh, with that tornado on the ground. Um, and then let's let's zoom in here. Here's that hail core. Uh, so it, just to the northeast of Northfield, right at uh, the Snyder and 71 is where we have Brownsboro Road, uh, potential of some damaging hail. So this hail core is moving to the east and northeast right over the Springhurst uh, area, Goose Creek Road, Creekside. Um, I believe, you know, the. I don't want to bring up April 3rd, 1974, but these are areas that had damage back then as well. Uh, we got uh, a hail core right over the top of those areas. That hail core could move close to Worthington Hills, Orchard Grass Hills, uh, and right there at 71 uh, and uh, the Snyders where we have some potential hail damage. Let's expand out our view, look at the overall metro and also the entire viewing area and see just what's up around the area. Well, as far as watches or warnings, we have a tornado watch that goes until 10 p.m. We have this broken line of thunderstorms that is now right over the Ohio River. It looks like Indiana is now in the clear as far as severe weather for the rest of today um, as the severe weather threat is going to be on this leading edge right here. Um, we don't have any other warnings other than that uh, tornado warning in eastern Henry County. We are obviously making a lot of calls along that path of the tornado from eastern Clark County, Jeffersonville, Utica, into Prospect, near Crestwood, and into Newcastle. So this is going to be the path of what is likely a long track, um, maybe EF2, EF3 tornado. So it went 
uh, from where it is now, right here, moving out <coughs> of our viewing area, yeah. Newcastle, near LaGrange Prospect, Crestwood, over the East End Bridge, started right about there at the intersection of 65 and uh, 265 in Indiana and Clark counties, and then went right over 62 and uh, 265 at the roundabout. So over some very heavily populated areas, we hope you guys all stayed safe that, you, that were underneath that tornado. Um, property damage can be fixed, but we hope uh, you have stayed safe uh, through this event. Let's look at the velocity, the wind speeds, make sure it is out of Henry County. Uh, so it looks like it's right on the edge here near, near Monterey. Um, so this is the Kentucky River and Lockport, Gratz. So it's right on the Henry and Owen County line is where we have the potential of still a tornado on the ground or, or some damaging straight line winds. High high chance of damaging straight line winds in this area that is now east of Bethlehem, east of Delville. You guys still have some gusty conditions, no doubt about that. Uh, but the strongest damaging winds are now starting to move into the Owen County area very quickly out of Henry County. So that's good news for you guys in the Henry County area. Let's let's we've got, we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning. Let's take a look at where that's at. So this is going to be for that hail core that we were tracking here in Anchorage and also the in, into Crestwood. Uh, there is the possibility of some damaging straight line winds. Unfortunately, this is going to be going over the top of where we just had tornado damage. Uh, just near between Prospect and Crestwood. So this is where the tornado crossed over I-71. This is where we have possibility of some quarter size hail. And then also maybe some pockets of some damaging winds along this uh, around Anchorage, at Crestwood, up to near LaGrange. So this new severe thunderstorm warning is in Oldham County, northwestern Shelby County, far northeastern Jefferson County in uh, Metro Louisville, and then also includes Henry County. We hope this will skip you guys in Henry County that just had a tornado on the ground, but this is a strong thunderstorm, severe thunderstorm. Let's look at the velocity um, and see what the speeds are. It, we're probably looking at probably 40, 50 mile per hour winds in general, um, but yeah, there could be some isolated damaging wind gusts. Let's look here at uh, 64 and, and 265. Looks like uh, that might be some 50, 60 mile per hour winds right there. So very gusty. Uh, with this thunderstorm uh, that could be putting down some quarter size hail. And Ben, that severe thunderstorm warning goes until 7 p.m. for the threat of quarter sized hail and 60 mile per hour uh, wind gusts. Over on Max 3, we have I-71 at I-265 that we can take another look at. That's been the area that's been pretty uh, active so far for today. Looks like traffic is moving along there. We don't see any signs of a tree damage or anything, which is good, but the roads are very wet. I also have not seen any reports of flooding concerns, which is good, of course. Uh, these storms have been moving so fast, Ben, that there probably hasn't really necessarily been time, enough time for flooding conditions to develop. Also, just just knew the weather service is going to let that tornado warning in Henry County expire when it's up at 630. So that's coming up here in five minutes. Otherwise, that severe thunderstorm warning that we just showed you is in effect until 7 p.m. All right, yeah, again, looking live here at 71265. We do have a heavy rain, some lightning and thunder, and a hail core there that is at 265 in Shelbyville Road. Um, so that's uh, not too far from Valhalla. Here's some video from some hail that was coming down around the highlands uh, from Connor Steffen, our reporter Connor Steffen, with uh, the recent thunderstorm that just went over that, that uh, area of Metro Louisville. So we're tracking that same cell here as it moves off to the east and to the northeast or a similar cell. Um, so we do have this severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 7 p.m. That includes eastern Jefferson County, northwestern half almost of Shelby County, a lot of or uh, Oldham and into Henry counties uh, with the potential of 60 mile per hour winds, quarter size hail, possibly some hail around the Crestwood area right now and also right there at the Shelbyville and 265 interchange. Doug? I'm sorry, Alden, go ahead real quick. I, I was going to say we can look at that hail core near 265 and Shelbyville Road again on Max 3 really quickly just to get an idea of the blinding conditions hey, that uh, the we have there with that heavy rainfall. This was very similar to this morning um, if you were on the roads this guys morning. Just the rain up. was coming down so torrentially you could not really see ahead of you. So, uh, you, you know, if you do have to drive anywhere, you know, make sure that your lights are on, please. You know, if your wipers are going, wipers on, lights on is what we should have. He's with Jefferson County Fire. Give us some of the first reports from authorities. Jordan, can you hear me okay? I can hear you, Doug. Tell me where you are. I know you were heading out to uh, Prospect, Oldham County. What are you seeing? What can you tell us about the extent of damage? 
Yeah, so out in the Anchorage Middletown area, which is basically all of eastern Jefferson County, Doug, uh, multiple neighborhoods uh, have received some severe to major damage. Uh, we've got uh, multiple homes with roofs off of them, um, some partially collapsed. Uh, we have our crews out right now that are uh, searching those homes, checking for folks that may have been home uh, when the impact of the storm affected their area. So uh, right now we're uh, definitely in active uh, rescue mode, uh, looking for folks, like I said, who may have been home uh, when the storm occurred. So, Can you tell me the extent of that rescue effort? I mean, are you, are you concerned? Do you have many people trapped in the East End? Uh, we don't know an exact number for sure, uh, but we're uh, thankful to have a lot of assets in Anchorage Middletown, so we've got all those folks uh, that are available um, on the ground. Uh, we've got our rescue company that's uh, doing what they do, uh, going door to door, making sure um, folks that are in their homes are out safely uh, and those that need to be uh, rescued from being in there can get out uh, in a safe manner. Earlier, I was talking to the South Oldham Fire Chief. He was heading to Sherlock Court in uh, Prospect area, which is uh, a street of very large homes where uh, he told me two people were trapped uh, for a rescue there. I don't have a follow-up on that. Do you know of any any news on Charlotte Court? Yes, yeah, so our, our crews responded to that. Uh, from my understanding, our, our crews, uh, the Anchorage Milltown crews, uh, cleared that incident. Uh, so you have to you have to follow up with, with South on that. But we did in fact respond uh, to assist uh, South Oldham uh, with that uh, building or structure collapse. Was everybody okay? Uh, that I do not know. Okay. Can you, Eastern Jefferson County in that prospect area, so heavily populated, can you tell me how many neighborhoods you you know for now and what kind of uh, square miles are we talking about? How widespread is it? I'm not sure on square miles, Doug, but I know we've got uh, two neighborhoods for sure uh, that we are in searching boots on the ground, uh, trying to figure out uh, who's there, is everybody accounted for. Uh, it's it's kind of exactly what I know uh, at the moment. Do you, can you tell me the uh, name of those neighborhoods? Uh, so we're searching the, the Huntington Creek neighborhood and then Foxcraft, or Foxcroft, I'm sorry. Uh, those two neighborhoods we're searching uh, pretty heavily. Okay, so Hunting Creek is right off US 42 before you go into Prospect there. And uh, Fox, uh, the Fox Creek, I believe, uh, you're talking about in that area is right next to it. So that would be, that would be right uh, right where River Road ends into US 42 and then goes up into Prospect. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Jordan, uh, anything else you want to pass along to uh, what you've been seeing or hearing from your crews in the area? Uh, really, if you could stay home, stay home. Uh, let our folks uh, do their thing so we can uh, make sure everybody that was home was, uh, in fact, accounted for. So if you can do anything for us, just stay home and stay safe. And before I let you go, are you hearing any other neighborhoods outside Prospect uh, that have had this kind of similar damage? Uh, not specifically, at least in our area of, of East Louisville. Okay. All right. I know you guys got a lot of work to do. Thank you, uh, Jordan, for the first eyewitness reports from authorities coming in there from Eastern Jefferson County. We appreciate it. Let's uh, stay in touch. Appreciate that. Again, um, we had uh, the one uh, rescue uh, on Charlotte Court. That is in Eastern Jefferson County, the Prospect area, not far from um, a covered bridge road and as Jordan reported they've uh, uh, completed that rescue there he doesn't know uh, how those people are but at least that was a good sign that they were able to get there quickly and complete that rescue uh, while I've been on the air here with you all and doing these interviews uh, people have been just uh, flooding my cell phone Ben and uh, Alden with uh, video of hail from this part of their area so 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 it seems like it seems like that once the tornado cleared the hail's moving in and this is from Sergeant Kerry Holes with Indiana State Police Sellersburg. Uh, he tweeted this out just a little while ago. Multiple vehicles flipped over. Again, that is on uh, I-265 in southern Indiana. This is toward the East End Bridge, as you can see there, uh, just scattered all over the place. The high-profile vehicles were pushed over. So this was happening at about 535, uh, according to my notes, when uh, we were showing everybody the live picture of the East End Bridge. Yeah, that's right there. That's close to the roundabout, too. 62 there in There you go. As the tornado was actually moving over the area, these uh, and you were clocking the winds at the time, Ben, at 130 miles per hour. Yeah, so there you see as you approach Port Road 62, you're, you're going down 265 eastbound towards the East End Bridge. Then we saw live on the TriMark cameras uh, the tornado going over the East End Bridge. So that's when these trucks were being knocked over, and then it went over the Ohio River. 
And this is pro my estimate. There, of course, the National Weather Service will go out and do their stor storm surveys tonight and tomorrow, but likely EF2, EF3 uh, with that kind of wind speed. And then, and then the damage that we're hearing to the structures in northeastern Jefferson County, Oldham County, Prospect over the Crestwood, possibly uh, some significant damage in central Henry County. We need to check on our Henry County friends and family there as well as there was a confirmed tornado on the ground near Newcastle, Kentucky. And then we also need to check on northern Jefferson County in Indiana, a north of Ma about 10 miles north of Madison, confirmed tornado on the ground there near Crothersville. There was large hail and, and that was a confirmed tornado that was seen on the ground. So there are multiple areas that we're going to need to send crews to check on and see what kind of reports uh, of damage are going on in those areas. And we were talking about when th before this all really exploded, this is in Carefree, Indiana, roof off uh, that uh, building right there. Um, so that is significant winds that, that produce damage like that, obviously. Um, but we also mentioned that the damaging winds and the tornadoes are often correlated to strong hail cores and concentrations of lightning. And we saw that all afternoon and early evening long. Uh, they are often tied together and we saw those notches, those inflows, and, and just the structure that we saw on our, our reflectivity on our, on our radar, our different radar modes here, uh, giving us the tools uh, at times uh, to get ahead of the warnings and, and try to help you guys out as much as possible. But it has been a dangerous situation in these areas uh, with some fairly long track tornadoes and strong tornadoes. We had a tornado in uh, Chapel in Kentucky this morning, uh, a quick spin up tornado there. Then we had a quick uh, tornado reported in Georgetown, Indiana with the midday lunchtime round that went through and then as expected and, and, and unfortunately as forecasted, we were expecting some stronger tornadoes for uh, late today as, as things really heated up as we got the sunshine. So uh, we're starting to get into uh, reports of the damage coming in uh, from those confirmed tornadoes on the ground. And Ben, uh, real quick, we, what we haven't done so far today is uh, looked at future casts. So if we can switch over to Max 2, please, uh, and Colleen Peterson will run through future casts, what we can expect for the remainder of tonight. Colleen? We can go ahead and start putting some counties in the clear, Paoli, English to Bedford. You are now in the clear. It looks like the future cast is really just showing this line starting to develop over E-Town and Bardstown from now until 730. So over the next hour, it's going to start to clear out of Jefferson County, target areas around E-Town, Bardstown to Frankfurt. And then by the time we're talking around 839 PM, that's when we can give the all clear that the threat of severe weather has come to an end. So we're still watching that tornado threat with that tornado tornado watch in place until 10 p.m. And we'll start to see that tornado watch trim back as those storms continue to move off to the east and southeast. Now talking a little bit about tomorrow, we are going to have some cold temperatures. So if you have roof damage and if you're in prospect and you're listening right now, we have some temperatures in the 40s and then how strong of a system this is. Yes, indeed, we do have some snow flurries in that forecast, maybe some light snow showers Thursday, three o'clock in the morning through the late morning. So this just goes to show how strong this system really is getting you back to that radar. We're continuing to watch the storms trail through Jefferson County right now. Ben. Yeah, yeah. So there's gonna be power outages. There's gonna be folks without power um, that are gonna be have to deal with the really cold conditions and uh, the really gusty conditions. We could have some winds over 30 miles per hour uh, for tomorrow and also into Thursday. So not going to be good cleanup weather over the next couple of days. Uh, we do have some storm reports. Let's get to these quickly, Alden, but then we need to take a peek down in Bowling Green. We've got a tornado warning down that way, which if it continues to the northeast could impact some areas uh, south of the Bluegrass Parkway and uh, north of the Cumberland Parkway down towards uh, Green, Taylor and Adair counties. Um, so this is a Bowling Green a potential tornado here. This is a tornado warning that uh, was issued pretty recently, but just watching it just in case if it continues that could clip parts of Southern Heart and into Green County. So just an early heads up. No warnings at the moment, but not far off to the southwest uh, there for you guys in Greensburg and Munfordville. Um, so let's let's expand back back out. Uh, look at the broader view. Thunderstorm, not a warning on it around Campbellsville. We do still have a severe thunderstorm warning on this storm that is moving into Shelby County and back. Unfortunately, over 
where a tornado just ripped through around Newcastle. So let's go zoom in here. Uh, we do have showers and thunderstorms around Louisville. They're not severe. The severe thunderstorm is now moving northeast of Metro Louisville. Um, still the potential of some uh, decent sized hail in northwestern Shelby County. We're seeing some strong uh, lightning strikes here as well uh, near Eminence and Newcastle. The potential for some damaging straight line winds. Again, right over the top of where we just had a confirmed tornado on the ground over central Henry County and over the Newcastle area. That tornado is gone, by the way, but still stay inside until we can get this severe thunderstorm through your area. A strong thunderstorm, but it's not severe right over the top of Snyder. I mean, we have had some difficult driving conditions all afternoon and early evening long. Um, that's uh, some heavy rain coming right down over 64 in the Snyder um, that is moving off to the east and northeast. Um, so um, this thunderstorm, while you still have a severe thunderstorm warning, just want to stay inside until that is over. Let's look uh, a little bit farther out. Alden, it looks like we got a new severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, let's take a look all in at uh, severe thunderstorm warning that was just issued off to the southwest. So this isn't over yet. As Colleen uh, Peterson was just mentioning, uh, around 8, 9 o'clock is when we'll likely see the all clear. That is still a couple hours away. So we still have some strong thunderstorms here off to the southwest of Louisville that could be impacting parts of Grayson and Breckenridge County right over Rough River between uh, Caneysville and uh, Caneyville and Hardinsburg. So this is moving. These aren't moving as quickly, are they, as, as they were before, Alden? Uh, they're, still, they're still moving. Pretty decent clip. Uh, this one is moving to the east at 55 miles per hour. Okay, we 55. Can, we can put a quick track on that. So this is an early heads up for you in uh, western Grayson County. So around uh, Horse Branch at 542 Central Time, Caneyville just before 6 o'clock Central Time, Litchfield just after 6 o'clock Central Time, East View there in central Hardin County, if it maintains that strength, would be on a path for you at around 714 Eastern Time and around Sonora at 725 Eastern Time. But this will be impacting Grayson County first. Let's go with the loop of the entire viewing area mm -hmm. uh, with our, our radar just to give you all clear where, where things have, have calmed down. It looks like southern Indiana is, is, is clear out of the woods as far as severe weather. Um, this is likely not to be severe, that last little uh, line moving uh, through through parts of Crawford County and Harrison County. I know it's been busy there today as well. Um, so we're waiting for this all to move off to the east. So we're in pretty good shape now over southern Indiana and much of Metro Louisville. We still need to watch these areas very closely. Uh, we still have a lot of energy and ingredients for severe weather over the next couple of hours. As we head towards sunset, as the temperatures drop off a little bit, the air becomes a little more stable and that threat of severe weather will gradually go down. Uh, but we still have a tornado watch for basically the entire area until 10 p.m. So keep that in mind too. But we'll likely see these areas being cut off from that tornado watch once the National Weather Service gets time to do so. They are also very busy as uh, we are uh, as well. Still tracking a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. Let's go into Metro Louisville and uh, just take a look at some of the thunderstorm activity that we have over the top of the city. This is just some Good downpours that we have over Shively and some very heavy rain over Fisherville in the east end. Um, some gusty winds as well heading towards the Simpsonville area uh, right down Interstate 64 east of the Snyder. You've got some heavy rainfall that is now moved to the east of Fern Creek and Jaytown. And then as we look up to the northeast, we still have that severe thunderstorm warning that is impacting parts of northwestern Shelby County and then also into Henry County with the potential of some hail heading towards Eminence right there. We've got some concentrated lightning strikes and some hail coming down uh, that is uh, moving into unfortunately Henry County that has uh, recently had a confirmed tornado on the ground and likely some significant damage Doug uh, Ben I'm joined uh, now on the phone by Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg uh, Mayor have you uh, get it I know your folks are right out into the storm zone now in the east end what what can you tell us the extent of this now from your perspective well, here's what I can tell you right now, Doug, and we're actively you know, working to get more information by the minute. Uh, right now, we do have reports out of prospect of multiple homes that are damaged, uh, some roofs off, wires down, uh, power outage as well. Again, that's all in the prospect area. Uh, right now, prospect uh, fire and police uh, are on the scene assessing damage. The fi uh, prospect fire, uh, hold on, uh, and particularly in the Hunting Creek and Harrods Creek area where they believe uh, most of the damage is. But uh, again, this is real time reports, so we're uh, just getting this in. And they've set up, uh, prospect has set up a uh, command post at station 40. Uh, which is in that area uh, as it is. Also, 
Anchorage and Middletown Fire is is going door to door as well, uh, assisting with that in the Harrods Creek area. Right now, we have no injuries that are reported uh, as of as of this moment. Uh, lots of in, lots of uh, information about power outages, and we're in close contact with LG&E. Uh, mostly, I want to thank all of our weather folks for you know, bringing this to everyone's attention, so people could take cover and we could. Pl- accordingly uh, prior to this weather moving in and, and thank our first responders uh, that are out on the scene uh, right now. So it, it's still early in, in assessing the, all of the information that we have. We'll have a lot more details for you very shortly, uh, but that's what we have right now. Mayor, do you know of any um, deaths reported in this storm? Uh, not to my knowledge at this point, at least not in Jefferson County, uh, and, and no injuries are reported in Louisville as a result of the storm that I am aware of at this point. That's amazing. It's amazing. This was a long, uh, turning out to be what we're hearing, a long track tornado was on the ground for a while. I was talking to the South Oldham uh, fire chief earlier, Bill Blakely, and he was heading at the point, one point to a rescue on Charlock Court. Now that's a road uh, just uh, to the east of downtown Prospect where there were two people being rescued. Do you know anything about those rescues? I, I don't know anything about that. Re- those rescues, I don't have any information out of Oldham County yet. All of uh, the information that I have at this moment in time is from uh, either you know, city uh, first responders or folks in the Anchorage, Middletown, and Prospect area uh, and their respective fire and police departments that are, that are surveying the damage and going door to door right now. So let's talk to you about the bigger view of Metro Louisville. I know you've got a handle on the whole situation. Give us, give us the uh, Metro Louisville, uh, where the damage is reported, where it isn't, and where it's, where it's mostly focused at the moment. Um, it's mostly focused in the prospect area. Okay. Uh, we do have some reports of, of wires that are down and some house damage in other parts of the city. Uh, it's not yet confirmed yet, so I'm hesitant to provide that information until we have it f- confirmed here uh, in the coming minutes. But uh, most of the damage that I'm aware of at this point is in and around the prospect uh, area, and we'll have a lot more information shortly. So if I can actually run and uh, get back to that right now, and then we'll keep you guys up to date throughout the evening. Okay, so the command station is uh, station number 40 there. And I know That's I know Prospect operates as its own government. Is Metro Louisville able to, to get in there and help too as well? Yeah, we are in very close contact with them. Everyone in situations like this does a great job of working together and collaborating. Uh, and so we're, we're all working together collaboratively right now. All right, Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg, thank you. I know you'll be probably having a news conference later today uh, and, and, and talking to your, to, to your emergency officials uh, with further information. Yeah, we'll have a lot more information shortly. Thanks so much, Doug. All right, thank you for calling and giving thank us you. that first update from Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg, who uh, the headline of what the mayor was able to report to us amazingly thankfully at least at this point at uh, quarter till seven no injuries being reported in metro louisville uh he was uh pretty confident about no deaths being reported uh this is pretty amazing what you're watching on the screen we showed it to you live as it was happening at about 5 30 just after 5 30 uh our storm team meteorologist caught this this is the east end bridge Uh, You can see the cars stopping, but some of them amazingly still moving over. This was as the tornado was believed to have touched down just a little further west of the bridge in Clark County, where it had knocked over semis on 265, and then the winds were passing it. I I don't know if we can say, Alden, you first caught this. If we could say, do, do we believe at the time that this was the actual tornado moving over the bridge? I mean, obviously the bridge is still standing. Or was this, I know Ben clocked the winds yeah. at this moment at 130 miles an hour. Yeah, that was, that was more than likely the tornado as it was moving through over the East End Bridge. I mean, just incredible strength of those winds. Um, and, and near tornadoes, you can have uh, straight line winds over 100 miles per hour. Um, but we also, before that warning was issued, we started to see that rotation uh, right around I-65 and 265. So going right down eastbound 265 heading towards the roundabout at 62 and 265 and then moving east towards the the east end bridge and then now we're starting to hear the damage up in the northeast side of jefferson county and also towards uh, oldham county also we're getting significant damage reports right around newcastle and henry county too doug okay uh, ben now we can uh we are getting our first reports uh, from our reporters into the storm damage zone. Let's go to WHAS 11's Alex Dieterer, who's right now in the Prospect area. Again, as you just heard the mayor report, Alex, you are in the area that is the hardest hit in all of Metro Louisville. Just take us through what you're seeing. Uh, show, show us what's around you. 
Doug, I mean, you're saying it's the hardest hit, and here you're kind of getting chills looking around, looking at the damage here. If you take a look right behind me, you can see that this roof of the house has been taken clear off. And we do want to say, and we do want to say that the woman who does live in this house has been in the hospital. We heard from a neighbor that she is in the hospital, so she is okay and was not harmed in this damage. I mean, just take a look here on the ground and even right here on this mailbox over here, you can see all of the insulation that came from the roof. It is just everywhere. It is covering the ground. It's covering this mailbox right here. And then there's the roof right across of the street. It is right in that house and you can see that damage of the house, a hole just wide open in that side of the house. And we did hear from the um, a man who works at the country club just down the road. He said he didn't see it. Thankfully, he was taking cover, but he did hear it. And he said it just reminds him of that 1974 tornado. And of course, that 50th anniversary is tomorrow. And right here, it's kind of a surreal feeling for people and neighbors that we spoke with, just taking them back to that day 50 years ago. And looking at the damage here, you can see the house right over here. People are just taking bits and pieces of their house that have come off and thrown through the tornado. And walking across the neighborhood here, I mean, let's take a look right over here. Here, this tree and when we were driving through this neighborhood, we saw trees of the dozens looking just like this, just ripped clean off and just snapped in half. I mean, it is just it is amazing that right now everyone that we've spoken with is OK, that they were in here in this neighborhood and that they are safe. Everyone was saying they took cover as soon as they needed to. And just right now, surveying the damage, people just surveying their home. And we will keep talking to officials here and Doug and neighbors and let you know what we hear about any more of the damage. But let's toss it right back to you. Before you leave, uh, you appear to be in the Hunting Creek area. Are, uh, can you tell me where you're located, what street you might be on? Do you know? Right, Doug, we are right off of Hunting Creek Road. Um, we're right back in the subdivision. We passed by the golf course on our way up here, and we seem to be in the heart of it. And you can just tell when we were driving through this neighborhood, you can just see kind of where the tornado's path. It's not a clear path, obviously. It is just everywhere, and trees like that just kind of help you lead down the path. But thankfully, right here, I mean, officials right here and the rescue crews working so hard and so tirelessly to make sure that all this damage and these people are okay. So Doug, we'll keep you posted, but for now we're here in Prospect. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. And good to hear that that homeowner is going to be okay. The, the homeowner who lived in that home, Alex, was showing us, lost the roof there. It goes, again, she's in the Hunting Creek neighborhood. That's right off of uh, US 42, right in the middle of uh, Prospect. Uh, we also want to join WHS 11's Taylor Woods. She is on the scene there in Eastern Jefferson County and Prospect as well in a different area. Taylor, uh, let's go ahead and walk us through what you're seeing on that street. Well, Doug, we're also in Hunting Creek. We're at the front entrance of the subdivision, but right along the street that I'm on, there's nothing but debris everywhere and uprooted trees. Take a look at this tree right here in this front yard. Very massive right here. You can see where all this debris is right here. There's even some shingles. That's how significant the damage was in this area. Some shingles left over in this yard. And if you just take a look down this street right here, you can also see where there's Lots of trees uh, and debris along the road over here. Earlier, neighbors were out helping one another, starting to clean up. And one woman told me she was in her home. She was very scared as when the tornado came through, it just shook her home. But right now, they're not sure exactly what they're going to do since there is no power in the area. And again, we'll be uh, in the Hunting Creek neighborhood monitoring any of the damage uh, that has happened. But for now, reporting live in prospect. Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. All right, Taylor, thank you very much. Again, we want to go over what uh, Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg just reported here first on the air on WHS 11. Again, thank you, uh, Taylor. Uh, he was able to tell us that so far, and again, they're still going uh, home to home in eastern Jefferson County, Oldham County authorities and Louisville Metro. No injuries, serious injuries being reported. Uh, and uh, no deaths being reported. That is the good news coming out of this so far. But 
We really want to uh, be careful with this because this is so early on after this storm has just really cleared the metro, as you saw from our reporters uh, talking to us on the scene there in eastern Jefferson County. Uh, still raining over parts of that area as the storm is moving through and the authorities from Oldham County at least and also Jefferson County Fire are really just going through these massive neighborhoods uh, to get a handle on to make sure that everybody is indeed safe. So we'll be following that. The command post in Prospect has been set up at the command station, uh, fire station number 40 there. Uh, according to Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg, who again gave us the full picture of Metro Louisville, Ben, and so far it looks like uh, that section of eastern Jefferson County was uh, the hardest hit as the tornado crossed the, the river. And right now in Jefferson County, the power outages are being reported at 2,930 customers. Again, that's customers which... Uh, as we know, the ebb and flow on, on power outages can continue to rise, but so far that might be focused mostly in the east end. Yeah, when you get a, when you get a tornado, that, those power outages are going to be concentrated right where that tornado is. Sometimes those straight line squall lines can produce more power outages, but obviously less uh, damage. We do have still a couple severe thunderstorm warnings, and we're watching this tornado warning that's near Bowling Green. There's some rotation there that's moving down the Cumberland Parkway, Interstate 65 interchange. If that holds together, that could impact some of our southern communities. Southern Hart County, Greene County is at tracks up to the northeast. So that is one we're still watching. Again, the severe weather threat not completely over with just yet, as we do still have a tornado watch until 10 p.m. Um, as we expand out, Alden, let's take a look at that tornado watch and see if we have any areas that have been uh, taken out of that because it does look like the severe weather threat coming to an end now over pretty much all of southern Indiana. So that definitely be relaxed in southern Indiana. Still have the tornado watch that includes pretty much all of our Kentucky communities in the WHS 11 viewing area. So there is still the atmosphere that is ripe for the potential of severe weather uh, for maybe two hours or so, two or three hours. We're going to still have to watch this very closely. Uh, back to the radar where we have a couple of warnings. Um, it looks like uh, still this warning up to the northeast uh, in Henry. Henry County uh, that looks like it's heading into Owen County and then that storm in northeastern Shelby County and away from Metro Louisville. Uh, some clusters of showers and thunderstorms mostly not severe, uh, but this one is fairly strong moving over Rough River and towards Litchfield and Hardinsburg. Um, still the possibility of a little bit of hail too here in western Grayson County near Short Creek. Uh, there's Rough River. If we look at the velocity, uh, just take a look at some of the wind speeds here. It doesn't look like we're seeing anything strong striking here as far as uh, seeing any uh, remember when you had the tornadoes we're looking for uh, those bright blue colors, uh, the, the bright uh, yellows and oranges, uh, which indicated winds up 80, 90 over 100 miles per hour. Uh, this is showing wind speeds up around 50 miles per hour, which uh, can still contain some pockets of isolated damaging winds here in western Grayson County and parts of Breckenridge County. Uh, so as we expand back out, that this portion still has uh, that severe thunderstorm warning that continues, I believe, until around 7 o'clock. Um, and then also watching that tornado warning near Bowling Green. But otherwise, um, things are settling down as far as the overall tornado threat a bit. Can't completely let our guard down just yet as we still have to get these thunderstorms through uh, Kentucky. But again, southern Indiana really starting to settle down. And we are going to see things change rapidly tonight. Temperatures are going to be dropping and where folks need to clean up is going to be rough over the next couple of days. It's going to be windy, wet and cold tomorrow in the 40s most of the day. Wind gusts could be over 30 miles per hour and we're going to have some scattered, basically light rain showers around the area. It's going to stay blustery on cold on Thursday and breezy and chilly on Friday before things really begin to improve for this weekend. So it's going to be pretty rough for crews out there trying to clean up over the next couple of days. So this is a look at future cast. Um, we're going to need to back that up really quickly. I just want to go back to where we have the storms picking up pretty well where we have the storms. Um, and there you can see as we go to eight, nine o'clock, really losing the intensity off to the southeast and towards the Cumberland Parkway and points east. And then as we move forward in time, into the nighttime, we start to fall down in the 40s, leftover sprinkles, some chilly rain is going to wrap around as we head into the daytime tomorrow. And this is just looking nasty here with upper 40s, lower 50s, really gusty conditions 
And then tomorrow night we have the potential for some snow showers mixing in. I know it's not changing over to that blue color like snow, but it's going to be cold enough that uh, there could be some snowflakes mixing in here tomorrow night into Thursday morning as those temperatures continue to drop off with some really breezy conditions as well. Wind chills might be the 20s early Thursday morning as uh, some winter like conditions are on the way. So just some chaotic weather uh, for this first work week of April. And of course, we are thinking about those folks that uh, are dealing with the brand new damage from uh, possibly a couple different tornadoes. Uh, we, we don't want to forget that there was also a tornado earlier on the ground in northern Jefferson County and possibly near Crothersville in Austin. Uh, so we're going to need to think about those folks up there with that confirmed tornado on the ground. Um, and then also we had that confirmed tornado on the ground that moved into the Newcastle area in Henry County with uh, what looks like uh, could be some significant damage in those locations. So uh, a lot going on still and, and our crews are out there as we've been seeing gathering information uh, where we have uh, the damage. I know we've got some storm reports that have been coming in. Alden, if we want to take a Look at the last 12 hours, uh, get a check and see what's been coming in in different locations. I know we've, we've got a lot of updates around Metro Louisville. Uh, we've had hail reports up to uh, quarter and golf ball size hail. Um, so we do have definitely some delayed reports coming into the National Weather Service. So this is going to fill out a lot more uh, over the coming next 24 hours. But I uh, do have some uh, damage reports uh, here right along the Jefferson and Oldham County line. And that is the exact path that we are tracking of that tornado that moved through those areas. So. Uh, no doubt a strong tornado that uh, moved from Clark County over the East End Bridge through near Prospect and over towards Crestwood. Uh, multiple structures damaged along a path from State Road 62 at the roundabout. Um, so near Quarry Drive, um, this was at right around 535, Doug, as you were mentioning earlier, is that's kind of where this tornado really ramped up its intensity. Uh, tree down uh, in the area of uh, White Hill Circle in Prospect. Uh, that's after that tornado moved over the Ohio River. So an incredible start to our April and uh, right before again the 50th anniversary of uh, April 3rd, 1974. Okay, Ben. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we want to uh, let everybody know that we got a special edition coming up of WHAS 11 News at 7 o'clock. We'll be joining our reporters here, uh, which are uh, in different parts of eastern Jefferson County as we continue to continue to watch uh, the, the neighborhood reports coming in, also the, um, the rescues that have had, have, have, have had, hap, have, have happened, excuse me, uh, on Charlock Court, that is in Prospect in Eastern Jefferson County. Uh, so far, the good news is, is that the uh, mayor has been able to tell us here live on the area, if you heard his interview, that uh, we have no deaths being reported, Shay. We've got uh, no injuries, according to the mayor, so far. But, of course, the early reports are coming in as they are continuing to go home to home, just to confirm the most of the damage focused in far eastern Jefferson County, Prospect, and the Oldham County area. Still a lot of work ahead tonight as they start to figure out exactly what the damage looks like. We know almost 6,000 people without power between Oldham and Jefferson County. Quite a few homes there just trying to figure out what had happened and what they need to do next. Right. These were, as our uh, first alert storm team meteorologist here predicted, these could have were expected to be long track tornadoes on the ground for a while. That indeed happened as the, the one that became the most damaging started in Clark County at about 530, as Ben was saying, and then crossed over the East End Bridge. Amazingly, the drivers stayed on that bridge, uh, but uh, many semis got knocked over. And then when it got into Prospect, a heavily populated area, it really hit the homes hard in Hunting Creek and Fox Harbor. And that those neighborhoods actually rise up of a uh, high of, of US 42. So uh, prospects in a low area, but once you get to those neighborhoods, they become elevated. And so they really took the brunt of the winds. As we're getting crews out there too, we're starting to see some of the first reports of downed power lines completely tipped all the way down, which Doug, as you know, can take days to get those power lines back up and giving power back to these people. Rooftops uh, torn off as well. So we also expecting a, a news conference coming up from uh, Louisville Mayor's office. They are uh, texting me here with the information that they are going to be uh, joining, uh, having a news conference live at eight o'clock from the Anchorage Middletown Fire Station in on Erton Lane. Now that's in the Middletown area. So that's one hour from now. We'll get a briefing from all of the top authorities and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that the uh, early reports hold true, uh, no serious injuries and no deaths 
from this uh, large tornado outbreak. Okay, well, our reporters are now on the scene. They are getting us these live updates right now. I know that our first reporter is ready, and that is Ian Hardwit. He is located near a Charlock uh, neighborhood. Can you tell us, Ian, what you're seeing there and exactly where you are? Yes, yeah, Shay, I can tell you exactly where I'm at. We're at the estates of Hunter's Creek. It's a subdivision in Prospect, and I just spoke with the homeowner of this house right behind me. Now, you can see that the wind may have taken off the roof, and there's rain coming down in through the house. Now, fortunately, the homeowners are absolutely safe. They went in, down into their basement like they were supposed to, but there's a lot of damage here. I want you to take a look. You can see the insulation of their house is caught up in all these trees and the neighbors are having some problems too. But as far as the houses I can see, this one is definitely the worst. Now, Emma Gefter's our photojournalist. She's showing you that fire crews are out here. That's the North Oldham Fire Department. We spoke with the chief just as he was leaving the scene. Here's what he had to say. It doesn't sound like we actually have that for you right now. This happens sometimes when we're giving you developing news, and we're sorry for that. We're going to bring you more from the homeowners of this house. We're going to bring you the chief from the North Oldham Fire Department. Just keep watching with us for a little bit. We hope you're safe at home. I'm Ian Hardwood and Prospect, WHAS 11, on your side. Shay? Okay, uh, Ian, thank you very much. Again, the uh, rescue of two people happened on Sherlock uh, Court. Uh, we don't have the, um, the report back on how they are doing, uh, but we did get a report from the Jefferson County Fire Service that they were able to get to that house quickly. Sherlock Court, a home of uh, large homes there near Covered Bridge Road, also in eastern Jefferson County. And we want to also join Taylor Woods. Now, she's in the uh, Hunting Creek neighborhood, not far from where Ian was reporting from the estates of Hunting Creek. Taylor? Well, Doug and Che, that's right. I just drove around about a mile, and like we've been saying, just lots of debris and minor damage to homes. But take a look right here. This uprooted tree landed right in front of this home. I'm not sure if the homeowners were home at the time. And also take a look. This home over here, you can see where there was an uprooted tree that landed on top. So this is kind of like what we're seeing in the Hunting Creek area as far as the front entrance of where I'm at. Lots of debris everywhere, still no power. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman who said he came over here because this is his brother-in-law's home who is out of town right now. And he said he just came home from work. He also lives in the neighborhood. But right now, they're just happy that everyone is okay. And again, reporting live in Hunting Creek, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. Okay, Taylor, thank you very much. Now we want to show you what happened when the storm moved over uh, parts of Clark County. Again, very, very close to the uh, East End Bridge when the storm, we, we believe the tornado was just starting to touch down. Exactly. 265 West Indiana State Police was called in to respond because multiple vehicles, multiple semi trucks were overturning on the highway, blocking traffic. You see those images right here. These coming in from Kerry Holes, a sergeant with Indiana State Police. They said luckily they were able to get there. They were able to work on these people. No word on the injuries just yet, but you can see at least one semi here and multiple other vehicles were flipped over from the wind, the high impacts right there near the East End Bridge. Again, once again, at 8 o'clock, we'll have a live news conference from Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg and authorities about today's large tornado outbreak that uh, started. We watched this earlier from, from uh, southern Indiana and then uh, areas, areas like Crothersville, one of the first tornado touchdowns, also north of Madison, Indiana. And then it developed there in Clark County and came right across the, uh, the bridge. Uh, in eastern Jefferson County and focused on prospect and then moved up through toward uh, Henry County, Kentucky. So we're still getting a lot of these reports in. We hope you are now safe uh, and uh, we, we expect to get more details on possible injuries and the rest of Metro Louisville at that news conference coming up at 8. Certainly a very developing situation right here as everyone, even including the first responders, are still going home to home, checking on people, making sure they're okay. LG&E numbers of 
power outages continue to climb right now. It looks like Jefferson County 2900, Oldham County 3000 customers without power and that is just slowly rising. Um, likely as they're getting those calls in with people actually able to come up for air and find out what happened. Uh, lately around here we have been used to uh, tornadoes that uh, just come down out of the ground or maybe EF1s. Uh, not the most powerful tornadoes in the world, but they can do damage as we've seen. They'll, they'll, they uh, did so early this morning when they touched down in, uh, briefly in Georgetown, Indiana, and then in Nelson County did uh, extensive damage to a building there. We know Anderson County and Nelson County had a confirmed tornado on the ground this morning. The National Weather Service certainly going to be very busy this evening going up to Oldham County. Let's go back and check in on Hunting Creek again uh, when we did our interview with the mayor. Uh, he focused on Hunting Creek and Prospect, and Alex Dieterer is there where she's been looking at some of the homes and the damage there. Alex? Doug, I mean, just take a look right behind me. You can just see this tree blocking part of the road. Neighbors have been checking in on each other, surveying the damage. And I mean, it just really gives you hope right now when things like this happen. If you take a look right behind me at this house, Minor, minor damage right behind us right here on this house. And we saw two men picking up debris and putting it to the side. They don't live there. They are neighbors down the street and their friends who live right in this house are off on spring break and they needed to do what they could to help them out. So thankfully, thankfully there are good people here in this neighborhood. I mean, people have been roaming around here just checking in on their neighbors and their friends. But just take a look right over here. I mean, you can just see the debris everywhere around here. There is just filling right over here, branches, people surveying the damage. Thankfully, right now, all we're hearing from this neighborhood right off of Foxcroft Road is that everyone is safe. Everyone took their safety measures and safety precautions and got into their basements, took cover. Now people just helping out their neighbors. It really just gives you a warm heart seeing all of this. And the damage right here, I mean, it just expansive. And so we're going to take a little quick step back as people just trying to get to their houses. Um, but I mean, we'll stay here. And if we take a look right back over here, take across the street right now, we'll give you another look at, at this house over here that really brought us to prospect. I mean, the roof is just clean off of this house. And first responders have been here, Doug. They've been here for hours. They've been here just surveying and helping people. And it's truly amazing just seeing everyone come together. But this house that you see right next to the tree, it's been cracking, so everyone is staying clear away from that just for safety. Um, but we'll continue to talk to neighbors. And I mean, you can just see everyone out and about just making sure that everyone is okay. And thankfully, everyone has been safe so far. So we'll keep you posted, sending it back to you in the studio. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, again, people out surveying the damage now, the scenes of coming out of their basements and the stunned reality of the, the rebuilding effort that is ahead. And we've got a long way to go as we are still learning more about more uh, neighborhoods actually to the east of Prospect that also have suffered damage. When you see images like that, like the roof clean off and you hear no injuries reported, it's just incredible. And of course that could change, Doug, like you've been saying, we're still so early in the process. That's right, as we see the ebb and flow goes, I mean, people eventually call authorities and say they need help and they can come uh, quite a while after the tornado moves out. We want to check in with uh, Christina San Juan. She's been looking at the traffic situation since these uh, tornadoes and also the strong winds moved across some major roadways across Kentuckiana. Yeah, absolutely, you guys. And uh, as that tornado was crossing over 265 near Utica, we were tracking it, of course, in real time. But unfortunately, there were several large vehicles that were overturned, including uh, two semi trucks along 265 near Old Salem River Ridge. And you can see that they're still sitting there right now. Now, I did look into Trimark. They said that uh, traffic is now being able to maneuver over on the shoulder. But obviously, that's not an ideal situation if you can avoid the area perhaps just stay home. I think that is absolutely the best thing to do here. And you can see on our traffic tracker just where that accident is and how those lanes are still closed down. But in addition to those two semis, also the left lane is blocked due to a vehicle that spun out uh, on Indiana 62 southbound, uh, not too far away from there. But this does follow that track that, of course, Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine and Meteorologist Alden Durbin were uh, following live on TV. Ben? 
Yeah, not far from there, uh, River Ridge. That's kind of near the roundabout um, and on two, RF 265 in Jeffersonville. I uh, did get a report of some damage to some roof of some homes and some of the, the, the neighborhoods right around there as well. Uh, so that we're going to see more and more of these damage reports from Clark County. Uh, anywhere from basically 62 and 265 uh, there in Jeffersonville over the river in the Prospect and then also in Newcastle. Uh, there are some areas we can't forget here, but uh, this is the thing that that we are concerned about uh, under this tornado watch, by the way, that goes until 10 p.m. for our Kentucky County. Southern Indiana is no longer under that threat of severe weather. And I think Louisville also out of that threat of severe weather. But uh, that with that tornado track crossing the Ohio River, Oldham County into Newcastle, uh, it could have skipped a little bit, but it, we put a track on that and it looks like it could be 30 miles long. So that is a long track, long live tornado, possibly EF2. When you see roofs torn off, we're talking generally EF2, EF3 strength tornadoes. Also had a report of a tornado on the ground near Crothersville, Austin, uh, moving towards DuPont and northern sections of Jefferson County in Indiana, only about 10 miles to the north of Madison. So we're going to have to check up on uh, some reports in that area as well. And then earlier this morning, round one, we've had three rounds of severe weather today. The early this morning, we had a tornado report in eastern Nelson County, east of Bloomfield in the Chaplin area. And then in Georgetown, Indiana, a report of a quick spin up tornado. And that doesn't include uh, the straight line damaging winds uh, that have been also reported across the area and in some uh, instances of large hail. Southern Indiana again quiet now. Uh, we do have maybe a couple leftover showers that will move through Louisville. We are seeing some lightning and thunder out of some of these thunderstorms, but thankfully no severe thunderstorm or tornado warnings in the WHS 11 viewing area right now. You can see this thunderstorm moving to the east pretty quickly at about 40 50 miles per hour. Some lightning and thunder, some heavy rainfall east of Hardinsburg moving into Hardin County, Southern Mead County. Again, no warnings on it, but some gusty winds out of that. Uh, near Shepherdsville, Lebanon and Junction, a little thunderstorm there. This storm has been pretty strong out of Bowling Green. It did have a tornado warning on it earlier. It's moving into Southern Hart County. It does not have a warning on it right now. We'll still watch it pretty closely as that's uh, zipping up to the northeast. It's going to be moving through Green and uh, Taylor counties. And right now in Green and Taylor counties, you've got a separate thunderstorm there. More active weather off to the east where we have some thunderstorms over Spencer and Shelby counties. And uh, we're going to have to check up on the Newcastle area and the surrounding communities around Newcastle and Henry County because we have seen some reports of sig some significant extensive damage uh, from that tornado there. This is a map of the current warnings. Again, no warnings in place in the WHS 11 viewing area. The only tornado warnings up to our east northeast around the Maysville, Kentucky area. So right now we are 65. We had our temperatures push up around 75, 80 degrees, way above normal, more like May. And what we have seen in past big severe weather outbreaks in March and in April is that we make it way up into the 70s. So that's the fuel for the strong thunderstorms combined with jet stream winds and, and other ingredients uh, that help produce severe weather. So Futurecast is showing this cold front moving off to the east by around 8, 9 o'clock here shortly. That severe weather threat wrapping up to the east and southeast. Next up is going to be cold winds uh, for tonight and tomorrow. We're down to the upper 30s, lower 40s first thing tomorrow morning. It's going to be wet windy and just kind of a nasty day out there tomorrow. So not a good cleanup day after some of this destruction. Upper 40s, lower 50s for highs uh, way below normal. And it's going to feel colder than that with maybe some wind gusts over 30 miles per hour. Now as we head into Wednesday night, I don't have the color palette on this to show you this change over to snow, but there is a chance for some snow showers mixing in here late uh, tomorrow night into Thursday morning. I don't think we'll see any kind of significant accumulation or anything like that, but uh, just show you the crazy and chaotic weather that we have going on here in early April. So our high temps average high is 65. We're going to be 15 degrees plus below normal in the upper 40s, lower 50s with some breezy conditions tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. Just got to get through the work week and things begin to improve this weekend up to 58 with sunshine on Saturday, 65 on Sunday. So that's kind of our cleanup weather for this weekend um, again after those tornadoes today. Not to want to forget here on Monday, big eclipse day on Monday, 70 degrees, chance for a couple showers, and maybe some clouds around. Again, we'll keep an eye on what thunderstorms are out there, but it looks like we are trending to that lower threat now, severe weather over the next couple of hours. Thank you. Of course, you bring up a good point. April, we're always uh, 
very sensitive and under the gun here in Kentuckyana. Of course, we have been as tomorrow we reflect on the 50 years since the April 3rd, 1974 tornado. And here this happens on on April 2nd. And now the same authorities from the National Weather Service who are going to honor that event tomorrow are going to be out surveying new damage here right in Metro Louisville again. Likely a lot of those neighborhoods up in the Oldham County Prospect area. We now want to check in with Taylor Woods, who's live in the Hunting Creek neighborhood. Taylor, what are you seeing? Well, Shay, right now what I'm seeing is residents are starting to walk around and reality is starting to sink in. Take a look at this home right here. You see this uprooted tree right here. It is blocking the entire roadway. No cars allowed to come in or out. And I was told by a neighbor that this home just sold a week ago, so it's not clear if there are still some homeowners in the house that are about to move out or if the home, new homeowners have moved in yet. But right now that house just sold a week ago. And if you you take a look right here what we've been saying um, pretty much all afternoon right here just in the front entrance of the Hunting Creek neighborhood you can see where this fence right here uh, has been damaged just by this tree and lots of the debris going over into another uh, neighbor's yard over here I'm starting to see some fire trucks in the area uh, some roof companies as well as they're starting to canvas and knock on neighbors door to do some assessments so right now it's really just focusing on the recovery efforts right here in Hunting Creek for now reporting live in Hunting Creek Taylor Woods WHAS 11 on your side Okay, Taylor, thank you very much. Again, we want to give you the latest on uh, what we have here that is ahead for the evening hours. And about uh, 40 minutes from now, we'll be taking you to the uh, live news conference in the Anchorage Middletown Fire Station. Louisville Mayor Cream Greg Greenberg is there with uh, authorities to give us the latest information on possibly the number of homes damaged, the neighborhoods involved here, uh, any new updates on injuries. So far, we've been told by him in a live interview he did with us at 630 that there were no uh, in severe injuries at least and no deaths. He was able to report pretty emphatically no deaths and I think that's a tribute to the early warning we had and, and heightened concern that this was going to be a very serious tornado outbreak today. Our first alert storm team on the air as soon as 350 warning about this line as they started moving across Kentuckyana mm -hmm. and a lot of time for people to get in their basements. We're happy about that. It is sounding like a lot of people were safe through the storm. Of course, we could be getting new reports later. We also know right now that the emergency operations center has been set up up there in Oldham County. That's fire station number 40. Mm -hmm. You working as a command center, they also have people, multiple different people from Metro Safe, from Metro Louisville leadership, Oldham County leadership. I'm seeing images of these people coming together to figure out how they're going to move forward through t tonight, exactly how that works. Important to get um, very, get everything organized now, Doug, as they, they try to keep getting that. That's right. Going. Uh, security for these neighborhoods is going to be very important as we head into the uh, nighttime hours. Now we want to uh, continue our coverage here. I know we want to do we want to join another one of our reporters out in the field. Uh, let's go back to Alex Dieterer. She is in the Hunting Creek area again. Alex, you are uh, on the main road of Hunting Creek just right off US 42. Right, Doug, we are right off of US 42 and driving here into Hunting Creek Drive. The lights were out. There are there's power out at at businesses and at homes and even here in the neighborhood the power is out for a lot of the neighbors if you take a look right behind me you can see some of that damage and it may look like pollen all over this house and on the driveway this is insulation this is insulation from a roof that was taken off of a house right across the street let's take you right across the street and see that roof that is gone now and it is just a sight to be seen and again just the the memory of 50 years ago of the 1974 tornado outbreak it just brings chills to your body seeing the damage here and thankfully the house that you're seeing right here with the roof just ripped ripped clean off. You can see that gutter right by the front door just hanging down there and thankfully we did hear from a neighbor that the woman who lives here she is an elderly woman and she has been in the hospital so thankfully she was not home at the time of the tornado coming through the area but just looking at this devastation is just it's honestly amazing that we have not heard of anyone hurt right here in the neighborhood. And just for the last hour, we have seen neighbors upon neighbors just coming out to help each other out and moving debris and helping with the damage. And I mean, 
as you can see right now, thankfully the rain has stopped and people are out helping one another. But this damage, this is not just going to go away overnight. That you can see right there, the clean hole on the side of this house, that is a roof, a roof from another home. Just in, in, and you can just see it littered, littered across with all of the pieces of the roof. And I mean, honestly, Doug, again, it just is mind boggling that everyone here is safe and they're out here together. If you take a look right across the road, right over here, we're going to come and take a look at a tree that was just snapped right in half, right next to the house that had the roof taken off of it. And you can just see branches and, and leaves discarded into the road and people trying to get past. And honestly, again, where you are, you're at Foxcroft and Shadwell. Thank you. <laughs> Lots of sweet people here. And again, you can really just tell people are just coming out and being neighborly people. And I mean, in moments like this, that's what you really need. And so we're going to send it right back to you and make sure that everyone here is good. And right now it's looking like people are safe and they are unharmed, which is, again, something to be eternally grateful for. So sending it back to back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. Now, not far from where Alex is located, the estates of Hunting Creek and Ian Hardwit has been reporting there live. And uh, Ian, I know more people have been com coming out of their homes. What are they telling you? They're fine. Fortunately, this is the sort of neighborhood where when things go wrong, people check on each other. And those neighbors have been out here. They've been making phone calls and saying, have you checked on so-and-so from whatever church? We talked to the homeowner of the house right behind me. His name's Robert Burt. And uh, as you can see, the roof did come off and we arrived as the rain was coming down and filling up that house unfortunately you can also see to the left of the house as we go just a little bit over with photojournalist emma gefter and we've even got our own john charlton out there surveying some of the damage there's insulation stuck in a lot of these trees and if we look down this line of trees move with me just a little bit emma if you don't mind if we look down this line of trees you can see the very clear path that this uh, this, this, this storm took, we're not sure what to call it yet now because we do need confirmation from the National Weather Service. Fortunately, people are all right. The people who lived in this home were okay. They went down into their basement. That's what the North Oldham Fire Chief told me earlier when we arrived on the scene. Here's what he had to say. I, I know there's a lot of other structural damage throughout the county, and so I'm just hoping those folks were as uh, lucky as these folks and also just took the time to get into their basements and be in a safe place when this happened. Do yep. you think that's what kept them safe? I do, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they were all sheltering in a really safe place in their basement and paying attention. And fortunately, that chief told me there have been no injuries here. LG&E is out surveying the area, presumably trying to restore power. Again, everybody here is all right, but the damage to the homes is there. I'm live in Prospect, Ian Hardwit, WHAS 11, on your side. Okay, Ian, thank you very much for that report. Uh, so, Shay, this is uh, starting to, we're getting a better picture now from different authorities. If the North Oldham chief is telling Ian there, no injuries, that is good news. Uh, as we had Alex Dieter report from the neighborhood where, where she's reporting from, uh, a woman who was in that house was sent to the hospital, but she didn't have serious injuries there. And Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg's telling us that he is not getting any reports of any serious injuries. We'll get that confirmed uh, in about 30 minutes from now at 8 o'clock. And at least we know from him, no deaths. So uh, the search and, uh, through the homes is still underway. We know also right now state authorities, Indiana State Police, Kentucky State Police are working multiple different overturned semis, different overturned vehicles, certainly different interstates that are still closed down from when the storm passed over. Let's get right on over now to Christina San Juan with a look at traffic. You're looking right there at I-265 right before the East End Bridge, Christina. Yeah, I mean, incredibly strong winds out there, Shay and Doug. Uh, we know that as uh, Ben and Alden were tracking the radar estimated over 100 mile per hour winds as that tornado was getting going and passing not far from the East End Bridge along 265. And that's where we started getting multiple reports of semis overturned around uh, 11 at last report for us. And that's uh, a view currently still uh, what we're seeing out there. Now I'm being told, at least I'm seeing on Trimark, I should say, that uh, traffic is allowed to get over 
on the shoulder, but that's just about it at this point. Now, progressing to the next graphic there, you can see still plenty of red in both directions. So please, if you don't have to leave your house, please avoid that area. But that's not the only one. As we said, we had a reports of about 11 that were overturned. Now, another left lane is blocked. This is not far away. That's on Indiana 62 because the vehicle spun out. That tells you just how incredibly strong uh, the wind was with this complex of storms, guys. Real quickly, Christina, Ben, uh, are you thinking now from the, the reports of the winds you all saw, the EF maybe two tornado here or maybe even stronger? Yeah, two or three. A two or a three. Okay, so we've been talking about EF1s a lot, so possibly this could rise to the level of EF2. Uh, take a look at this. This is video from just this morning. A WHAS 11 viewer sent it in to us. And it's going to show you what appears to be a funnel cloud again from this morning in Nelson County. Very dark still this morning. We know this part of Kentucky got hit hard by the first round of storms that did turn severe. Later in the day, the Louisville Office of the National Weather Service confirmed that it was an EF1 tornado that touched down northeast of Chaplin, Kentucky. That's a community in Nelson County. So we sent a crew there right away this morning. Jose Alonzo and Emma Gafter went down to Nelson County showing us the damage around Lawrenceburg Road. We're out here in Chaplin, Kentucky, and I want to show you what exactly we've been looking at this entire time. If you look over here, we're looking at what's left of half of a house here, and there is debris everywhere. They got two or three barns and stuff, and that's the, nobody that's injured. So that or somebody upstairs was looking out for all of us. Yes. Cheryl Fahey's daughter lives in this home in rural Nelson County. She says her daughter and several family members were in the building when the tornado came through. A couple of times she really broke down because she was just so, so thankful that they, none of the kids, no, nobody got lost. The family built this house in 2020. Now, half of it is just debris. The place where the family took shelter, still standing. They were under that where the white is. There's a closet that's all closet and that's where they all were. They were all tucked in there safe and sound. The floor where two adults and four children hid is now drenched in water. John Gordon with the National Weather Service in Louisville says this is one of his many stops today. I got a lot of property to look at. We got to look at Washington County, Anderson County, Jesmond County, and hopefully by eight o'clock tonight, I'll be in Bourbon County. Gordon says the damage indicates an EF1 tornado. I mean, this is very typical, a lot of roof damage, a lot of tree damage, twisting and turning of the debris, mainly towards the northeast, east, and southeasterly direction. Once the storm passed, within minutes, neighbors started helping clear the debris and salvage toolboxes and totes of items. Got all the furniture in the trailer, you know, and uh, Bishop got us uh, enclosed for their clothes and stuff. So everybody's went and got something pitched in, carried, as you can tell, carried stuff everywhere, packed trailers. It's just awesome. In Chaplin, Kentucky, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11 on your side. Okay, thank you very much. That's Jose Alonzo. He was reporting from Nelson County earlier today, and uh, Shay, we're starting to talk to some of the first people impacted in this uh, tornado today. Let's get back out to Alex Dieter, who's in Prospect. Alex, I know you're actually getting to start to talk to people. Um, can you introduce us to someone? Right, yes, Shay. So this is Tom. Tom, you've been living in this neighborhood for about 15, 16 years, you said? Yes, ma'am. And just taking a look at right now, what, what are you seeing? How are you feeling? I can't believe the what I'm seeing right now. It's amazing to me. I came out about five minutes before this hit. I heard this, like everybody says, when they talk about tornadoes, this freight train type sound. And, and I'm thinking like, oh my goodness, I better get in. My wife called me from Tennessee. She's visiting our kids and went down to the basement and lost power. and heard all these things happening around the neighborhood and this is what I see when I walked out and finally was brave enough to come outside. Have you seen anything like this before? Never in my life have I seen anything like this. I've seen some pretty bad storms since I've lived here, the ice storm and things like that, but that was not like immediate like this was. I mean, I couldn't even see out my back porch with the rain was so hard and I heard these sounds like trees falling down and things like that and I kept going to the window but I had to go down to the basement because I have to do what mama says of course you know. Smart. I'm glad you did that. I mean just taking a look around your neighborhood I've just seen so many neighbors and people check on one another. 
it's yes. just, just so heartwarming. It's amazing. My next door neighbor checked on me, the fire department checked on me, and um, I think I got lucky. I mean, I don't have any power and I'm feeling sorry for myself like most people do when they don't see what else is happening in the vicinity. But now that I've seen it, it's like I got lucky, you know. You're safe. Yes, ma'am. Which is amazing. And you're talking, hopefully you can make it to work tomorrow. I hope I can get there. I don't know if I can or not. And if I can, I can't. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't have any power in the house. So i got to go to the work to charge my phone. See LG and, he, LG and E here behind us. So fingers crossed. That they I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Hope it works. Well, thank you, Todd. I'm so happy that you are you are okay. Well, thank you. All. And you are a good reporter. <laughs> thank you. Back to you guys. Hey, Alex, thank you so much. And God bless him and his family. And I tell you what, that's the story we're going to see now from here on out as the community coming together. The emergency authorities, of course, they raced into these neighborhoods right away as the storm was still over the top of them. Uh, going home to home where the damage was so evident. But again, um, Alex is in the Hunting Creek neighborhood. And, you know, he talked about, he used the term the freight train, but it is that roar, that mm -hmm. unmistakable roar. You know this is just not any other storm. Every single reporter we've talked to here in the last few minutes has had that same story about the neighbors, and I feel like that is just so Louisville. Everybody coming out of their homes, going door to door, checking on each other. I've already seen chainsaws out there, people just getting right to work, jumping in to help. That's right. The, uh, a lot of the lawn maintenance crews will just volunteer and come in with their chainsaws and start really helping people uh, and, uh, and volunteer. And of course, we saw this happen in 1974, how this community came together. It really became the, store, the storm that tried to rip us apart actually pulled this community back together, and that's what we're going to see in this part of Jefferson County. So, Ben, uh, we have a news conference coming up in 30 minutes. I know there's some key things you're going to be looking for to hear specifically from authorities based on what you saw and reported on earlier. Yeah, Doug, and we're, we're going to be waiting on just more and more damage reports because it, it was not just northeastern Jefferson County, southern Oldham County. This went well into Henry County. We're getting some significant damage reports around the Newcastle, Kentucky area. Also, we haven't heard much from uh, some of the rural areas where a tornado was on the ground in northern Sorry. Jefferson County and in Indiana, north of Madison and near Crothersville, where there's some hail and where a tornado started up there in near northern Scott County and, and skipped into uh, Jefferson County. There's also in, in Chaplin, Kentucky. This morning, a tornado report there east of Bloomfield, northeast of Bardstown, and in Georgetown, Indiana, there was a brief touchdown, a little spin-up tornado uh, that occurred at around midday with that second round. So this is the third and final round of severe weather. That tornado watch uh, is going to be ending at 10 p.m., but the, the overall severe weather threat is gradually going down here minute by minute. This is a look at the damage report so far. There's going to be a lot more than this into the National Weather Service, where that tornado will began near the interchange of 65 and 265, especially started to get strong and was doing some damage near some neighborhoods at 62. The roundabout at 265 moved over the East End Bridge into Prospect, uh, moved over 71 near LaGrange and then started to move up uh, also near Crestwood and then towards Newcastle. If it did stay on the ground that long, it looks like that could be about a 35 mile long stretch of that track of that tornado. That is a long live, long track tornado with the damage that we're seeing quite possibly an EF2, EF3 strength tornado. So definitely a strong one there. We still do have some active weather that we want to keep you up to date with. We have some strong thunderstorms moving over our Kentucky communities. Once again, over Bullock County, Spencer County, up towards Frankfurt. We have some heavy rain, some gusty winds, and some thunder and lightning. And we have a thunderstorm moving up towards I-65 in Hardin County in Elizabethtown. Thankfully, no warnings being issued at this time, uh, but still watching this area very closely because there are still some severe weather ingredients out there. Far southeastern Jefferson County, we do some heavy rainfall. That rain coming down really heavy over Bullock County and into Taylorsville. This is some areas that have had some repeated rain, so we'll have to watch out for the potential of some localized flooding as well. And as we move farther south, this storm did have a tornado warning on it. There was a little bit of rotation with it. It is moving up to the northeast pretty quickly uh, towards Greensburg. 
Uh, so there could be some pockets of some isolated strong winds as this moves towards Campbellsville into Taylor County as well. Uh, so there is still a little bit of that rotation we're watching. So on that track, it looks like that storm, that cell right there uh, is uh, moving towards the XE area Fry into Gresham, into Haskingsville, Kane Valley, Holmes, and then the Dunbar Hill area. Uh, over the next half hour and those of course are central time uh, off to the south of Louisville. As we expand out our view, the only warning that we're seeing at this time is near the Maysville area. So thankfully no warnings uh, currently across the area. That severe weather threat is diminishing. This is a live view at still some leftover cloud cover out there um, in the 60s after highs around 75 to 80 degrees today. So we've seen in past serious severe weather and tornado outbreaks breaks that uh, in March and April when you get those temperatures 75 to 80 sometimes there's a price to pay with that that's the fuel uh, for these strong supercells so that severe weather threat diminishing off to our east after nine o'clock or so uh, that uh, tornado watch ends for all areas expires at 10 p.m. Next up, kind of a big story here. The cold winds are going to be whipping out there. Wet and windy at times tomorrow. A blustery day. Some of the wind gusts over 30 miles per hour. So not a good cleanup day tomorrow or even Thursday after all of the destruction from those tornadoes today. We're looking at highs only in the upper 40s for tomorrow. And look at this. Maybe sneaking in some snowflakes here tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Temps will be above freezing, so we're not expecting any impacts from that. Just some damp roads from time to time and it looks like we're stuck with some drizzle and some just kind of raw and nasty conditions here for Thursday with high temps again in the 40s more winter like conditions over the next several days even below temp below normal temperatures and some cool conditions into Friday with a high of 52. It looks a lot better uh, for any cleanup or any outdoor activities this weekend Saturday 58 65 on Sunday mild as we head into next week our big eclipse day Monday the great American eclipse 70 degrees could be some clouds around and maybe a couple light rain showers as well. We're going to keep an eye on those storms that are still ongoing in some of our Kentucky areas over the next hour. Okay, Ben, one question I have for you. You drew that red line on that map. You now believe is what, 35 miles on the ground, the tornado? Yeah, quite possibly. Sometimes they lift up a little bit here and there, but we've seen damage reports all along that path. So it, it's quite possible this could be, you know, 30, 35 mile long tornado. And it looked like you, you, you put the starting point right there in Clark County? Near, sort of near the Eastern yeah, Bridge. Yeah, before that tornado warning was issued, I started to see rotation right at 265 and 65, so right there in Jeffersonville, and then it really started to pick up intensity. The warning was issued, and, and so right about that roundabout there at 62 in Jeffersonville, um, River Ridge area, and then crossing over the East End Bridge, where we saw live on the Trimark yeah. camera. It's been a long time since we've seen a long track tornado. All right, thank you, uh, Ben. And now we want to look at some damage photos coming in from so starting this morning. Yeah, these photos are so incredibly helpful because of course our crews cannot be everywhere. So when you send in your photos, it really helps us get a picture of what the damage looks like all over Kentucky. And these particular photos are from Nelson County early this morning. This home, we actually talked to this family. Incredibly, they were all on the other side of the house. This was mostly part of the garage and workspace and they were not there. They did tell us they think unfortunately they're going to have to do a lot of work to repair the rest of the home because they were already seeing a lot of water damage, but no one was hurt. And that is just incredible when you look at images like that. And here we're moving to uh, Indiana, uh, also one of the gas stations there. This is near Evansville, Indiana, Vanderburg, uh, Vanderburg, Indiana. Uh, again, the ones that we were talking uh, to you about in Nelson County, that's already been confirmed as an EF1 tornado, but you saw the kind of damage it did. You saw just the bones of those buildings left behind. And those came from early this morning. Now you're looking at Indiana State Police, Vanderburg, Indiana. Um, this is all from that first wave that was right when you were waking up this morning, early this morning, as you were getting your day started. You oh. can see a lot of damage there and a lot of cleanup underway. Right along I-64, that uh, tornado followed those photos coming in. Let's go back to Ian Hardwit. He's in the estate of Hunting Creek where he's also been talking to some homeowners. Ian? That's absolutely right, Doug, and I'm actually here with a couple of neighbors right now. We're talking to Sharon and Nancy here. That's Nancy in the yellow. Nancy, can you just tell me some of the things you heard when this storm blew through? It wasn't like they always say it was a train, but I could hear things in my house going, hitting stuff and going, oh my gosh, where was that, where was that? So I didn't hear that train thing. 
Yeah, I'm, and I'm glad y'all are doing all right. It seems like the other people in the neighborhood are doing all right. The chief told me that there were no injuries in this area, thankfully. Sharon, you've seen a bunch of your neighbors coming out, and I think when I rolled up earlier, you were on the phone asking other people to check on people from your church. Is that right? No, I wanted oh, okay. them to check on people from this house to make sure they were okay. They're a little bit older and their kids are, uh, they don't want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad everybody's okay. And I know this is a really hard time, but you know, your neighbors are coming out and, and you're talking to each other. That can be a little bit rare in the digital age. Do you just want to talk about what it's like to come together as a neighborhood? Yeah, it's great. Our, our street is a dead end, so everybody knows everybody, and as soon as it was over, everybody was out, and the main thing is checking on everybody because everybody's okay, which is the most important thing. We all have basements. All that matters, and we're very lucky. Yep. We all are okay, and yep. we all have resources. Our houses will be back together in no time. Yep. I hope. Hoping for the best for you all, and uh, glad that you got to your basements in a safe amount of time, and I'm glad that everybody's okay. Thank you for talking to us, Sharon, yeah. Nancy. Thanks. And uh, if you're keeping up with us at home, uh, I hope you're safe too. I really appreciate you checking in with us over here at the Estates of Hunting Creek. We're going to bring you more coverage of this throughout the night. I'm Ian Hardwit, live in Prospect. Okay. Ian, thank you very much again. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is a special live coverage from WHAS 11 News. Coming up in about 20 minutes from now, we are going to be uh, joining live the news conference at 8 o'clock from Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg and authorities. That's coming up at 8. And we have been talking a lot about the impacts on Oldham County and Prospect, but it's important to note Southern Indiana certainly saw this storm as well. Jeffersonville, um, one of spot of note, actually Jeffersonville Fire just shared that anyone needing Red Cross assistance, shelter or lodging because of damage to their home can head on over to Station 4 on East 10th Street in Jeffersonville. So good. they are setting up a location there where anybody who might need some help or maybe is trying to connect with some resources, again, that's Station 4 from the Jeffersonville Fire Department on East 10th Street. We'll try to get the mayor of Jeffersonville on in just a second. Uh, I've been texting back and forth with him, so we'll do that in a second. But first, we want to go to Alex Dieterer, who was talking to one of the fire chiefs there in eastern Jefferson County. Uh, we don't have Alex at the moment, so we'll be going to her in just a moment to get some uh, reports from uh, authorities there. So um, I... Let's check in now with some more of those photos. Like we were saying, these are so helpful for us as we try to piece together exactly what the damage looks like all over the area. Today we had as far south as Nelson County and then far up into Evansville in southern Indiana. This particularly is right near the East End Bridge on the southern Indiana side. Indiana State Police snapping these photos of an overturned semi. And this is just one of the scenes where they are working overturned semis. We're actually also hearing from them. They're working overturned semis near International Drive. Many of these right on 265, though, near the East End Bridge. No injuries reported, but many traffic interruptions here as they try to get this cleaned up. Uh, hold on just a minute, uh, Shay. Let's continue to look at that. I've got the uh, mayor of Jeffersonville. Mayor, uh, this is Doug Prophet, and you're on uh, with us live right now. Give us a situation in Jeffersonville that you know and uh, can tell us about the damage there in Clark County. Well, uh, damage seems to be pretty extensive towards the east end of our city. I've been out to Steeplechase, and I know uh, Boulder Creek was hit very, very hard, and I think Brook Hollow and Quarry Bluff and Utica, but uh, right now I'm told we have 10 reported injuries. I don't believe anything is life-threatening, uh, considering what I saw with, with the semi overturned on 265 with the uh, close to the underpass. I am shocked the car survived that pancaking. But, um, you know, a lot of damage, but I consider us extremely lucky. So mo that would match up with what we saw, Mayor. We were actually showing the East End Bridge when apparently the tornado was moving right across it. The winds were being clocked at 130 miles an hour. And you were telling me that most of the damage is in that area of Jeffersonville and uh, the injuries, do they come from that area? Yeah, it looks like the tornado probably come across close to the two or to the uh, East End Bridge. Probably got the house, house or two in, in, Boulder, in uh, Corey Bluff. But then the subdivisions out towards our east end that I'd mentioned, um, it, uh, it it did some damage. I see some brick walls that have been knocked down, some roof, roofs removed. Um, but again, you know, structures can be replaced, and I think we're extremely lucky tonight. So the majority of the damage that you're seeing would be maybe rooftops removed, any 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 other buildings or homes more seriously damaged. 
Not that I have seen. Um, I'm at the police station now. We've got a command fitter set up, and we are taking calls in from around the county as we speak. Uh, I believe you're going to probably have a press conference here later this evening, but we do have an assistant set up at Fire Station 4, which is on 62, just beyond the roundabouts. If anybody needs assistance, they can go there. Red Cross will be there and here, and uh, certainly we want to help anybody that we can. We're getting trees out of the streets tonight, and we'll be working on the neighborhoods as best we can in the coming days, but uh, yeah, I, I just... Uh, uh, I, I thank God we're all okay. And we thank God as well. And Mike, I want to ask you, uh, are you pretty confident that you have no reports of any deaths in Jeffersonville? We have nothing, anything close to that. My first call this evening, my mother lives in the Bridge Point Gardens, which is right next to Steeplechase and Boulder Creek. Obviously, my concern was to my mom, who was right out there in the midst of it. She answered the phone. She was absolutely fine. So uh, I have seen a few people post on Facebook that live in those subdivisions, letting everybody know they're okay. I, I appreciate that. But uh, we, I would have thought by now, if you know, unless somebody is alone in a house and nobody has checked on them, we have no reports of any deaths at this point. All right, Mayor Mike Moore, the mayor, longtime mayor of Jeffersonville. Thank you, Mike, for that uh, firsthand account. And uh, we are so thankful no deaths being reported in Jeffersonville. It was a very large tornado. They're thinking EF2 to EF3 came through this area. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Uh, Shay, good news there. And I know that the uh, mayor is getting ready to talk with our Isaiah Kim Martinez, who is also in southern Indiana. So thankfully no deaths in Jeffersonville southern Indiana hit so hard right where that tornado started touching down as Ben was just showing us that 35 possible 35 mile track and then it comes over to here and we've already been told by Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg no deaths but we're going to get confirmation of that in about 15 minutes our team our first alert storm team already estimating EF2 even possibly EF3 and so it's just remarkable when you hear him say 10 injuries but nothing near death I'm very thankful for that. Let's get back out now to Prospect and our reporter, Alex Dieter, who's been there for several hours. Right, Shay, Doug, I'm here with Fire Deputy Chief Sutt, and can you tell me a little bit about what happened here in this neighborhood? So I said we had the uh, tornado, uh, alleged tornado that came through this area. Um, we started to receive calls of uh, significant damage, which you can see in the area. Uh, we've had a lot of, of roof damage um, as well as to the side of, of houses. It's pretty widespread in the entire prospect area um, up at Oldham County and, and we're still assessing those areas right now. Um, fortunately at this point we've, we've had no injuries which we're very very thankful for. Have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, it's been a long time. Um, I, I have it in my career um, but it yeah it's it, this has been pretty bad. And you all have been out here you and your team have been out here for a while so thank you so much for all of your time and everything that you guys are doing. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you Thank so much. You're welcome. Thank you. No problem. Back to you guys. Okay, Alex, thank you very much. Again, another confirmation from uh, one of the authorities, and that's good news to hear there. Alex, again, is in the Hunting Creek neighborhood just off US 42 in Prospect. So that tornado uh, crossed the river in southern Indiana right there by the bridge and came across the, the blue across the East End Bridge and then settled there into Prospect and in those neighborhoods which elevate above US 42 really take the brunt of the winds coming right off the river. Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine was tracking that storm the entire way. Ben are you getting a better idea now of exactly what it looked like? Uh, yeah, it started off as just kind of a little spin up around I-65 and 265 right there in Jeffersonville and then really started to ramp up its energy and turn into a strong and long lived tornado that went all the way from uh, near Utica, 265 and 62 near the roundabout there. Uh, some really uh, busy and growing areas in Clark County, Indiana, uh, in Jeffersonville near Charlestown, then went right over the East End Bridge and into Prospect and then s stayed going all the way from Old County into Newcastle. There's, so it's possible this was uh, ongoing all the way from Clark County to Henry County, Kentucky, uh, possibly around 30 miles long. Of course, the National Weather Service will be doing extensive work with storm surveys tomorrow, and that will be uh, one main focus. There was also another tornado this morning 
first round of the severe weather in Chaplin, Kentucky. That was in eastern Nelson County, east of Bloomfield. And there was another tornado report in parts of Floyd County in Georgetown. We still have a tornado watch, by the way, until 10 p.m. However, the threat has finished for most of the area and that severe weather threat is diminishing here uh, basically minute by minute as the air is becoming more stable and the overall storm system is starting to pull off to the northeast and the cold front starting to move through. These are various damage reports. We've had extensive reports of damage around Newcastle, Kentucky and Henry, Kentucky. So we, we don't have a lot of crews up that direction yet. We're going to get more reports from there. Uh, also in northern Jefferson County in Indiana, north of Madison, uh, there was a confirmed, confirmed tornado report on the ground before that tornado. So this is a look at the measurement of where the tornado began. Uh, this possible EF2, EF3, again near Jeffersonville along 265 eastbound where semis were knocked over right over the East End Bridge near Prospect, northeastern Jefferson County near Crestwood crossing over 71 near LaGrange and then moving into Newcastle possibly again on the ground for 30 or 35 miles. Now that storm did lose a little rotation then kind of pulse back up so might end up being a couple segments of a tornado as we find out tomorrow or the next couple of days. It's going to be tough to do those surveys and to clean up over the next 48 hours. We have some kind of rough weather over the next couple of days and some winter like conditions on the way. So southern Indiana in the all clear now. It looks like most areas uh, west of I-65 as well. We do not have any more warnings on going across the area, but some heavy rainfall here on the Bullet and Nelson County line. This tracking towards Spencer County, maybe even Shelby County. You have to watch out for some localized flooding as some of these storms are going repeatedly over the same areas and still some heavy rain, some rumbles of thunder here in eastern Grayson County. Pretty wet here over parts of uh, Hart, Green, and Taylor counties as well. So some more sc storms scattered about east of I-65 and off to the east and southeast of Metro Louisville. This little cell had a tornado warning on it near Bowling Green. It still has a little bit of rotation, but definitely not as strong as it was. Uh, so it is moving east of Greensburg, and uh, it's going to be moving out of the viewing area here very soon. So expanding back out, looking at any uh, warnings uh, left over, uh, that was a confirmed tornado on the ground near Maysville, Kentucky, that is now moving into Ohio, but no longer any warnings out there. Seeing a little sunshine on the horizon, uh, but we're going to be pretty cloudy and wet and windy for tomorrow. Be ready to break out the jackets and the coats over the next several days uh, after highs around 75 to 80 degrees. So abnormally warm conditions earlier this afternoon, as expected, fueling those strong thunderstorms across the area in the 60s now. Severe weather threat winding down over the next hour off to the southeast, and we've got some cold winds on the way, upper 30s, lower 40s tomorrow morning, and only in the upper 40s and lower 50s, uh, well below normal, and it's going to feel colder than that with some winds over 30 miles per hour and some occasional light rain showers and maybe even a couple snowflakes mixing in, especially the northern half of the area tomorrow night and into early Thursday, and just a very cold and at times damp day with highs only in the 40s for Thursday. So the rest of this week, we just got to get through it and stay bundled up before things start to improve this weekend. I do want to mention uh, our big American Eclipse Day on Monday. Some clouds around, maybe a couple rain showers, but at least it'll be mild up around 70 degrees. All right, Ben, thank you very much. We are getting more images coming in. Like we were just telling you, this not only hit Prospect, it also hit Jeffersonville, and we know 10 injuries there at this time. Uh, coming from uh, Jeffersonville Mayor Mike Moore moments ago, I think and this is from our noon news producer over in Jeffersonville, and you can see uh, some of the aftermath of the damage there off into the distance as the, the mayor uh, so clearly uh, told us rooftops peeled off or d some of them just slightly damaged in that. A uh, lot of things knocked over as the winds were about 130 miles an hour. This neighborhood here is in the east end of Clark County as you get closer to the east end bridge. Some of the neighborhoods that the mayor told us really were hit was Boulder Creek hit hard, Brook Hollow hit hard, and it's important to note right now if your home was hit or someone you know was hit and you're looking for some assistance, they have set up a family assistance center in Jeffersonville where the Red Cross, the fire department is all there working to get you connected with resources. That is located at Fire Station 4 at 5311 East 10th Street in Jeffersonville. They are saying right now anyone needing a little bit extra help or even somewhere to shelter just to get organized can head that way and find some help. Again, this uh, tornado outbreak once again happening here 
uh, just parked one day before we were going to be talking extensively about the 50th anniversary of the massive April 3rd tornado uh, outbreak again. This uh, tornado outbreak uh, crossing southern Indiana first as if it, as it started there in uh, southern Indiana earlier today, then dropped down this way and then of course developed uh, in a, with that massive tornado in Clark County, Indiana, crossing the Ohio River right into Prospect. And that's where in just a few minutes we're also going to get an, uh, from the Anchorage Fire Station in Middletown, the first news conference from the Louisville authorities on where we stand here with the eastern Jefferson County damage. Now we've got some images from Henry County to show you. This is on Highway 22 above Gratz. These were sent in to us showing a smashed building, a com building that has been completely downed right now. No word here on if anybody was in the building. These are images coming in from viewers, which are so helpful to us as we try to piece together exactly what the damage looks like all over the area. Again, this uh, this was the aftermath of the storm after it left Metro Louisville as we watched it move out of Oldham County and then uh, moved right up into uh, Henry County in the Eminence area. And this rule looks like a barn uh, was collapsed easily as those storms were really coming through with uh, such massive winds. And as expected with high winds like this, 100 to 130 miles per hour, there have been some significant power outages reported. We're giving you a live look at that map right now. It looks like right now, Kentucky has 13,000 without power. As you can see here, many of those located in what looks to be Prospect and Oldham County. Those numbers not up to 13,000, that's for the entire state but still significant. You see there Worthington Springhurst, our map, we've moved it over toward where the new the Kentucky truck plant is in eastern Jefferson County as it takes you up into the Pee Wee Valley, Crestwood area, larger power outages right when you cross the county line. Uh, the rest of Metro Louisville um, escaped uh, the heavy power outages, as you can see as we move our map and go down further into the rest of Metro Louisville, because we haven't talked about the rest of the city, uh, not as many power outages. You see scattered points where the winds were just too strong and uh, they, brought down, uh, they brought down limbs onto power lines. So once again, we do have a uh, situation where crews are going to be really focused on the east end at right now and try to get to the other neighborhoods that have lost power. As uh, you heard, the eyewitnesses we've already been interviewing. Uh, one man uh, standing outside his home told our Alex Dieter a little while ago that it did indeed did indeed sound like the uh, the freight train, the tornado that everybody talks, but another uh, talks about. But another woman said, "No, it was just a little bit different than that." But the uh, skies definitely were angry and dark, and that roaring sound was coming from those strong winds. Important to note, if you're watching us on your phone right now, wondering when you might get power back, they have not been able to give us an estimation on that just yet. We've seen images out of Prospect showing power lines completely toppled across roads, across fields, and so it really could be a couple of days before we have a realistic image of how long it takes to get power back on in that area. And we've seen this happen in prior storms. LG&E has already posted the notice. If you go to the power outage map that they can no longer give estimates for a lot of these areas because they are just trying to get in there. A lot of their big uh, trucks need to get past uh, trees that have been downed first uh, and then they can get in there. Right, yeah. safety is such a concern. You don't want these actual wires to be down over roads. So that's top priority. Uh, speaking of prospect, Taylor Woods has been out there for several hours. Taylor, tell us where you are and what you're seeing. Well, still standing at the front entrance of Hunting Creek. Take a look. Nothing but tree debris and uprooted trees. Take a look right here. You can see where that uprooted tree was. Um, I have Miss Phyllis here. She was at home when the tornado touched down. Uh, Miss Phyllis, can you tell me what you heard when it came? It was just very loud and it sounded like someone was ripping the side of the house off. And you've lived here for so many years. Have you seen anything this significant? Never anything like this. Um, tell me what you're thinking as far as cleanup and recovery efforts. It's going to be busy. I'm not sure how much we'll be responsible for and how much the city will take care of what's in the street. We'll have to hire somebody to come carry this away. All right, and the community has really been coming together uh, to help all the residents in this area. But for now, I'll send it back to you, Doug and Shay. 
<clears throat> Taylor, thank you very much. Of course, uh, Prospect has its own government. It has its own uh, police department there, and uh, so they're, but they're relying on Louisville Metro, which is uh, jumping right in. You have fire departments all over the area who have, they don't care about the uh, government lines anymore. Uh, we're part of one big community. Volunteers are coming in. We've already been, uh, been told by some of our crews that uh, chainsaws are already working overtime in that part of the county. Just incredible. We also know because, like you mentioned, Prospect Oldham County, a smaller community than Metro Louisville, and an event like this can quickly overwhelm. And in fact, just an hour ago, 911 Operating Center in Oldham County said they were being inundated. They were being completely overwhelmed. They asked only people experiencing true, real, you know, life-threatening emergencies to call that line just because they were getting so many calls. And that makes sense because as the storm uh, left Jefferson County, it then uh, settled into parts of Oldham and as we've been showing you here, Henry County. So we are right now at the top of the hour. We're just going to let you know what's coming up next. We're expecting a news conference from the uh, Anchorage Firehouse on Erton Lane. That's in the Middletown area where we'll be joined by Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg and some of the top authorities, emergency authorities here uh, who have been getting the latest figures and the information on where we stand in Jefferson County. You see that live picture coming from our crews that are already set up. And as, as soon as they walk to the podium there, we'll be getting the new information. But at uh, 630, Shay, once again, I just want to remind people, we did a live interview and a phone call from the Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg, who told me that um, no deaths for Jefferson County, and he does not believe there are any severe injuries. So that's good news going to the news conference. But again, that was the storm had just cleared Metro Louisville, and these can, things can change an hour, two hours, even three hours after it leaves. Some of the different information we may learn here in just a few minutes is an update on just how many crews are out working, how many structures they've identified as severely damaged or no longer inhabitable, at least for the time being, updates on power outages. It can be really useful information for getting an estimate on what this cleanup looks like. And this, this is a, a tough week, to, honestly, to have this happen. This is spring break for a lot of families. A lot of families have uh, uh, vacation plans with their their families. They may be even out of town. Now they're rushing back to get to their homes. You know, and that's where the neighbors come in. So handy here to help everybody out. And so um, y y y we're also going to hear what's LG&E doing to get extra reinforcements in. As we know, our utility has an excellent relationship with states all around us, including uh, states like Florida, which those crews drive up here. And they come into the neighborhoods and have certainly saved this community many times in massive ice storms over the years past. Something, Doug, I think that we'll be talking about here in the coming days was the forewarning um, from our, our local storm teams here who had great insight into the storm yesterday. But so many of the local schools, the ones that weren't on spring break, the universities that sent kids and staff home, the governor declared a state of emergency earlier this afternoon. He's closed all of the government buildings. A lot of different agencies and organizations were very proactive here to send people home so they could be glued to the TV screen, watching the warnings and taking shelter when they needed to. That's right. I got notices from businesses all day today. They were closing early, sending their employees home this afternoon. This was well before the storms, afternoon storms had even formed and even moved toward Louisville. But they were thinking ahead based on the forecast. Both UK and UofL canceled classes, in-person classes uh, for the afternoon uh, time today. Uh, the major UK UofL baseball game was supposed to be held tonight right. in Lexington, and they postponed that, but they did that this morning. So the early warning has really paid off, and I believe it's going to have a safe lives. That's something, as we've been looking back 50 years, we did not have in 1974. That early warning was when they learned that Brandenburg had been hit. By that time, the tornadoes were already heading toward Louisville. Well, it is just incredible we have that technology now, and it certainly will be thanked when we keep hearing about so few injuries, and we hope that that stays that way. Now we'd like to give you a look at some of the damage we're seeing across the area. These images coming from Oldham County. You've heard our crews talking about missing roofs, pieces of insulation thrown from buildings and into trees. That's what you're seeing here. And uh, many of you who've been uh, texting us photos, we thank you very much. We, we, hope, we, we hope you are uh, in a safe zone when you do that. Please send it to us when you can. We also want to hear now from one of the authorities who've been on the scene out in the storm zone. They're real lucky to be okay, so there were no injuries involved in this, but we have four houses with pretty significant structural damage. Yeah, and a pretty clear path coming through the woods here. Um, lots of trees down, yeah. 
Have you ever seen things like this before in your time with the fire department? So I've seen a couple tornadoes similar to this, um, but it's never been in this specific district before. Is what we're hearing from officials on both sides of the rivers who have been saying in decades and decades of police work and fire work, this is some of the worst damage they've seen. Yes, it's, it's been a while since we've had uh, such a large tornado, especially one on the ground. As Ben has been reporting to us and showing to us uh, about 35 miles, we believe. And so far, our early estimates coming in from our first alert storm team showing it that that's an e possibly an EF2 could rise to the level of an EF3 tornado. As we've been asking people to send us in what you're seeing, one thing we haven't mentioned here, but we are getting inundated with is hail video. Mm -hmm. Really serious hail video across the area from the Highlands to St. Matthews. Um, everybody experiencing that just about an hour and a half ago. The, and interesting that the hail video started really coming in as the tornado cleared exactly. out and started moving into Oldham County and there's going to be a lot of a lot of hail damage on rooftops which is something that's also going to be uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of roofs replaced in this area and you know insurance coverage can be great when you get uh, the, this kind of hail damage and you've got the evidence from all the video that comes out. It's part of that um, emergency declaration from the governor is price gouging because they always warn Doug in the days right after the storm when you have people coming door to door giving you these great offers you really want to check with the attorney's general's office to make sure it's not a scam to make sure it's a credible business before you automatically say yes. That's right. And so once again, uh, we have been hearing from at least the, the top leaders in our community. We've heard from the Louisville mayor. We've heard from the mayor of Jeffersonville, who reported 10 injuries in the city of Jeffersonville, mostly eastern Clark County, as you got close to the East End Bridge. And uh, we understand that. Why? Because we were showing you the live coverage of uh, the East End Bridge is actually the tornado, we believe, was passing over it at the time. Cars were still driving across it. And we saw as, as vehicles as large as semi trucks being overturned by this storm. It has certainly created some traffic headaches on both sides of the bridge there up in southern Indiana. I-265 shut down in multiple different spots as Indiana State Police is working right now very hard to get it cleared out. But an overturned semi is an overturned semi. You can only move so quick on that. We have some more of the video to show you here. I know that uh, we're going to be passing that along as we are waiting for the news conference to start in eastern Jefferson County. This uh, this is uh, eastern Clark County. Again, this these photos coming from Indiana State Police as the uh, tornado was moving through the area and knocked over semis and other cars there. And uh, I believe the mayor of Jeffersonville said they he believed some of those injuries came from uh, some of the cars. And it's good to note also just in here, we are expecting to hear from Louisville and Metro leaders this evening, but the governor of Kentucky just announced that he will be having a media availability at 1230 at the Capitol tomorrow, talking about the impacts of this all across the state. But of course, Prospect Doug, I anticipate, will have much of the focus. Yes, and uh, we'll also get a, a bigger picture, too, on w what the tornadoes did once they left Metro Louisville, That's you know, Indiana's got quite the story to, to, to deal with tomorrow, as so do our National Weather Service investigators who are going to be out in the community uh, trying to confirm the size of the tornadoes, exactly where they first touched down and how long that they were on the track and when they crossed the river here in Louisville, how many tornadoes we have. I mean, right now. We, uh, we were on the air for so long here this afternoon. We were telling you about one tornado warning after another and another believed touchdown. We do want to get an update now from our first alert storm team as we are looking ahead to not only what happened this evening and the storm tonight, um, but a shift in our weather pattern tomorrow. Let's send it on over to the first alert storm team, Colleen. Yes, if we can uh, go ahead and address the height as I step on, we are under a tornado watch until 10 p.m., but it has significantly gotten better here over the past hour or so as that line continues to move off to the southeast. We are continuing to go over all of the damage from this confirmed tornado that made its way through Prospect and then potentially over to LaGrange. The National Weather Service is going to head out tomorrow to conduct the surveys to really just find out, was this an EF1, was this an EF2? Thankfully, we have no reports of any fatalities uh, from that report, but we had over 11 cars that were flipped over reported sitting in from the emergency management. Now let's go ahead and talk about what counties are in the clear. Jefferson County, you are now in the clear as that line is moving off to the south and southeast. 
Uh, so Salem, English, Paoli, you're not really concerned with seeing any more thunderstorms. In fact, the only areas that we are watching is from E-Town to Bardstown right now. Christina, if we can get a little bit of a closer view, zooming on into those communities right now, seeing a lot of lightning, some heavy downpours, but thankfully there is no current warning in place. We are still under a tornado watch until 10 p.m. So even though these storms are showing signs of weakening, we're not seeing one area showing any rotation with it. So uh, right now over Hodgenville, we're seeing some heavy downpours just southeast of E-Town. That's going to continue to move on to the east and northeast. So over Bardstown right now, we are seeing some heavy rain. Still have that potential of seeing some hail, maybe over Bloomfield right now. And we're starting to see some of those deeper reds uh, being picked up on that radar. So we are going to continue to watch these storms as they move off to the east and southeast overnight tonight. So putting a forward movement on those storms, Campbellsville right now, that one storm is what we are watching, had some broad rotation with it, but it's just weakening. Our atmosphere is getting a little bit more stable out there. So zooming on in where this broad rotation is right over uh, Adderson and Bass right now in Clementsville. But right now we have a presser that we're going to get to from that damage report. Eleanor, hi. LKY. Uh, is LPM here? Okay. All right. We'll be down in a couple of minutes. All right. That was uh, Kevin Traeger. He's the uh, Louisville Mayor's media spokesperson, and he came down to uh, talk to the reporters. And as you heard him say, uh, they'll be down in just a couple of minutes to start this news conference. This is at the Middletown, the Anchorage Middletown Fire Station on Erton Lane. That is in Middletown. It is far outside the uh, storm damage zone, but a lot of the authorities you're going to hear from at that fire station have been into these neighborhoods in Prospect in eastern Jefferson County. It'll be good to get a sense of what they're seeing, what all the different fire chiefs have seen, and what they can tell us as far as how far the damage goes. If there are injuries that we didn't know about just an hour and a half ago, we certainly might get some of that information. I'm told now about three minutes away three minutes away from the news conference. And again, we've referenced the East End Bridge as the tornado was moving through. Here's the video. This was recorded from our Metro camera. This is about 5.35 p.m. Look at the folks in the cars. They're, they're going slow, but they're also wondering, should I go ahead and cross this bridge? Uh, of course, that's one of our newest bridges built in Eastern Jefferson, in, in all of Metro Louisville. Uh, and it obviously held up well, but at, the, at this point we were clocking winds of about 130 miles per hour on the radar as these winds were, and it almost looks like a hurricane. It almost looks like a bridge that uh, you would see down in Tampa, Florida or whatever over those big causeways. It certainly does. As, as the storm is, is coming through. Those cars smart there to stop because we know that the winds there were strong enough to tip some semis that did keep moving. Um, as the storm was passing right over there, Indiana State Police busy working on cleaning up those traffic headaches right now. I'm going to be interested to see because we're going to get a full report on all of uh, Louisville from the Louisville authorities here coming up in just about a couple of minutes from now. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, Shay, just uh, what other parts of Louisville have had damage. We, we know that uh, the mayor told us earlier today at about 630. Now let's go to the news conference live from Anchorage. Just a little bit back here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, joined here this evening uh, at the Anchorage Middletown Fire Department headquarters with Chief Grudy and Steve Cunanan from the Red Cross. Uh, let me first by thanking all of our first responders here in the Anchorage Middletown Fire Department, as well as others across the entire city uh, that have been actively involved throughout this afternoon. Thank the National Weather Service uh, for their forecast that helped give people the ability to heed the warning and take shelter, uh, which, which to date, as far as we know, uh, has worked. Uh, I'm pleased to report that as of right now, there are zero injuries or deaths to report from this storm. No injuries that we are aware of at this time. The damage that we're seeing, particularly in the prospect area of our city, uh, is consistent with a tornado. However, there is no confirmation that a tornado 
has touched down. The National Weather Service is currently surveying the damage. They will continue to survey the damage this evening as long as daylight permits. They will be back at it tomorrow morning and we will rely on their information before any confirmation regarding a tornado. But again, the damage that we're seeing out there, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, appears to be consistent, uh, but there is no confirmation of that yet. The bulk of the damage that we're aware of at this time, again, is in the Prospect neighborhood. It, it appears that the damage started uh, in the Beachland Beach area right there along the Ohio River, uh, moved south and east, uh, just to the side of the Sutherland neighborhood, uh, and also then crossed US 42 into the Hunting Creek neighborhood. Uh, again, Anchorage Middletown Fire Departments have been out on the scene going street by street. When they see damage, they've been reaching out to neighbors and houses to check on everyone there. Uh, we've been here monitoring live drone footage. Uh, you can see that there is definitely roof damage. There is definitely significant damage to homes. There's significant damage to fences, to trees uh, throughout that area. Uh, both in Bass Road, for example, appears to be one of the streets uh, that has the most damage, as well as Foxcroft in Hunting Creek neighborhood. Uh, this is just the worst hit area, again, just south of Hayes Kennedy Park. Uh, right in that general vicinity, there is a Louisville Water Company facility there along the Ohio River in Prospect. They have power. Uh, there are no material damage to that facility. Uh, there is no uh, risk to the water supply at this time. So the Louisville Water Company uh, facility there, while close to the damage, um, is, is good, and there is no risk to the water supply at this time. Again, along with the trees being down, there are wires down as well. Uh, some of these trees are blocking roads at this time. Uh, we are working very closely with LG&E to turn off the power to those lines so that crews can then clear the trees and we can reopen the roads. Uh, in addition to the collaboration that we're having with the Anchorage and Middletown Fire Department, there's been great collaboration across other uh, public agencies as well. Uh, it, for example, the state, we are working very closely with the governor and his administration. They have already sent forestry teams uh, that are on scene already to assist with our public works crew to begin cutting down trees as soon as it's safe when we're aware that there is no uh, power risk from the power line. So the state and public works will be working uh, to clear these trees. We are also aware of uh, several structural collapses that the Anchorage Milltown Fire Department has come across. Uh, but again, no rescues or injuries were reported uh, with those structural collapses. In addition to uh, here in the prospect and most calls that we're getting right now, I should add uh, for, from 911 relate to some outdoor gas smells. We are uh, responding as quickly as we can to all of those, uh, but we have no, again, those are outdoor issues. Uh, while we're talking about 911, uh, between 5.15 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. this evening, uh, our 911 Metro Safe Call Center received 301 calls. Uh, the average wait time for all of those callers were three, was three seconds. So again, thanks to everyone in our 911 Metro Safe Call Center for handling that volume uh, during this storm. Also, while we're speaking about time, at 517, our first outdoor war warning sirens went off across the city. <clears throat> Additionally, in uh, other parts of the city, one other area that we have some reports of damage right now uh, is in Newcut New Road near the Outer Loop. We have some reports of uh, downed lines, but no structural damage to report. Uh, and also our teams, again, with, in terms of collaboration and partnership, we are working as hard as we can, providing all of the resources that are necessary to address the damage here and to support residents here in Louisville. Uh, we are also uh, seeking to help others as well. And so the Louisville Fire Department, along with PRP and Fern Creek Fire Departments, are sending 12 individuals to Henry County to assist them in their uh, efforts as well to deal with the results of, of this storm. Uh, given all of this, uh, very shortly after we conclude this press conference, I will be declaring a state of emergency uh, for the entire Jefferson County. That will assess, assist our public agencies in the procurement processes to speed up all of the recovery needed uh, that is needed to uh, clean up following this storm. 
Uh, but again, uh, I'm pleased to report that there are no reports of any injuries uh, or deaths at this time. All of the damage is structural in nature. And I want to give a giant thanks once again to everyone at the Anchorage Middletown Fire Department, uh, to the governor's office, uh, Governor Bashir and his entire team from the state, to the National Weather Service, uh, to our Public Works Department and other metro agencies, uh, at Metro Safe and our emergency management services, uh, and also our partners at LG&E. Everyone working closely in the afternoon into the evening and will throughout the night to continue to ensure that everyone is safe and that we do our, this cleanup as safely and promptly as possible uh, following this. Uh, so now let me uh, turn it over to Chief Grudy, who is chief of the Anchorage Middletown Fire Department and has been a great partner of ours in all of this effort. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, not to be redundant, so, so I'll just address some of the operational things we're going through right now. I mean, right now we're in a rapid assessment, uh, uh, actually rapid damage assessment phase that we're trying, we're just trying to get access as fast as we can and actually do actually quick search and rescues to make sure nobody's, make sure nobody's trapped or injured. Uh, to start off the operation, we established our ELC right here at headquarters. Uh, right now we have our uh, 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 staging and our, and, our, and our actually mobile command post operations are, are actually set up at our station 40, which is up in prospect. Um, so I guess, I guess to give you some perspective of just how we're handling this area, because the thing, the thing is a very wide area. So right now we have actually two operational areas set up. We have one on the north side of 42, which, is, which, which actually goes towards the river, obviously, and then we have one on the south side of 42, which takes us up in, into, the, into like the Hunting Creek area. So we, have, so we have two separate commanders operating those operational areas, and it's all being coordinated from our mobile command post, uh, which is located in our, in our staging areas. Obviously, uh, some of the challenges you can expect that we're starting to face was, was number one was actually access issues. We have, we, we have trees down, we have all kinds of power lines down. And then on top of it, as we start to arrive on scene, we start to get bombarded with, that, with, with actually more hail and more storms. So it just kept, it, it, it just sort of, it sort of kept snowballing. Uh, right now we, uh, we have actually 10 companies up there working and uh, we expect to be up there most of the evening. And just, just like the mayor said, we have red crafts on scene because one of our next big challenges is to try to mobilize and shelter in place the people who, who have lost their homes. So like I said, those are, uh, those are our challenges right now is access and actually mobilization of the people who have lost their homes. Uh, other than that, I think that sort of sums it up and dovetails off, off what the mayor just said. So, sure, okay. Next, going to introduce another great partner of ours uh, that has been working, has already been out on the scene surveying the damage with, with his colleagues, and that is such an amazing partner to our entire city uh, in all situations like this when we are recovering from disasters and helping residents who are in need. Uh, let me introduce to you the CEO of Red Cross here in Louisville, Steve Kunanen. And following Steve, I'll have some concluding remarks, and then we'll be happy to take questions from the media. Steve? Uh, I want to emphasize that this is an evolving situation for the Red Cross. As more is known, I'm sure the nature of our response will change. Um, we are continuing to work with our community partners and emergency management officials to determine what exactly those needs are. We have disaster teams in the field right now assessing individual needs and uh, working to assess damage. Uh, as of this time, we do not have an emergency shelter open, but as I say, that may change as uh, the nature of this response progresses. I'm going to emphasize that if you are unable to stay in your house for tonight or into the future, please call 1-800-RED-CROSS. When you call that number, we will go ahead and, and take care of your needs. Again, that's 1-800-RED-CROSS. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much, Chief Grudy. Uh, we, this collaboration and this partnership will continue in the days ahead. We all need to work together and support each other.
continue to help out uh, with, to the best of our abilities with the resources that each one of our agencies has. Uh, the governor will be in the area tomorrow uh, surveying the damage as well. Uh, we really appreciate the state's immediate effort to provide forestry teams and to assist us with this. And so we will continue to work closely with the state as well as the local agencies here throughout Louisville and Jefferson County. Uh, with that, the Chief Steve or I are happy to take any questions that you all might have. We had heard some reports about um, some people possibly trapped in a home, maybe two people. We think that was near the Oldham County line, possibly on Charlock Court. Uh, can you confirm if uh, any metro agencies responded to that or if you're aware of that? I don't believe we have. Are you aware of that, Chief? Uh, Actually, one of the first few calls we came in, or that actually came in, I think I think had one of those addresses on it, but, but I mean, once we got there, there was nobody found, nobody trapped. So. Okay. Was there a home that had, you know, a roof had collapsed on a basement, possibly? I can't speak this. Uh, I mean, necessarily to that address. I mean, right now we have multiple homes or damaged, so I don't really have any specificity on on exactly which addresses. But there was, as we mentioned earlier, there is some confirmation of structural collapses on some buildings. Uh, we have seen many uh, homes with, with roofs torn off from both on the ground as well as some of the live drone footage that we've been monitoring. And is that what you're referring to as a structural collapse with the roof torn off? Are we actually seeing like buildings coming all the way to the ground? Uh, it could be a combination of both. Okay. I mean, we have not I mean, actually quantified any of those things right now. Uh, if there are any buildings that have completely collapsed, uh, like I said, once the, I, I mean, they're being called in as such, but I mean, but I have no information at my fingertips to, to say that, yeah, we have houses that, it, that have completely come down. It uh, might be other structures far, such as a barn or a, yeah. a detached garage as well uh, could be the collapse as well. So we're, we're trying to get confirmation on all of that. That's based on reports that we're getting from the field. Could you talk about the possible danger of people driving now that the sun has gone down? Do you have a rough count on, you know, how many streetlights are out? Or can you name any road closures that will for sure continue to be a road closure for multiple hours? I can't necessarily say for sure, but I can tell you general areas that, that, are, that I suspect are dark right now. I, was, I, was, I would suspect all of the Hunting Creek area here right now. I would suspect going down Cover Bridge Road as you're heading for Prospect in Oldham County, and I'm not sure about on the uh, like on the north side of 42. I don't have any reports to, to see what's out or what isn't. I think it's very important that if anyone is driving, particularly in the Prospect neighborhood or anywhere throughout the region, uh, that if they see either down power lines or trees that are blocking a road, don't try to pass. Turn around and go another way, but do not try to pass because you might not be able to see a power line that's intertwined with the tree or that's down. And so please, we will get to that. We've got great reporting mechanisms uh, and professionals will deal with that to ensure that any lines are turn, turned off so that we can clear these trees as quickly as possible. And I think also, if there is down power lines, do not attempt to move them yep. because you do not know if they're energized. Mm -hmm. uh, do not attempt to try to cut up any, any type of tree limbs that are on power lines uh, because that could lead to problems as well. Power yes. Lines, do you know how, approximately how many are down right now and or are LGE crews out right now or is that going to be later tonight? I apologize if you answered that. Yeah, no, 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 that's okay. Uh, we don't have an exact number of how many power lines are down. We do know that some power lines are down yes. uh, and we know that approximately 3,000 residents in Jefferson County are without power similar number in Oldham County, and yes, LG&E crews are out and about right now. Is there any estimate on how long they might be without power? Not yet. We don't have that information yet. We will continue. Uh, are there any other questions? Oh, yeah. Can oh, you well. provide a little bit more insight about what the uh, fire crews are going to be doing in Henry County? Because in talking to KSP, they said the damage up there is mostly uh, barns and trees down. We were made aware of a need for some support, and so we're, we're getting them out there to provide that support. I don't have any other information on, on the exact nature of what they'll be doing yet. However we can help, we want to be helpful. These are, these are not uh, individuals that are needed right now for our efforts here in Jefferson County. Uh, and so we want to support our, our fellow uh, public servants in other counties as well if they need it. And if, and if we get there on site and they're not needed, they'll come back home. Did you say that you're, you believe it crossed the river in the Beachland Beach area? Correct. And do you think from that point it kind of went and followed Covered Bridge Road? Let me restate that. 
the damage in Jefferson County in the Prospect area begins at the Beachland Beach area. Th that is where the damage begins. Uh, again, we have no confirmation at this point that it was a tornado. Uh, we're waiting on the National Weather Service to provide that information, but the damage began uh, at the Beachland Beach and the Ohio River uh, area. We will continue to keep you guys updated over the coming hours and days. Again, a giant thanks to the Anchorage Middletown Fire Department uh, and every other public and nonprofit and private agency uh, that's been involved in this effort. Thank you all very much. And again, remember to stay safe out there and keep in touch to heed the warnings. Thanks a lot. You've been watching live news conference, the first news conference of the evening after the large tornadoes moved through southern Indiana and then crossing into Louisville, hitting Prospect Hard and the remarkable headline coming out of this news conference. We can confirm no injuries and no deaths at all. In fact, the even better news, early reports were that two people were trapped inside a home on Charlock Court in far eastern Jefferson County. And now authorities are able to confirm right there. You saw it happen that those reports were not found, uh, uh, not proven to be true at the at the time, even though we had a lot of badly damaged homes and collapsed buildings. And they did say today, just a few minutes ago, they made the differentiation here between a collapsed building and when they're talking about the structural damage that a lot of what happened in Prospect is actually roofs missing. And they didn't have too many collapsed buildings, which is a good thing when they're talking about these door-to-door -door checks, making sure they don't have injuries. So the roundup we have right now, we got it live from the mayor of Jeffersonville, Indiana. That's where we've been showing you the tornado first touchdown at about 5.30, just after 5.30. Uh, mayor Mike Moore there uh, telling us at least 10 injuries there, uh, not severe, no deaths in Jeffersonville. And then as Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg just vividly described, here's what happened when it crossed the East End Bridge. Uh, it came down on Beachland Beach. That is a row of homes right perched on the river, right on the river shoreline there that overlooks Indiana, moved off the Beachland Beach area, then the Sutherland neighborhood. That's a large neighborhood right behind uh, Hayes Kennedy Park down there in that part of the county. Uh, the Sutherland neighborhood also touched down there, then crossed US 42, which is uh, front Sutherland into the Hunting Creek neighborhood where we've been showing you these live, uh, uh, this live coverage, this is video from that area. The team of officials gave us a really clear indication of what work is happening on the ground right now. They call this the rapid damage assessment, where they are going door to door to make sure there is no rescues needed. And they said so far they have not had any. They are also looking at all of the different damage and finding out exactly what this looked like. While all of the damage is consistent with the tornado, we don't have that confirmation just yet. But we're told the National Weather Service is on site. They're surveying the damage. They'll continue to do so until they lose daylight and then they will be back tomorrow. The mayor just telling us they actually sent a drone into the air to get some images on exactly what this looks like and found that structure damage, the roofs missing, just like we said, multiple fences down, trees down. And Doug, one of the biggest issues right now, power lines down, power lines that are still energized, which can be incredibly dangerous. Something Craig Greenberg uh, said is so reminiscent of what happened here 50 years ago tomorrow. The April 3rd, 1974 tornado. At that time, our main Louisville Water Company building was hit hard by the tornado, and we had an emergency on our hands with our water. The mayor brought up this major Louisville Water Company facility, which is out there in Prospect. It's on River Road, just before you get to US 42 by the Prospect Shopping Center. Thankfully, it was not touched. There is no damage there. That facility provides much of Eastern Jefferson County and the growing areas with its water supply. So uh, what could have mirrored history did did not happen. We are so thankful there. Also, the mayor also confirming that the bulk of the damage for all of Metro Louisville is the prospect area in that part of eastern Jefferson County. They had some wires down on uh, New Cut Road, but they have uh, no serious injuries or in any injuries uh, reported in that area or serious damage there at New Cut Road at the Outer Loop. Exactly. And one of the things they also just told us is that because we are so well staffed in the metro and they really are getting a great handle on what's happened in Prospect, we have multiple agencies able to help in other areas that are really needing it. So we're sending crews from Louisville Fire, PRP Fire and Fern Creek Fire up to Henry County. 
because they really need the extra help right now doing the same thing that we're doing in Prospect, which is that damage assessment, going door to door, making sure nobody needs help. Of course, Doug, some of these numbers might change, even the Red Cross saying we are way too early to, to say how many people are displaced right now, and they've offered up that help for people who may need somewhere to go tonight. And I want to add once again, we've seen it time and time again, we are blessed in this town with authorities who from volunteer fire departments to the major fire departments. You see Anchorage Middletown right in the middle of this along with South Oldham, North Oldham and, and the chief there giving a vivid description of what they faced as uh, they were moving in, they were still being bombed. They got a little bit of a clearing. Then they were bombarded by all the hail. Minute, much of the hail you've been sending us videos of for the last few hours. And then another round of storms moved in. Despite that, the fight, the fact that the hail was looking like a snowfall around them, they were in there going door to door, checking on people in their damaged homes. Still a lot of work to do tonight. Work that we know will continue into the coming days. And we thank you. That's uh, been our coverage. We've been on the air with you all afternoon long. The WHS 1119. team. Of course, I'll have a full team of reporters coming up tonight at 11. We'll see you then tonight at 11. So we'll get the latest from homeowners in the neighborhoods. We'll be talking to those as the uh, cleanup and the uh, chainsaw cleanup. Very important to get the LG&E crews in there is already beginning tonight and the power will come back on. We thank you so much for joining us back at 11 o'clock for the latest information. And of course, many more days to come as we start to learn exactly what happened in our community tonight. That shows it didn't strike all the metro. Looks like and, uh, it was computing because yeah, the cold furnace was